Magna seemed to be right on track to actually um, really get something out of that position. And I'm sp speaking specifically once again about the moment over here where he introduced this idea of g4 followed by 92, 94 uh, with slight but you know long lasting pressure. But then when Magnus didn't go for this plan, it really petered out quite quickly and Koryakin defended without any major problems. What's up, nerds? I'm sorry this video is delayed. The recap of the second game of the World Championship match. I got a good reason. I fell asleep during this snooze fest. And it was another snooze fest. At least I can't blame the players for wasting my time this time around. I had a good little four hour nap. Now I caught up to the action. Or can we call it the action? Can we call it the highlights? I don't really think so. Bishop takes c4. That is a surprise. That honestly is a surprise to me. B takes c4 blitzed out by Magnus, just uh, briefly to point out that if That's you... That's not a transmission error? Feelings about your opponent after this game, different ones. 
Magnus will probably not be too happy a camper at this. I think he'll be time. fuming right now. Yeah. I'd be I'd be absolutely fuming if I suddenly had to face this. If you imagine uh, the black bishop landing at some point on c7, it's quite obvious that uh, black will have a lot of play against the white king. <clears throat> but achieving that is not that easy. And uh, uh, once again, uh, this is playable, maybe drawable, but not particularly enjoyable and definitely not equal. In this video uh, we will cover the uh, two remaining uh, 
uh, sort of main line moves in the position you you see on your screen. Uh, that is bishop b6 and bishop g4. The move uh, I make myself on a number of occasions. Uh, it's a fairly decent move, but uh, I think uh, White uh, retains some uh, some chances uh, for uh, opening another here. Uh, at least uh, Black will have to show some position in most of the lines. White goes 95. Uh, that I think is the whole point of this line. Uh, White doesn't want to uh, give Black uh, any trade in this case. And uh, in this position, Black already has options. Can you name six Canadian cities? Six? Probably if I try really hard. Eric's saying he's from Calgary. See, there's one. <laughs> I wouldn't have known that one. Well, I, I'm hoping I'm hoping for uh, the continuation of what we've seen in games. Uh, I think from from game nine in particular, uh, where there's uh, there's a lot of psychological tension. Obviously, there's a lot riding on this game. Now they play bishop e7 here, and and that really is very very dry. Not necessarily the most exciting of lines, but still a line that's heavily played at top level. So there are some nuances to be aware of. Sometimes oh, they absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Actually, most chess fans I talked to, surprisingly, they said they were hoping for a draw today because they enjoy the rapid action, which like, is understandable. I can understand that viewpoint, but uh, still, this is Wednesday will be very, very uh, interesting to comment on. But this uh, really, there's not a lot you can say about this. <clears throat> Are you sad? A little bit. A little bit. Hello everybody and welcome to arguably the most anticipated chess day of the year. Maybe people didn't know it was going to be tiebreaks, but had they known, I'm sure this would be the most anticipated. Here to talk us through all the action is Super Grandmaster Peter Swidler, aka P. Swiddy. Peter, 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 what do you have for us today? I'm a great chef. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is, a, this is an excellent start. Uh, I think it will be a very exciting day and uh, yeah, the, there's really no way to hedge for them anymore. So we are expecting a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of interesting games. There will be some mistakes obviously because of the format, but... Uh, Shall we mention the format? Four yeah. rapid games, 25 minutes plus 10 seconds per move, is that correct? Yes, and I think they play 5 plus 3 if it gets to the Blitz games. But the first, uh, the, the rapid uh, match, has to, match has to finish. I'm working on that pronunciation there. Uh, not, not How much? <laughs> quite a lot. Uh, but uh, still four, four rapid games uh, b before they can even start playing the, the Blitz micro, match micro matches, which will be five plus three, I believe, with probably a, a drawing of lots for colors before every pair. But that, that still is some hours away. Uh, a normal uh, 25 plus 10 game takes about an hour, an hour and 10 plus uh, a 10 minute break between uh, rapid games. So we are in for a long night, which I think suits, suits everybody after game 12. Absolutely, big outcry out there after the quick draw that Magnus Carlsen decided to go for with the white pieces in game 12, but he got what he wanted. He got four more games and that must have been his calculus. Chances are better in these four games than going all in in one game. We shall see today if he had it right, he's going to be black in the first game. Is that advantage, disadvantage, doesn't matter? I would probably prefer black in the first game, uh, although I'm not entirely sure. But I think uh, having, having white in the final game of the, of the match is, is probably a slight advantage because you, you have a clear idea of what's what 
uh, what what you need to achieve and so on and so forth. But be before they, they begin, I wanted to briefly touch on, on a few things concerning the, the format of the, the whole thing, not today, but the whole thing. Because uh, the events of the 12th game, uh, or non-events of the 12th game rather, uh, prompted a very lively discussion uh, on social media and uh, in general there were a lot of things said uh, and I wanted to particularly mention a couple of ideas which uh, could sort of ensure that this never happens again and I think uh, yes the players should not be criticized for taking practical decisions uh, in the, you know, in Sergei's case, definitely the biggest event of his career. And for Magnus, yes, it's not his first match, but still, uh, he has to pay attention to the, res to the result first and uh, pleasing the spectators second, but still uh, wasn't a very good look, I think you will agree. Yeah, I think the outcry, it surprised me a, li a little bit, because to my mind, it's a strategic decision and people don't even lose that much, because we're getting this day, this action-packed day today, instead of arguably a fighting game with an outcome in game 12. To my mind it was just a strategy and it should be your priority to win the match and everything that gives you better chances. I'm completely sure. cool with it, yeah. but I understand people were disappointed. Yeah, and that's what I said in the, in the, in the wrap-up and I'm not critical of the decision, but uh, still uh, you can probably argue that uh, avoiding a situation like this might be useful for chess as a spectator. Sport. What's your solution? So not mine. I, as usual, I use uh, you know I work as a compiler. I I read stuff and then I uh, quote stuff to to, to other mm -hmm. people. So two solutions. One will uh, probably upset our good friend Tari a great deal because he he seemed to really be against it. And yes, I think it's politically impossible to do this. And we, we're cutting it a bit close, so we'll probably have to continue it later. But. Two solutions proposed were one, just return to the idea of uh, a drawn match being in favor of the champion, which probably will not happen no. because it's just not how, how the world works anymore. And the second idea, which I like a lot better because I think it's feasible and I think people might decide to agree on this, is play the tie breaks, the rapid tie breaks in front of them, I mean, before the match. And then whoever wins the tie breaks knows 6-6 six, six and he's, he's in his favor. And that means that someone is always trailing in the match and uh, in, in the match, and nobody can really play for just to safeguard the score, so to speak. Interesting. Becomes a bit redundant if the match is whatever seven three. Sure. No. But, <laughs> nothing can be done in those cases, but I think it, it definitely. First of all, people I think like to to see rapid, so there will be. Uh, definite attention and, uh, and anticipation uh, simply because they will play a rapid match uh, in general. But also the situation in which 6-6 is a decisive result will uh, force uh, whoever is sort of trailing to play very aggressively for a win. And the situation like the one that arose in game 12 here will simply be impossible. So I thought that was a useful uh, useful idea which is very worth, uh, very much worth discussing. But. Yeah, for now, I believe the games are about to start. Let's discuss our favorite topic, chess openings. What do we expect from Sergei Kayakin? 1e4? Yeah, I think he'll stick, uh, he'll stick to his usual stuff. There's really no reason for him to suddenly switch to things he was probably not that uh, excited about uh, during, the, uh, during the 12 classical games. No, in the match he had one outing with one d4. Yeah, and we then, suddenly have a whole bunch of moves, a uh, bunch of moves, so we can uh, stop discussing improbables. And uh, it is uh, another Spanish. No surprise yet. Apologies in advance if the moves come in in bunches once in a while because of the situation we're in. We never know when the moves are coming in, but we are confident we will be able to yeah. talk you through the action. <clears throat> and, and another and 63. Yeah. Uh, once again, Sergei sticks with uh, the tried and tested, and we've seen this twice in this in this match already. Uh, B5, D6 played, A3 played, and uh, so far Magnus played two different systems against this. Uh, one is castles bishop B6, and one is uh, uh, castles bishop B7, queen D7. And today he goes for no, something. No, no, that's not accurate. One is knight A5, bishop Sorry, B6, yeah. and the other one is immediate bishop B6 after castles. But in this position, he. Today plays a third move, the move knight to b8. Yeah, Weird that, little move. That is very, very rare, I believe. Wesley so experimented with this move. I can't tell how many games. Was this the game Anand so, which he lost? Could have been. 
Possibly, but I... There's also a game Caruana, so I believe. I can't even recall this uh, the, these two games, which which means that it probably is a somewhat more recent development than uh, this move. Frankly, did not exist more or less at all when I was recording my my video series, or, or I would have would have mentioned it at least at least in passing. For viewers that are not Rui Lopez professionals, this move must look completely ridiculous. You put the knight back to its original square. But there is some logic to it. It's similar to what we call the Briar system. I'm not going to put it on the board because this is rapid. It would take too long. But in general, this knight is always slightly misplaced in these structures. And what black wants is to put this knight on d7, put his bishop on b7. Then, in many a case, put this knight on c5. Sometimes you want to go rook a, bishop f8. It is a reasonably sound regrouping, but not seen much in this particular yeah. case with the knight on c3. The, the, the thing about the briar is that it generally is played in the anticipation of white playing d2, d4. That's and brilliant. then the bishop on b7, yeah, we, we probably have time for that. And then, as usual, we touched on this, on this particular point uh, during this broadcast already. Developing the bishop on b to b7 in the Spanish is generally considered to be more attractive when white plays d4 and not d3, because then this bishop actually, uh, well, does something. It creates some pressure against the white center. It forces white to at least play, let's say, bishop b3, c2 to continue the uh, developing the, the knight from uh, d2 to g3. But here, uh, Sergei played knight e2, which is probably the most natural decision, but also probably d4 uh, could have been an option. Many even, moves come yeah, to Even knight d5 is not entirely pointless. I have a feeling a4 was yeah. played by Caruana, a4, b4, knight d5. Yeah. But knight e2, this, like black's move, knight b8, white also wants to regroup this knight typically to yeah, g3. That, that, that is still all, all very, very logical. c5, knight g3 played. And here I think more than developing it to d7, black just wanted to include uh, c5, knight c6 without giving white the opportunity to play uh, b4. If you, after knight c3, if you play knight a5, uh, bishop a2, c5, which would look a lot logical in order to play c5, yes. white always has this option of playing uh, uh, before here, and also the knight might go to g5. So by playing knight b8, black uh, prompted white to uh, switch to the plan with knight a2, knight g3, and then went for the usual setup with the uh, knight on c6 and the pawn now being on c5. Still, you've lost some time, right? Yeah. Normally, knight a5, this bishop has to go to a2. Well, yeah. here, white could make all his useful moves. Knight sure. Sure. Yeah. So, so you, arguably, you lost maybe half a tempo, maybe even a full tempo, but you uh, prevented some things which may have been somewhat unpleasant. So, uh, it's unclear whether this is uh, how to how to count this in in, in terms of tempo lost and gained. I think bishop e6 is probably the most natural move here, but then white takes and goes b4. And this is very similar to a lot of positions in various anti-marshals. This actually resembles anti-marshals, I think, more than the, the 63 systems. And Magnus uh, waits for a move playing rook b8. This is a bit of a mysterious move. I recall he played this once and again against Leiko. Not in this position, but in a... I think where it was, maybe even here. So it's a personal favorite of Carlsen in a way. Yeah, I think... Why he does that? Yeah, it's, it's not immediately obvious why this is so useful. In some positions, I mean, if white plays a4, it definitely improves uh, the move b5 before, but white probably will not play a4 anyway, because with the pawn on c5, the idea of playing a4 here feels a bit, feels a bit uh, abstract. h3 played by Karakin, he is now probably ready to play d4 next move, if allowed. I was gonna show this. If you start with d4, I'm not sure which way we do it, but let's say this. Both make sense, to... yeah worry about bishop g4 a great deal. Yeah, this pin is very un unpleasant once white actually plays d3, d4. It's completely harmless with a pawn steal on d3, though it's important to, to, to understand this distinction. Yes. With a pawn steal on d3, nobody ever plays bishop g4 because it's just a waste of a tempo, but uh, once the pawn reaches d4. h3, a5. So black actually is uh, aiming for some kind of an expansion on the queen side, which is an interesting plan. I haven't really seen very much. I'm it's very wondering... daring to ignore the king side like that and ask to... Yeah, I'm wondering what the reply to d4 here is. Because d4 does feel like it's it's becoming more and more attractive by the second here. Very strange plan. Rook b8 followed by a5. Maybe, I'm sure it's either preparation or at least a conscious decision by sure. Magnus Carlsen to get a fresh position here. 
But and this then, looks very risky. Yeah, judging by the speed of play, this has still to, to be some kind of preparation. Maybe, you know, not detailed uh, forcing lines, but a plan which uh, Magnus settled on against more or less anything, I, I would assume. Because knight e2, knight g3 followed by c3 has to be one of the more obvious replies to knight b8. Sure. So uh, would not at all be surprised if this is still... Uh, homework for Magnus. So what does he want after d4? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe... <clears throat> We're thinking about this, but it's, it goes against everything we learned in yeah. school. These positions generally tend to favor white, although... I was a bit curious if here one could make a case for this, but it looks very loose even this. Yeah, this this, this might backfire quite seriously. First of all, after d5, I think you might lose material. You, you will have to play b3. Ah, because knight a7, a b, you resign. So you have to play b3. And uh, yeah, this is very, very risky on, on so many levels. Like bishop b1, knight a7, and like bishop b3, queen a2, knight g2, you might lose the c4 pawn first and foremost. But that is very committal because the bishop on b1 is also completely locked in. And Sergei does something I did not really expect him play to do. Play a4? I thought that yeah. sort of justified yeah, that, that, white's pl black's play. Yeah, that now completely, I think, justifies what Magnus has been doing. This is a really weird decision to my eyes. I agree. Because now you go b4 and you have some counterplay on the queen side yeah. and you fix the Actually, queen side. Actually, playing d3, d4 will become a lot harder now because uh, black can take on c3, take on d4 twice, and you cannot even recapture immediately. You will probably eventually win it back. But uh, black gets a lot of counterplay because the yeah the bishop on b3 is now hanging. Maybe weird is a strong word, but I think it's definitely playing into playing into what Magnus has been actually actively trying to achieve. Now yeah, white can't really open the queen side anymore. Black in a way carries the key to the lock, right? Because black has this bc3, well, yeah. white cb4. And, and also an another important thing to note is that uh, I think with the queen side now effectively closed. There will now be no play on the queen side, uh, unless Black decides there should be play on the queen side. Yeah, but that's an important distinction, right? Because yeah. if it's completely locked, you could still argue White has these yeah. typical plans: knight sure. h2, queen f3, knight g4 but, with attack. What, what, what I wanted to say is, I think playing bishop b6 becomes a lot more uh, comfortable for Black here, okay. because yeah. because that uh, that structure after bishop b6 takes f takes e6. Let's I think. Make a move. Yeah, like bishop b3. Yeah, mm -hmm. takes takes. You do have to watch for d3, d4 here, so maybe it's not still uh, entirely uh, safe. But in general, uh, let's say my personal preference is not to get the structure with black when white can still get the his own pawn to b4, like we were discussing earlier. Yeah, that, that structure with a3, b4, and c3. And now that there's a black pawn on b4, all of these structures feel a lot more, uh, a lot more playable for black. Very interesting stuff. What's well, interesting that black completely neglects, normally in these positions you make some moves on the king side, h6, rook e8, bishop f8. The thing about it, it like he, yeah. need to. he also I think doesn't want to create targets, because uh, with the pawns on g7 and h7 it's, uh, it's a lot harder for white to figure out what he should be playing against. So in a way I, I quite understand this decision. Uh, because sort of in order to play rook e8 you need to play h6, and once you play h6 all kinds of uh, Plans, for instance, starting with knight h4, uh, yeah, allowing this is never a good idea because you more or less just lose a tempo. And if you play h6, knight h4 always becomes a lot stronger because it's it's much harder to meet by playing g6 because uh, g6 will just be taken because of the pin. And yeah, uh, playing h6 in these structures often uh, uh, makes it a lot easier for white to plan and execute something on the king side. And it looks like Kayakim, well, you. It's clearly out of book. There's a5 and rook b8 you can't really anticipate. But it looks like after a4, where b4 is pretty much the only move, he's taking a bit of time. So maybe something he's... I don't know, something's gone a little wrong, but I seem surprised. Well, on the other hand, he also secured his own queen side to a large sure. degree. So he can think about uh, yeah, moves like bishop c4, or perhaps knight h2 might make some sense. Knight h4 less so, but even knight h4 might not be completely ridiculous depending on whether black can take on e4 in that position. But let's say knight h2 followed, uh, if allowed once again, by maybe f2, f4 even. He played Not going to happen, because he just played rook e1, so this there's move, no more yeah, f4. This move I, uh, I feel is uh, sort of qu quiet compared to, to the other options available to him. And in general, I think in the 6d3, the Spanish, uh, 
you, you often try to save on this tempo. You, in particular, in a structure like this, when black seems to give you a free, a free hand on the king side. I would at least seriously consider doing something on the, on the king side before playing rook e1. Your point is the other main line, not 6d3, is the move rook e1 here, yeah. containing c3, d4. But one of the appealing things about d3 is that in many a line you don't really need your rook here. Yeah, Sometimes it's, a, it's an option this. you can try and save on. It, it, it might be a half tempo you don't... I mean, it's never a bad move in these positions, obviously, because black in many cases will go for some kind of counterplay in the center, and having a, the, the rook on e1 will control that counterplay a lot better. But uh, yeah, I think the issue with both knight h2 and maybe even knight h4 was that after bishop e6 you would need to commit, uh, I mean if the bishop leaves the the diagonal uh, then the play with f4 will no longer be all that threatening and if you take on e6 uh, your play with f4 is once again uh, a lot less potent so well, I can sort of understand why he didn't do it but and Carlsen has played bishop e6, also not a surprise, no, as yeah. mentioned, with the queen side I fixed. think takes, takes, it. takes, takes and d4, either immediately or after some kind of preparation. I'm not sure what kind. Bishop e3 feels slow. We need to check this immediately. This, I think, is the most critical. Let's do it. And I'm sort of curious because uh, sort of in the spirit of what Magnus has been doing up to this point is e4, cd4, c4. That's what I was thinking about that. And very double-edged, yeah. allowing d5. Yeah, d5 needs to be played, I feel, because otherwise, uh, I mean, if black gets d5 in, even though the knight will have to go to some potentially uncomfortable squares from f6, your structural advantage on the queen side is such that uh, uh, you just need to survive until some kind of an endgame, and you will be much better slash maybe winning. Just one very brief note, I'm sure you figured it out, but on the big board we're moving the pieces around like maniacs. Analyzing is what some other people call it, while on the smaller board, which we've made bigger though, you can see the actual game position, or at least the position that yeah. we currently have. So d5 here, I thought maybe takes, takes knight e5, and then you need to calculate knight d4, because if you take twice, bishop d6 is very strong, I think. This looks like good counterplay. Yeah, this looks like sight. It's, it's well, very, six, very nice, very, very nice for black. But yeah, knight d4, knight d4 was worrying me a little bit. Well, Strange maybe. position, not yeah. so clear. Queen d7 simply, sidestep all the forks and uh, yeah, very weird position. Very sharp, very concrete. Might be very good for black, because strategically I think black is very much ahead here, but it's it, it sort of depends on whether white gets something on the king side here incredibly fast. And we've seen from Kayakin at least in the classical games, when surprised or when facing something a bit unfamiliar. Normally he's erred on the side of being solid. Do you think he can do that here? Or well, you can wait almost, well, like, not, not, not like bishop e3, let's say. Bishop e3 actually allows d5. I'm not sure you, you need to allow d5 straight away. I had that question in general. Oh, could be, yes, gaining so space is more important than weakening this I think here. I think here gaining space is very important. Although I can play queen c2, yes, and uh, mm. just as you mentioned, continue keeping things under control, not committing to anything. It's not... It's not an impossible plan at all. Kayakin is thinking, keeping this bishop is feels very passive here, right? Bishop no, but then, then you, you really, really don't have anything at all, I think. Well, You're also he, always risking, this might not be a big deal, but it's not so easy to free this bishop sometimes. Yeah, with the bishop on e6 it's a bit slight, it's a bit more awkward because white will probably be able to push d4 and then uh, the threat of d5 will cost black a whole, a whole tempo. Mm. Sure. But yeah, you, you need to you need to consider b3. I'm I'm even wondering if he but I mean not taking on e6 in these positions, it just feels it it feels very uh, unprincipled, so to speak. But a move like bishop c4 might not be might not be such a horrible idea. If you want to oh, once again keep okay. <laughs> uh keep keep things somewhat under control. Can I go nuts? Well it depends. Takes you to want to take with a knight. But yeah, this is maybe possible, but I play something like bishop d2. And e5 will start hanging at some point. I mean, f6, we'll d4. Covering it at some point. But f6, d4, d4 yeah. might be might be awkward. Right. And bishop b5 is a lot. And he has played bishop c4. Interesting. Once again, you guessed, guessed the move. Guessed the move. I was always very good at guessing. Crushing it. Let's see how Carlson reacts. The point is, this structure actually might be nice for white. Is what you're saying? It looks well, crippled, but it controls all the squares. Yeah, the black the black pieces don't really have anything to look forward to, and the bishop on e seven, yeah, as you as you uh, highlighted there, is is a very very restricted piece. And uh, yeah, I think this should be slightly better for white. Maybe not 
drastically because his pieces are also somewhat far away from the d5 square, for instance. But yeah, I wouldn't take on c4 here. He just uh, settles the issue and makes white's life a lot, a lot simpler. We shall find out what the world champion. You can play maybe d5 and take with the it? bishop because of some tactical justifications. Like, yeah, if this you take, doesn't work, for example. Yeah, that was the tactical <laughs> justification I was speaking of. D1 is hanging in this position. But obviously white has a large number of options after bishop takes d5. Something like bishop g5 is a move. Queen e2 is a move. Queen c2 is a move. All of those things. So many moves. Is this a move? Bishop b5 is definitely an option as well. Yeah. Big decision. To me d5 feels principled, but that doesn't mean it has to be good. Also the immediate bishop b5 you have to consider when you might lose a pawn. After some bishop takes c6 and knight takes e5, we will. Can Carlson continue to play more quietly? Some knight maneuver? I don't know, knight d7 or something like that. Knight d7, b6 is yeah. possible, but that probably improves white's options in the center because black removed his uh, his knight from you know the immediate the immediate fight for the central squares. And also, no, I, I wanted to say once you go knight b6, I can play bishop b5, but then knight a7 is kind of awkward, yeah. Might be might be a reasonable idea, but yeah, somewhere here taking taking and d4 might be a better version for white, or not. It's not not immediately obvious. And Magnus went for a for a waiting move for the time being. Now that the situation is clarified, he can switch back to more standard play. This h6, rook a8, bishop f8. Normally, if black doesn't know what to do, he wants to play these moves in one order or another. And it's also nice to rule out. First of all, ideas with bishop takes e6, knight g5. They weren't threatening, but to just not have to worry about it. Mm. And strategically, sometimes bishop g5, bishop f6 can be an idea. So it's a useful little move. Yeah, and I think it makes a lot more sense once you've uh, somewhat neutralized the bishop on the b3, sure. uh, mm. b3, g8 diagonal. Because all those plans uh, on the king side are now subject to immediate simplifications. Maybe he's also cunningly waiting for a move like bishop e3 when d5 yeah. could gain in strength. Sure. Still not sure if it works, but here, for example, this is no longer under I was, attack. I was playing bishop yeah, d2 this, anyway, this. so... Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure it, it's such a great improvement if you need to play something like f6, then probably you actually mm -hmm. want the pawn on h7, but... Don't want h6. Yeah. No, yeah, something like queen c7, maybe. And, yeah, if black consolidates here, black will be doing very, very well, but you need to calculate all those little moves, like bishop b5 here might be might be an issue. You might have to play some kind of a marshal because the pawn on e5 might very well be, uh, well, not indefensible, but you don't really want to defend it by playing f6. We shall find out. I have a feeling, I don't know how this is objectively, but I have a feeling Carlson is enjoying himself here. He got, got away with his knight b8, c5, knight c6, a5, rook b8. Experiment, or I don't think there's many, classical predecessors to this plan. And Kayakin, A4 to my mind feels like a strange yeah, reaction. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have been my first choice, but uh, still his position is obviously very solid. He played bishop b3. No, white is perfectly fine, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think Carlsen got away with a little gamble here. Potentially, yeah. We, we, we don't really know what happens after knight b8 if white decides to punish it in the strictest way, way possible. It's too rare a move and I don't really have any any serious idea what, what what was going on there, but it does feel like Karakin decided not to engage, so to speak, just just let it be, mm. continue playing normally. Just not the dumbest strategy, especially in a rapid match when mm, on familiar ground. Not at all. And Carlson, I was going to say that at least he is quite a bit ahead on the clock. Not dramatically, but if our clocks are more or less accurate, 21 minutes 30 versus 13, which matters a little bit. Sure. What's the rule in rapid chess? You said in classical chess half an hour is one pawn. How does that translate to rapid? Like 10 minutes or a pawn? I'm not sure. It's it's a lot harder. Oh, no, half a pawn, right? Half an hour yeah, is half a pawn. Uh, it's a lot harder to judge in rapid, but it's it's a significant advantage. Having having an extra seven minutes or so in this position, it's a very complicated position. There's going to be plenty plenty of difficult decisions ahead, and uh, it's it's nice to have the, the buffer here. What do you do, though? Do you still... I'm guessing he's thinking about d5. d5, you also always got to worry about this move. Immediately. Yeah, even bishop b5 immediately is, is an issue. 
there's an unconfirmed report in chat of him taking on c4, which h6 would actually somewhat support. You can play it, takes, takes rook e8, uh, followed by bishop, bishop f8, and you, you've ruled out bishop g5 here. And also, I think the knight on g3 may have been headed towards e3 uh, later in life, because it's a nice, f5 is a nice square, but it's not gonna, without the light square bishop, it will not really probably lead to mate, so... Uh, the e3 square, which was very likely useful to, for, for that knight, is now occupied. But those are still unconfirmed reports, so we'll wait for. I do recall positions like this from these a4, b4 anti-marshals. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do, but black generally doesn't get a structure like this there. I think it's very difficult to get the pawn from c7 to c5. And the pawn to a5 as well. Sometimes, I mean, you you get these types of structures, but I think uh, maybe different pieces come off. I think maybe two 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 pairs of light pieces may be exchanged on c4, for instance, yeah. in those cases. But yeah, let's not uh, get to do e, e, into deep into comparisons between various. Another beautiful discussion in these types of positions is always who has the worst bishop? Because at first sight, it's obvious this bishop is very bad. You have all your pawns on the color of the bishop. And we learned that's a bad thing. But you can also argue that the black pawn chain severely restricts the I white I think both of, them, both of them are somewhat useless. And this is why I think it's important to play h6 so that white doesn't have a way to get rid of his, his e3 bishop so easily. Queen c8 played by Magnus, which I think is a very decent waiting move. Uh, he, he now is probably going to take on a6 with the queen if, uh, if the, uh, the question arises. Really? I think so, yeah. But then my knight goes to f5, and a yeah. knight on f5 is worth a pawn. Rook fd8, bishop f8, and then I will carefully swap it off. I don't know. I'm not sure about this, but I think not spoiling not spoiling my structure is is also useful. Like bishop 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 f8. Um, yeah, I might be I might be slightly over optimistic Four, about this. Three. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But since why play bishop c4 is also quite. Probable that bishop e6 f e is not a structure he's fancying, right? Sure, sure. I think you you don't have to worry about it happening immediately. Two moves after white declined this this exchange. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also, one topic of conversation which we we could maybe discuss is that this is being played on Magnus's birthday. Yeah. First of all, happy birthday to Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, who turns 26 today. And happy birthday to Mr. Laurent Fassinet, one of his helpers, at least in the past, we don't know, for this match. But he shares his birthday with the world champion. And I believe he turns 45 or no, 30, 35 today. Not even I am 45, come on. And I'm an old, old man. But I believe the topic you bring up is not to just congratulate these gentlemen, but what we touched on the other day, Empirical data, and that is mainly opponents telling me after my games that it was their birthday, sh suggests that people perform worse on their birthdays, right? I think it's the the, the general understanding. I'm not sure how well it's supported by uh, by hard really? facts, but I, I I have a feeling that if if, if someone were to collate the, the 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 data and and actually look at this, it would it would be borne out by by facts. And actually, uh, yesterday a good friend of mine uh, lost a very important game on his first day in the, in the World Seniors. Okay. So, yeah, these things do happen. I'm not even going to joke about you having good friends in the World Senior. It's the, it's the over 50, not the over 50, not the over 65. Okay. Uh, I might be playing in those. So. Uh, Queen e2, rook d8 uh, on the board, as expected. We thought rook d8. Uh, and this actually resembles uh, some... A4, B4. Yeah, some of those positions. But once again, generally, you would get these positions with opponent c7 in a lot of cases. Let's just briefly, very briefly, show people what we're talking about. I'm not sure that many dudes are interested in the depth of the anti martial But there is this line, which yeah. is different because the white pawn is on a5. But the maneuvering is kind of similar. Yeah, queen c8 but is a very, this very is a very yeah. established plan. Though. Yeah, I, I played game like games like this against Levon Aronian in the in the late 90s, where Black was already going for these types of setups, and they were considered to be very solid and very correct even then. As you 
expertly pointed out, this is a different structure. White has black has c5 and a5, which is pros and cons. Bishop b5 was a nuisance, and maybe Carlsen also didn't want to worry about that every move, so he yeah. decided to protect his knight ahead of time. Another small side effect of queen c8 is if white ever wants to go knight f5, now he has to think very seriously about black just chopping black, off that. Point. Yeah, black will will pick pick that up. Yeah, and and generally also if you give black additional two tempi, I think bishop f8 followed by g6 is very likely. Uh, and once this bishop gets to g7, you will start looking at d6, d5 a lot more seriously. Or maybe once you are prepared to put it on g7 even. Because uh, it will be a lot easier to to support your pawn on e5. But I'm not sure if black gotcha. even, even need, needs to, you know, seriously consider the d6, d5 break for the time being. I think he still has a lot of uh, improving resources. And now we will settle... This is a logical move now that the rook is on d8 because yeah. fe less tempting with your rook. I really, th I really, really believe it. It should be taken with the queen. Yeah, his play, especially rook d8, hints at that. Well, it still gives white more of an autopilot. Sure, and I also should mention that you can you can even play c3, c4 here and claim that you are the only one who will be playing on the king side in this in in this game. Absolutely, because your bishop is, after all, at least visually slightly better than the one uh, on e7. That would be kind of in kayakin style, right? Not taking too many chances and maybe maintaining some small pressure. I like this move. Yeah, it's a, it's a sensible decision. I believe. Mm -hmm. I've played too many anti-marshals in my life. Even this structure, I believe I've had in a game against Mr. Yeah. Salgado. Black is very solid here. Yeah, of but course. Bishop of eight, Bishop of eight, g6 and uh, uh, you, you sort of wait for white to play f4, and then this bishop on g7 will become... That's the Magnus, point. Magnus actually disagrees, which is Plays curious. Plays yeah? Yeah, he took with the pawn. Okay. And d4 on the board. Wow, this is heating up fast. That's the principal argument against f8, this d4 opening, especially with the rook on d8 yeah. and the queen on c8. This looks quite right. nice for Yeah, it does, it does feel very logical. White sort of uh, improved his position to the, to the maximum, uh, at least to the maximum immediately obvious, and now he is uh, playing against the black center. And also our plan of ed4, cd4, c4 has been ruled out, which I think is important because it, it, it helps white control the situation in the center a lot better. I quite like this for white, actually. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure what black is doing. Yeah. What options are there? Well, he started by bc3, which I thought was probably the prescribed way to go about things here. To at least activate some of your some of your pieces and maybe like take twice and play rook b4, but it doesesn't feel all that comfortable. Like no. rook e c1 followed by bishop c3 might be quite annoying, for instance. E d4 hasn't been played yet, as no, as you may have noticed. Analysis. No, I'm talking to to the the audience. To you people. Yeah. And knight b4, but this knight is so strong. Yeah, and e6. It's not hanging some, right now, but yeah. Even queen c4, but although d5 probably yeah, is something D5. black is black is planning anyway. But yeah, this uh, and c takes d4 might takes. I mean, c d4 has been played. White will obviously recapture, and the black probably needs to take once again because you you don't really want to allow white to take on e5 and get this uh, get this structure yeah. in the center. So yeah, that's good. You do. Our good friend Jonathan Tisdall is uh, calling us out on the birthday statistics and. He wants me to actually quote some data. I don't have any data, Jonathan. He doesn't believe it? Do the research. Do it for us. Magnus. We will accept your, your, your data if you quote some data at us. 26-year-old Magnus has taken on d4 and played rook b4. Rook c1, though. How is he going to reply to this? My best guess is by moving. Queen a8. Point. No, I mean, bishop c3 actually attacks the a5 pawn. This was why I was so worried about ah, this. No, okay. I think queen a8 might be the only move in the position because otherwise you just lose this pawn. And here you also will Even be... this looks very uncomfortable. Yeah, you will be forced into some contortions here because uh, the rook has to go to some unfortunate squares and even e5 followed by queen takes e5 might be might be a very serious issue here. Although, hang on, he has queen d7. What am I talking about? Wait, wait, wait. Instead of queen yeah, a8. Of, yeah. Up to hit that, a4. Yeah, that explains it because queen a8 really looked like black would be... Uh, somewhat struggling. Whereas once the queen side goes, I mean, white can take on a5 here, but uh, 
yeah, four against four, generally almost on one side, is not going to be an issue. Yeah, so white, white, yes. Slightly uncoordinated, no? Yeah, white can only be better here if the pawns on, on the A file survive. If they get traded off, it's going to be very, very level. Okay, Akin is thinking. Still, I don't fully trust Black's position here. I'm not sure. I, I think it very much decision. it very much depends on whether White can keep the A pawns alive. I, I would like to meet more or less anything with Queen D7, uh, if if at all possible. Yeah, but here, I Queen F5, Knight F5 is maybe what you're trying to threaten. Yeah? This or this is not what I'm trying to. No, threaten. Rook, rook D8 is what I would like to play here with the idea of Rook C4. And also stopping bishop c3, but I'm worried I will lose to e5 in some position. I might also consider this. Yeah. Because e5, g5, bishop c3 picks up the exchange, which is unfortunate. Yeah, rook e c1 played, but that I think is kind of a draw. Oh no, hang on, maybe queen d7, queen d1 is what he's planning. Because he, uh, if he's not planning queen d1, then rook e c1 I think maybe is, is an inaccuracy. Let's see, queen d1, nice geometry covers both these guys. But it feels a little passive. Well, bishop c3 is still a threat, though. It yeah, still needs to be. It still needs to be dealt with uh, somehow. Queen d7 on the board, and yeah, we expect to, we expect Sergei to play queen g1 because really nothing else fits. I think uh, you, you cannot allow black to take on a4 if you are playing for a win here. If this, you still have. I still have bishop c3. I was trying to make this work somehow, but. I'm not sure. I was wondering about crazy stuff, but I don't think it's good enough. No, yes. I think that's that's way you know, bishop no, seven. Bishop seven, bishop seven yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think maybe after g five, bishop c three, I can play rook c four, bishop a five. No, he, Hang okay. on. Ah, oh, this is on the board. Bishop c three, rook a four. Okay, so no, it's quite drawish, is what you're Yeah, saying. this this will this will probably get wrapped up reasonably quickly. I think now. Mm, rapid things can always happen. No, Magnus, you know. If if it was a slight advantage to Magnus, he would obviously play on. But I honestly, I think it's just so so level here that yeah, okay, rook a one, rook a one, rook a eight. Pin. Yeah, it's bishop c three. Yeah, and and in this position, four against four, and white structure is still somewhat better. Even so, yeah. If if anyone can play on for a bit, it's white. But it, it doesn't really feel like anyone has anything the here. Horse king, is too king, passive. King f seven just stabilizes everything. I would be very very interested to find out why he didn't play queen d one there. I don't see any reason not to continue. I quite like his position, actually. If black has to play something like rook a8... Okay, machine suggests rook c8 is playable. This we didn't see. We uh, First time I switched on the yeah. machine, just to clarify. By the way, we'll normally inform you when we start using it, sometimes. Yeah, and I immediately immediately started quoting it. This is an important move, because bishop c3, uh, I missed that rook bc4 is very strong here. And once again, everything comes off on the queen side. This is an important. This is an important uh, thing to to uh, to mention because otherwise, Queen G one I think gave White a very comfortable game, and there was no reason uh, not to continue for Sergey. So, is it too early to wrap up? This feels like it's going to end in a draw, even though whatever. <laughs> wrap it. Let's wait till the end. But Magnus Carlsen I mean, experimenting White, in the opening. White can, can even play e5 here if he really wants to nullify, uh, you know, everything. e5, queen c1, queen f1, and just... Uh, oh, and, only White can be better, right? No, three against three, no one is better. Uh, you need a lot of a lot more pieces on the kings uh, on the board to make any kind of an argument when it's three against three on one flank, especially with the queens off. I mean. I think e5 is the, the the most practical solution, but uh, Sergei disagrees. Sergei wants to play this play this for a win. For, I mean, fair play, fair play to play him. On. But like king f7, and I think it's just it's going to be extremely hard to to prove anything here for white. I was wondering about knight d7, but then queen g4 because uh, knight d7 bishop f6 would have been a very nice plan to. I mean, if, if black manages to exchange the bishops off, uh, the game is completely equal. But yeah, with the, with the bishop on a1, still slightly more active than the bishop on e7, and black not really wanting to to play e6, e5. I think it's it's a bit of an ugly move. You never really want to do that. White maybe can uh, play on for a bit. How's the clock situation? Approximately uh, eight against sixteen. Yeah, okay, but it doesn't but, matter very yeah. much. Yeah, they get ten seconds per move, and this position is simplified enough that you can. Sure. It's out a lot of moves. Sure. Should you feel the need? Yeah. 
No, but uh, got some taking a little time here to figure out how to arrange his pieces, but I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even wasn't. yeah I was about to say this sixty five might be a a very yeah, yeah. very hard to no, three it. against three uh, it just becomes so much easier for black to control this also the bishop on e seven becomes alive you can develop it to d six or anywhere yeah, I think d five probably is the most practical decision here mm. he I don't know if he is worried about bishop takes f six but I don't think he should be I was going to ask but it doesn't look I mean, e5, bishop e7, you, you might uh, sort of play yourself into, or even bishop g5, you might play yourself into some difficulty with white. No. Yeah, e5, no, even, even, even the queen takes, frankly, you're not losing this. Uh, yeah, this three three. yeah, this position, if you if you add a couple of rooks to each side and white is a lot more active, then, Oops. <laughs> then it, uh, yeah, there was a... a I've done of, this in the past, <laughs> apologies. We'll be back with the board and board is spelled B-O-A-R-D. In this case, the program disappeared, but we are strongly expecting a draw in the first game. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it uh, up and running uh, pronto, but uh, the position is not particularly complicated and uh, just following the game on, uh, we've actually made the, the little board disappear as well, so. Mm. Easy, and I might, might need some help here because it's asking me for login credentials, which of course I don't have. Mm. Could, you could try yours and it might let you in. I knows. doubt it, I doubt it. They've made all these things like foolproof here. Mm. Still, we are expecting a draw. The game is still ongoing. I apologize, but of course, it's not really my fault. Nothing is ever my fault. It is... I endorse this message. Peter's fault. Mm. I endorse I do most. Not endorse that. I endorse most messages, frankly. <laughs> yeah, we're really not sure what happened there, and we will eventually get tech support for our little mishap. But mm. it's all very confusing. That it is. You but keep telling the good people out yeah. there how the game is going. I Magnus is still thinking of. Uh, uh, according to our website, Magnus is still uh, still thinking about. Uh, uh, the best way to proceed after King H2, but I, I do believe that playing D5 is probably the most practical and the most uh, uh, straightforward way of uh, straightforward way of uh, wrapping things up because Black really is never ever war better here, and if uh, if you're not really ever playing for a win, it makes sense to to simplify immediately and make sure that your opponent doesn't really you know feel the need to continue. King f7 played apparently, and uh, maybe Magnus also doesn't feel that he needs to rush, but I, I quite like d5 as a move. Are you alerting tech support over there? Yeah, but... Apparently we're having a bit of an issue. It's good that the position is so dry because uh, having this happen when uh, when there is something uh, incredibly ex exciting happening on the board would have been far, far worse. But still we apologize mm. for... You know what, let's <clears throat> improvise Jan handle this situation. <clears throat> Not well, but badly. I'm aware this is not the prettiest graphic known to man, but until tech support contacts us, at least we have a little chessboard here. Why did I cut off Magnus Cuts? No, I can't do better than that. What's going on in your life? My life? Or do anybody's life, just say something. Do, 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 do I have a life? I don't know, I tell me about it. Well, I can barely remember having a life at one point, but uh, uh, this match has match has been uh, sort of uh, occupying the the entirety of it for the past uh, three weeks or, or so. It feels at at least. And uh, how do you feel about the match? Do you feel Carlson has done badly? Kayakin has done well. Both of these, none of the above. What's I think I think both both of these are 
true to a, to a certain extent. Magnus has not done horribly poorly, but I think he, he will agree he hasn't played the most stellar chess of his career. And I think Sergei played a very, very solid, solid match. And uh, uh, will will obviously regret uh, having been given a, a very, very large opportunity by Magnus over pressing in game eight. He will feel that he maybe should have should have been uh, able to, to to hold game ten. He he came very close, and he even in a press conference he was he he mentioned. Uh, a move which, although it's not obvious that he would have held after it, but it was a much better option than what he played. You're referring to yeah the idea of yeah the idea of playing knight h6 there instead of rook h7. So in the position that is currently on the board, what could White dream of? Well, Bishop b2 has played. Well, that's the thing though. You, you, we like d5 because it simplified the situation and made made life a lot easier for Black. But even if Black does absolutely nothing, it's not that clear how White can proceed from here. And d5 is still very much a playable move he, even now. There's there's you know, not a lot has changed really. Uh, but uh, Magnus, yeah, Magnus seemingly doesn't really want to force anything. He's gone queen c5, so he is going with the plan of. Uh, just not doing anything at all and giving White uh, giving White the free reign here and saying you will not improve this position. Uh, please continue if you want to continue, and uh, it's not unreasonable. It is it is after all a four four again four against four with very limited material on the board and uh, I think he feels you know safe enough here with Black that he, he he doesn't really feel the urge to force force the issue straight away. Do you think he's hoping for Kayakin to overpress? Or is in this position, I don't think he's hoping for anything in particular. He he knows that he will have to blunder something really large to lose this. F four on the board. Yeah, and I think also overpressing for White is not is not an easy an easy thing to do here because uh, it's just so safe. Bishop d eight b six will create a threat of mate oh. one, but uh, interesting. But once again, you 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 kind of need to to blunder something here. Uh, for for any of this to uh, to shift the evaluation from total equality, chess understanding question. After f5, do we go e5? In How ugly is this? In some cases, I'm not sure about this precise position, but in some cases, definitely because it kills off the bishop on b2. The knight on g3 is not at all ideal here, and bishop b6 will be a very very good move to make on the next move. So, yeah, I think it's not it's not a stupid idea. Even even just playing bishop b6, f6, king e6 is also I think perfectly fine. You didn't really need to to do anything at all. I mean, f5 is not a. I like this move here. Yeah. I understand it's anti-positional. Should White ever well, get his bishop to h4, exchange and put a knight on d5? But I don't think that's gonna happen. No. But of course, you can also threaten mate in one. Yeah. And hope that Kayaki misses it. Then again, I I don't think he's famous for missing mates in one. No. Although very very strong players have done this. Kramnik comes on occasion, yeah, yeah. Kramnik comes to mind, yeah. But uh, I think there are other examples. Although Kramnik is, of course, by far the most the most famous. We are referring to a game Kramnik against the computer. Was it Deep Junior? One, one I think player. I think it was, yeah. In a match, how did that match end? Four two, four two. Uh, Vladimir came very close to drawing uh, drawing every single game, apart from the last one, which he was forced to play for a win because of this blunder of mate in one move he committed. I think in game. I want to say, say three or maybe four. I think three. Uh, but he felt he was better, and he missed something very, very simple. And yeah, once he once you lose one game against the machine, you are kind of done because uh, drawing against the machine with precise play is still, I think, possible. Or uh, well, maybe if you prepare really, really uh, seriously for the match. But uh, beating the machine becomes uh, a very difficult proposition. That was when. 2002 maybe or no I think it was later I don't think so I think I'm not sure I think uh, it was later but I'm not not entirely confident in my in my recollection there but yeah I mean the 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 question of playing uh, playing against the computer has been settled once and for all and and Vladimir despite losing that match was maybe uh, the final bastion of uh, of human resistance, so to speak, because uh, that right. match, I believe, was played under conditions which uh, no previous match between a human and the machine uh, 
uh, were played under. For instance, I think he was given access to uh, the program way in advance, and uh, I think the program was not allowed to use some of the some of the edges that programs uh, routinely. We've we been told it's 2000, 2004. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, machines routinely have huge advantages over humans, in particular in access to table bases. And I think for that match, that was uh, not given to the machine. And maybe even the opening books were either somewhat limited or given, uh, or Tim Kramnik was given access to it, and he had like half a year to prepare. And as mentioned, if not for that fateful blunder, he may have drawn the match with, uh, with six draws. Sort of the, which I think is the aim more or less these days. If you if if you have to play against the machine, you need to start playing very solidly and hope to. to sort just... of the last stand of yeah. the humans, in Gondor style, right? But since then we haven't. No, since then it's it's, it's it's actually become you know more and more embarrassing. With uh, like uh, I think the, the the last headlines I remember were. Uh, I think Jan Elvis at some point played one of the programs in which the program was giving him uh, various ever increasing odds in every game, like starting with a maybe like a match of a match of eight games in which uh, Jan was given odds of every single pawn, starting from A and finishing with H. We have a couple something. moves coming yeah. up here, uh -huh. or something like that. So uh, and also Hikaru, I believe, played a ma match against the machine with Rukots, uh, right? No, Pawnot, sorry, Rukots no, yeah. is Lawrence Trent. I get these confused. No, I think that the, there were pawn odds, and in one game, an ex exchange odds were given. Yeah, I don't like that. We yeah. understand machines are stronger, but let's keep some dignity as humans and not play them with material odds. Yeah, that that really does feel like, uh, I mean, no real purpose is being served by doing this. There is. I mean, it's a PR exercise, but it it is a PR exercise mainly for the no, no, no that's for, for the, the programmers, fighters, yeah. for the programmers, <laughs> exactly. and not for the chess players. And uh, yeah, but these are rare enough not to not to really need too much discussion. Yeah, and after e5 and and taking with the bishop, we are once again in the structure we've uh, we've mentioned a number of times. Same there's, structure after d5, yeah, e5, obviously. Nothing much going on here. Bishop c7 takes off more material. Bishop b6 forces queen d1 and. I mean, White has, you, you know, no claim to, uh, well, anything at all. Even the well, pieces, yeah, that, even so. the pieces for White here are not more active than the black pieces. So, yeah, number of options once again for Black. Pretty much any legal move will maintain equality here. I would want to say. One thing I wanted to ask you: I'm not a mathematician, but we could be here for a while today, right? Do you yeah. feel this is maybe too? Too much workload for the players to decide a world championship yeah. match? Because it could be like six hours of rapid, then potentially four hours of blitz. And maybe well, separating, they've, let's say it's they've had hours. They've had, uh, well, considering what game 12 looked like, they've had two, two, two days of rest to prepare for this. And yes, this will not be an easy day by, by any means. But uh, whether it's too hard, it's, I, don't, I don't necessarily think so. And... Uh, in very very strong rapid competitions, like I think the World Championship, uh, we play uh, five games per day, right. and no one really complains. And uh, oh, yes, I've heard lots of complaining in this Leuven and Paris, where they play five games of twenty five ten or four even. Players get very tired. No, you you do get very tired, but this is not the first time in their life when they've played with uh, under this under these conditions. So. They're also both young. Kayakin, there have been rumors that he has a physical trainer that follows him around everywhere. Magnus Carlsen, he loves climbing whatever mountains they have in Norway. So they're both in excellent shape. But it is still, I believe it's more tiresome than people think. Like sure. for rapid games at this level. I'm, I'm not, not going to argue it's, it's easy. I'm, I've done this and I know it's not, but uh, it's manageable. It's manageable, and they are both uh, in 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 very decent shape, and don't really need to be all that worried. I feel, although uh, we might start seeing uh, some signs of tiredness, and particularly if it reaches the bleed stage. And queen d5 on the board is that a bit of a question? Shall we exchange some more stuff and yeah, play another game? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge here, but. Uh, 
well, any other move would, would, would also be... Uh, it's very difficult to create any pressure with, uh, with, 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 with so few pieces on the board. And yeah, Sergei can continue... Uh, yeah. Mike Didn't, takes. Doesn't even create a passed pawn. Yeah, I think this is... This is, well, uh, this is well, let's go home time. Not literally, because there's three more games. In rapid, but yeah, and we are we are hearing that it may have finished, and this wouldn't surprise me one bit because this position really is now completely completely equal, uh, not really anything uh, happening. And uh, if the bishops come off, uh, knight end games are supposed to be the toughest to hold, but three against two on one side is supposed to be a reasonably easy draw, actually. Three against three doesn't make much harder. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> when you don't even have an extra pawn, you you don't really have much to play for here with white. So draw agreed. We, we, we hear that, but... Uh, uh, I don't trust you chatters out there. Still, if you want to interact with us, when we are referring to the chat, it is the chat on chess24.com. This is the one we're reading. Sometimes people get confused about it, because I believe there's a chat on YouTube as well. But we're referring to the one on chess24. And um, in case there is a draw, they have, I believe, 10 minute breaks, at least that's what was announced. And it, it has been, I think, officially confirmed that this uh, uh, this is uh, this is wrapped up. And I think we'll we'll take a bit of a break uh, ourselves to, to try and fix the the, the issues with the uh, with the board because this this makeshift solution uh, uh, well only only works to, to to some degree, and we would prefer to have uh, our initial setup back. And we'll, we'll work be... on that. And also, you have Fiona, Steel, Anthony to look forward to, who will keep you posted in every break when there's no action on the game. She will tell you what's happening in the outside world. We don't know. We're stuck in our little bubble here in the studio. We don't read. Well, I don't read. You read stuff. Anyway, we'll be back within a couple minutes. Thank you for watching. First game drawn. At least three more. It's not true. At least two more to come.
Hello everyone and welcome to the culmination of the match between Magnus Carlsen and the challenger Sergei Karyakin. Um, as usual, we're going to take a quick look at what is going on uh, in the Twitter sphere. As you can imagine, uh, Twitter is absolutely buzzing and I'm struggling to keep an eye on everything that's going on. But let's start uh, with this uh, photo. It's not actually, it's a GIF, so it's an animated photo. So do go and check it out. It's quite interesting uh, to see Magnus body language before the match started. Uh, and it's uh, Olympia Urgan is saying this world is mine for the taking, make me king, quoting Eminem, uh, quite interesting. As I said, do go and check the tweet out. Uh, moving on, moving on to Anish Giri saying happy birthday Magnus Carlsen. Today is the day to do big things. Um, indeed, it is Magnus' birthday. Peter and Jan mentioned it on air. It's also his second, uh, Laurent Fresinet's birthday. And there's a third grandmaster, my good friend Simon Williams. So, happy birthday to these three gentlemen. And then a tweet from Nigel Short saying, Out of curiosity, why haven't there been any body searches during games? Fides seemed to think it was a great idea in Baku. And some interesting insight there from uh, Jonathan uh, Tisdal saying, They are even searching the food according to Norwegian media. So, I assume security is high. I guess we'll find out more about this um, after the match. Then uh, from one Grandmaster Jonathan to the other, Jonathan uh, Rousen saying, should get the kids to bed, but they can wait. I'm watching uh, Carlson Karyakin here. It's great to see he is watching um, the match on Chess24. And again, just a reminder, if you are struggling to access uh, our website for the moment, you can watch the um, live feed with Jan and Peter on YouTube. Uh, what else is, well, another tweet from Jonathan Tisdall saying, wonder if it's now we'll see real theoretical preparation for the match, higher risk stuff with higher practical impact. Uh, this is something that has been much discussed, um, that uh, maybe theoretical preparation was a slightly disappointing during the match, but yeah, we, it's going to be interesting. We had another Real Lopez now, it's going to be um, looking forward to what is going to be on the board next. And one of these, um, Practical impacts is, as Thomas Randall points out, he says, I don't think Karyakin can afford to be 10 minutes behind on the clock against Magnus. Carlsen already favorite in game one of Rapid. Uh, as we just saw, Sergei managed to deal with this situation okay, but um, it's going to be tricky and uh, it would be better for him indeed if he could manage his time. And here's a funny tweet from Chess5 saying, for the record, Magnus Carlsen is wearing NBA socks today. Um, treat it like basketball and there you go Magnus famously a big um, NBA fan quite a funny tweet then uh, Malcolm Payne also uh, chipping in saying Magnus is a better rapid player and has a great record at Blitz but this will be random and Sergey has shown great nerves uh, something I, I talked about many a time uh, before Sergey's nerves are very well known. We're now one game into the match, three to come. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Again, just a reminder, the break time between the games is 10 minutes. So the second game should be uh, starting shortly. So one last tweet from my part, but I think it comes with a disappointment. Uh, this is a tweet by Michael O saying red square right now. Uh, we see, we see uh, Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karyakin on the big screen, but apparently um, this is fake and photoshopped. But it would be nice if someday we get there with millions of people watching chess on a big screen. So anyway, this is it for part one. I uh, hope you enjoy this. As usual, you can tweet at me uh, directly using hashtag at uh, Fionketa or use hashtag C24Live. Um, I will let the guys come back, take you through game two, and I'll be back after that. Hope you enjoyed this. See you soon.
Welcome back everybody. Game 2 has already begun, so let's jump straight into the action. Mr. Swidler, what do we have on the board? And by board, I do mean the chessboard. Why? What are people doing to me? They're trying to drive me nuts over here, but constantly messing with our little designs. Uh, that's uh, somewhat unexpected. Um, we seem to be having uh, a bit of a tech issue still with... Uh, we're thankful for all the attention our stream is, uh, has garnered, but it seems to have been uh, slightly too much for uh, for the service for the time being. We will we will get this right, hopefully. And we once again apologize for uh, what's happening right now. But yeah, the position on the board seems to be correct. This is a, a, a Joko Piano from what I can see. The pawn on a4 is a very telltale sign, although these structures can appear from a number of various openings. But the pawn on a4 kind of tells you it's it's been a Joko Piano and not the anti-Berlin. Let's go through it. Sure. Three bishop c4, so Carlson clearly not in the mood for another Berlin wall this time around. Bishop c4 is the game, is the move he played in game number, whatever game it was, five, I believe. Yeah. Castles, millions of move orders here, but they keep leading towards the same thing. If black is happy to play with d6, black wants to go d5, slightly different story. And I believe that's one reason why it starts with a4 and not c3, when at least you can think about d5. Yeah. And this is still pretty close to what happened in uh, whichever game that was. Yeah, I believe game five. Five, yeah. Five is correct. And uh, there was something like... Yeah. B4 and rookie one happened there, but today Magnus went for something slightly okay. different. And... Uh, uh, H3, knight e7, Sergei once again... Uh, and this is... Yeah, okay, well, knight g4 was not allowed here. I was about to go on a bit of a tangent, but the, it, it's no longer relevant. Knight e7, knight g6 is what Sergei played in that game and what he also is playing today. It's a very standard plan here. Once again, Carlsen left his bishop on c4. More often than not, you see the bishop on b3 here. Maybe having it on c4, it can retreat all the way back to f1 in some cases. But let's see what position we have on the board. Knight b2, c6. And I believe Magnus, and Magnus does play bishop, bishop f1. And... Uh, he, the biggest question in these types of positions is whether black can uh, somehow manage to play d6, d5, absolutely annihilating the, the center and equalizing in most cases almost immediately if he does if he does achieve that. But he also can just play as if, uh, you know, white, not, white doesn't really have any any particularly dangerous plans like rook e8, queen c7, h6, just make all kinds of, all kinds of normal moves. Because uh, the bishop on c1 is currently somewhat passive and uh, connecting the rooks will not be so easy for white. Right. Mm. So, an, an so what does white want? Like a5 maybe? Mm -hmm. a5 might be a useful move for future end games, yes. And, uh, but mainly I think something like queen c2, b3, bishop b2 or bishop a3, rook a d1. Sort of in the fashion that white plays uh, against the brayer in uh, there are quiet lines in the brayer where white goes for it's a very similar setup but here black has a bishop on a7 and, and not on f8 which is generally i think uh it should favor black because on a7 it's a lot more active than uh on the e7 f8 even g7 square is where it would be in classical spanish yeah so far once again magnus seems to have played a slow line not necessarily leading to a big advantage but Trying to get his opponent, I guess, out of book. I guess that's normally his main aim, especially sure. with the white pieces, to get a fresh sure. position that has not been analyzed. And in the classical part of this match, we've seen that he's been willing to sacrifice, like, objective advantage. Not that I would know an objective advantage against the Berlin, but his priority is fresh position. Not yeah, I, th position. I think I think that's very fair. And. Uh, Sergei seems to be thinking, uh, already spent three minutes on this move, which in a rapid game is not not that little. And I wonder if we can maybe uh, try and uh, address the, the, the tech issues we've been having and maybe it will get resolved mm. because it would be better to go back to our original setup. We will certainly try. Apologies for the inconvenience. But we will keep you posted no matter what. 
Mm. Nope, nothing here. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate, obviously, and... Uh... Well, for now, we're stuck with this. Sorry, it's not the perfect solution. We're aware of that. <clears throat> but at least it allows us to follow the game. A6, A5 played, uh, played by Sergei, uh, and uh, we, we did mention that gaining more space on the queen side with A4, A5 was possibly uh, in White's uh, immediate plans. So that, that makes sense. Uh, it, it stabilizes the structure, makes it uh, harder for White to make uh, a lot of progress uh, on the queen side. But now queen C2 followed by followed by b3 seems to be very logical. Starting with b3 is also possible, but queen c2 is a, is a nice uh, sort of all-purpose move. You can you can always try in positions like this. You just want to develop a piece, right? B3, yeah, I think connecting good. connecting the rook, getting the, the, the c1 bishop to some kind of a sensible square and proceeding from there is the, the order of the day for now for white. Well, for black, it's not as straightforward. You've mentioned this idea of d5. Typical modes are h6, rook e8 as well. But what would you do here with black? Do you play h6 or what's your move? Rook e8 and h6 would be would be the obvious moves to consider. Also, black could go for his own uh, connection, uh, rook connection by playing queen c7, maybe bishop e8, rook a, bishop e6, rook a d8, a plan like this. Sorry, how do you go rook queen a8? C, queen c7, <laughs> bishop e6. I do have squares because generally white needs to... In many cases, White tries to f f improve further in the center by playing b3, bishop b2, and maybe c4. But it gives Black a plenty of time to uh, to go for structures that he likes here and uh, improve improve his pieces. Generally, it's a very quiet position. I don't think White can have any claim of uh, of an advantage here, but um, there should be a lot of life in this, and uh, this this I think is what we. Uh, I mean, we have every reason to be happy about this. Yeah, we're still waiting for a move from Mr. Kayakin, who once again... Oh no, that's not true, we're waiting for a move from Mr. Carlsen. He hasn't actually played Queen C2 yet. No, he hasn't yet. That was just in our minds. What else could you do? Starting with B3, does that make a difference? I'm not sure. Maybe it makes it slightly easier for black to react because you've committed to this and when you play queen c2 maybe you can make an argument for playing knight c4 next move in some positions at least uh, so i think queen c2 is more flexible i would prefer to start with queen c2 here people are somewhat upset about the the, the makeshift setup and uh, we appreciate your we appreciate your concerns, but there seems to be no immediate work around, uh, and we we will continue apologizing for that for for, for a while, and then stop because there's you, you can only do it so much. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the position. I believe Carlson. I'm not sure if he has an edge, but he might have achieved a little something because typically in these positions, Black wants to. Equalize very straightforwardly by playing rook e8 followed by d5, and I'm not so sure you're on time to do that here. I'd say I play b3. If you go d5, I have a feeling things are probably not quite in time for black. Well, it it it, it will need to be it will need to be proven uh, with precise calculation because I don't see an immediate refutation for uh, against this for for white. And Maybe it actually does work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I. Yeah, the game is not finished. You can uh, you can try. Uh, you probably don't take on e5 here. White is completely unprepared, I think, for for this type of uh, play. But maybe you can take on d5 and look for moves after e4, rook e8, queen e8. But yeah, it, it does feel like uh, if Black wants to do this, he can do this. And that normally is the Black plan, right? Yeah, d5 is what you want to. No, it makes uh, it's not the only plan, but it's the most concrete plan, which uh, generally leads to. Uh, the simplest equality, let's put it like this. If black succeeds in doing this and nothing bad happens to, to him in the process, it's it's the easiest way to to solidify his situation here. Make sure that uh, the game is almost completely equal. 
Magnus still, still thinking though, yeah. The Rookie is a bit of a autopilot move. Maybe he's considering his options here. Um, D takes e5. But that is, that, is, that is very, very dry. Like takes Seven with a knight. You generally want to take one pair of knights off. You take with a pawn here. And yeah, knight c4, even queen c7, bishop b6. It's, it's just not going to be a lot here for white. Knight h5 is also a move yeah, here. Yeah, this looks very equal, I agree. <clears throat> but then again, yeah, I don't think you can expect that much of an objective edge in these Jokopianos if Black knows what he's doing. The main plan is once again to have... How many pieces do you have in the starting position? You keep mentioning that. 32? Yep. 32 is right. And they're still all on the board, right? Yeah, well, we expect to, 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 to see some simplifications in the next two, three moves. I think uh, something will start happening in the center. You, you can't, well, you can, but I don't think you want to, to keep that pressure forever with either side. You want to settle on a certain structure and go for it. It's, it's interesting that he's still thinking, though, because uh, even if he hasn't analyzed, and, and apparently uh, G takes E5 has been played, which is... Hmm, that's very dry. It is. It is a you know a very. Maybe he wants to take and go knight c4, and uh, maybe he. Can you not take on e5? Like the position we were looking at was queen c2, rook e8. I'm wondering if this makes a difference. Well, of course you can uh, decide not to take, but what do you do then? I don't know. Knight c4. What if I take on f3 and go d5 here? Is e5 a move? No, e5 doesn't really look like much. Take this dude. Ah, yeah. I wanted to take with the queen, but then you take on a5 in the end, and that end game will be incredibly unpleasant for black. So, yeah, and I, I, that probably means I have to take with the knight, and then uh, white is white will have a little bit of something. Yeah. Here I take on a5. You take on f2, but I do get an end game where I have bishops against a bishop and a knight, and the majority on the queen side. This actually is seriously worse for black. Yeah, at least here yeah. white has. Yeah, you you really don't want to get this. Uh, it's just very, very unpleasant. Well, as I said, you could also take with a pawn immediately, of sure. course. But then, one day, I'm not saying this is necessarily bad, but after g3, sometimes this knight proves to be a little superfluous on g6. Here, g3 immediately probably runs into some issues after knight h5. But and I'm yeah. just saying, positionally, this could be a question. Yeah, and d5 chosen by uh, chosen by Sergei, which is yeah, yeah, a logical choice because it it keeps the the structure symmetrical it keeps the the situation very close also it's important to note that it it rules out knight c4 immediately because you can uh, win the e4 pawn in reply and queen c4 queen c2 played by by magnus once again uh, renewing the idea of playing uh, knight c4 on the next move but black's position is is obviously very very healthy here there's Looks like we get symmetrical positions, no matter what the opening, right? Like this rookie one Berlin, we get a symmetrical position. Gioco Piano, pardon my Italian, we get a roughly symmetrical position. Very hard to spice it up after e4, e5 these days. Yeah, Black, Black is doing very, very well, in particular if he is uh, prepared to play the Berlin. Not that Magnus suffered a, a great deal in the first rapid game today, for instance, but... I think bishop b5, a6, the, those positions uh, offer a lot more life uh, in general than the positions you get if you threaten people with the Berlin and then uh, react to whatever they do. Because huh. pretty much the Italian is not enjoying a renaissance because it became so threatening, but mainly because people decided this is the best anti-Berlin, this is a better version yeah. than 3 bishop b5, knight of 63, which is why we see a lot of Italians, and in the chat Christian is mentioning, 2f4 is spicing it up, which is true, but that's at the cost of a pawn and your king's safety. It's too high a price to pay for spicing it up. Yeah. Somebody else is mentioning black is better for him in this position. I could not disagree more. Mm. No, I think it's very, very level and there's really no reason for black to be better. Black can only be better if you do something careless uh, on the king's side and allow some kind of a fast attack. But after queen c2, followed by knight c4, more or less against any move, white will always have a 
the bailout option of bishop e3 trading off the pair of bishops and uh, no white is never worse here but white is not also better at all it's just a you know a very level very healthy position for black so what do you do you develop this bishop yeah i would like to play bishop b6 and queen c7 in some order mm, it's something looks, like this yeah. yeah it looks very natural and uh cover the pawn and ask white why exactly do you think you're better yep that would be that would be the default setting um white can uh continue. you know the golden rule you should never play b4 before it's any good but it might be good here might be playable here but uh, even if black complies and takes takes and continues developing i'm not I'm sure wondering just wondering about b5 yeah that also that also was uh, unclear to me why this is so horrible because it seems to be uh, successfully successfully simplifying yeah it doesn't look all that scary to no i mean you can continue here with white you can uh, play a number i mean a number of squares is available to the knight there you don't need to allow uh, uh, Sorry, complete here, yeah. complete mm -hmm. simplification there, yeah. Like knight a5 is a move which probably forces rook fc8 for the time being. There's also the somewhat cl clever knight b2, at least hoping to take on a4 with the knight uh, if black takes on a4 and then in an ideal world plant it on c5 later in life. But it does feel like black should be fine here. Yeah, bishop b6, knight c4 played. Mm, queen c7, I think, is, is by far the most natural move in the position. You don't really want to take on c4 until you're absolutely forced to, and knight d7 also looks very passive. Knight d7, I got knight, knight g5. Yeah, huh? and also allowing knight g5 uh, just feels feels weird. There's just no reason to give white this uh, light square bishop uh, if you're not forced to. Although, one thing to, to, to note is that if you take on c4, take on c4. This is a structure you get from a number of openings, including somewhat strangely even uh, the, the reti in some cases. Uh, in the variations where white plays d3 and then queen e1 and e4, they get these types of positions very often. And, and there, uh, the black bishop goes to g4 and often takes on f3. So you even get this exact material. And it's not supposed to be a lot for white. But, I like bishops. Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, why, why give this to white? Why, why uh, allow this somewhat uh, free, free reign? And white can, yeah, as, you, as you tried to indicate with the mouse there, g3, king, g2, maybe start pushing on the king side uh, after you've completed your development. The structure is, I mean, many people just go for the structure straight off and hold it time and time again without too much pro trouble, but it feels like it's, uh, it's a concession and queen c7 has been has been played yeah, instead yeah much more natural why would you give up that bishop sure. now carlson faces a bit of a decision this b4 move still feels like the natural move at least fighting for some space yeah because bishop g5 let's say just knight d7 and, I don't and you don't even you, you, you with a knight on g6 arguably you don't even need to react to be honest to bishop g5 and but but b4 has been uh, has been played by by magnus and now the most concrete reply would be to take take and play b5. Black doesn't need to do this, but it's uh, it's the most direct attempt to to equalize on the spot. How does this continue? Analyze. Well, you start by rook fc8, I guess, because you don't want to give up the c6 pawn. The question is, what happens if you just take twice on b5 after trading the queens off? But I guess the bishop, the pawn on b4 will fall somehow. Yeah, takes, takes, bishop takes, b5, but something like rook b8 probably is very strong. Mm. Just rook b8 followed by rook takes b4 against anything. I don't have tricks. I don't see any tricks, but... Uh, That's good enough for me. Well, maybe maybe some spatial advantage, but uh, with 4 against 4 on one side, you're not going to be able to exploit it most likely. Grandmaster Yardbird, Eric Lobron, is saying in the chat, according to Peter, everything is a draw. That's not true. I, I don't think that's true. No. <laughs> that's not true. I, that's not what I think. I think uh, most, most things uh, these days, if you talk about top-level openings, most things lead to equality. But equality does not uh, mean draw. Equality means that nobody, nobody has gotten any advantage out of the opening. But then the game continues. And I think this is very much uh, what, what Magnus is trying to do here. Just get a game of some sort with a lot of pieces on the board. And who cares if he's better or not. Do you feel that it has become easier to achieve 
not draws, but equality with black on the highest level than it used to, like let's say 15 years ago. Yes, I think I think that's that's fair. I think uh, the general trend has been, uh, in particular against Vani Four, to play more and more solid openings, and uh, there are very very few people out there who are uh, sort of sticking to their guns and only playing the uh, the sharpest stuff. Like MVL continues playing the neither against all comers, and uh, sort of kudos to him, uh, but he is he is left carrying the torch. Almost. Even Hikaru Nakamura, fan favorite. Well, he's always played all kinds of openings, but if even Hikaru joins the ranks of the Berlin, like yeah, gotta give it to the Berlin. It's a good opening, and it is all a, it top is a, players have gone there. It is a very good and a very solid opening, and uh, I think uh, with this sort of unification of the opening repertoire at the top, it's becoming very very hard to uh, fight against the, this. Uh, like Borg-like entity of people analyzing the same positions and uh, uh, the, the hive mind of people equalizing all kinds of Berlins and then showing their their <laughs> their research at the board. ABCB has been played and B5 uh, as well. So uh, Magnus will now have to show something. I think if he if he wants to to claim something, he needs to go this uh, I mean to a, to, to a somewhat strange square. And but knight b two does look like it maybe is the best Oof. the best option uh, to game to, to continue the, the continue the game and not allow a lot of simplification because it Very goes to d three. It goes to uh, well b a four. I'm not sure what you take with, but if black doesn't take, I think it goes to d three. And d three is a very sensible square for this piece. Fair enough. What happens after b5 takes cb, then no, that's just, stuff that's just, comes off, That's right? just horrible, yeah, because you... Well, not horrible, horrible, but it feels like black should be able to equalize here quite comfortably. Yeah, see with tempo, yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel much. No. There's also a b5 bishop takes f2, which we kind of uh, glossed over. Ooh, but, tactics! Yeah, but it exists as a, as a potential problem, let's put it like this. Oh, yeah, I missed that one. And we win an exchange. Yes. Maybe some counterplay, but no. yeah, well, it's you, just a blunder. You, you don't, you don't really want to do that. Yeah. So yeah, Magnus Carlsen thinking here. Knight a five is the most. Yeah, knight a five is what you would. Natural to my yeah. putz's mind. But then you're kind of stuck after rook fc eight, and black has a very strong threat of uh, maybe even the immediate c five or bishop b six or b a four followed by c five. Yeah, yeah okay. lots of. Lots of those ideas to completely, completely uh, destroy everything on the queen side. And uh, once all the pawns uh, uh, come off, uh, four against four, as we've seen in the previous game, the moment the moment uh, play switches to only one side, it's uh, it's very, very difficult to get anywhere. So Magnus has to show us some grandmasterly. He played knight ninety three, which is Over. not the square we discussed. That is odd. Yeah, that well, is. I'm not sure how odd it is, but yeah. That is an interesting choice. It's well, black in general doesn't want to take this knight either, right? Here no. we have at least a tiny but pleasant. No, the, 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 this is a very typical type of. Uh, but although here maybe you can take on a four twice and the the pawn on e four might hang. So maybe no, so maybe I even can this throw is in bishop c five. Uh, bishop b three. No, I missed bishop b three. Uh, Can't throw it in. So how does this go then? Takes, takes, queen a4, queen a4, knight e4, and you need to calculate here. b5, knight c3, b6. There's rook c1, there's the immediate b5, there's a number of moves here. So maybe it's not that great for black, actually. Yeah. Let me show my calculation. Sure. b6, queen b6, you want to say? Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. And you don't lose the... You don't lose the c3 knight, you're sure That far this. I have not calculated yet. Like something like queen c2 or queen a1, queen a1 probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is probably fine, but queen a1 looked very threatening here. Mm. What is the difference? Knight g2 will maybe win some material. Maybe not immediately, maybe I need to start with Did bishop c5 first. Mm. I'll go back a uh, couple of ply. Yeah, here maybe I can play bishop c5 first. Uh, and I'm running out of good squares for yeah, you all will, my you will after bishop c5 soldiers. actually run out of run out of squares and i think the the other thing magnus is trying to achieve here if you go back to the live position if black uh plays something like queen d6 or queen e7 there is the move a4 a5 
followed by queen takes b4, bishop a3. So this maybe is the tactical justification for, uh, or at least an idea how to justify justify what Magnus is doing. It, it, it leads to some very, very unclear positions. It might actually be quite decent for black, but... I'm not sure I like this move at first sight. In a sense, a passed pawn, but you're also opening take yourself on, up take to on before, c5 breaks. Take on e4. Leads to very, very sharp positions, which I'm not sure I know how to assess. But you do get an outside passer to go with the extra exchange. Here I like white. Yeah, I don't know what this is. It probably ends up being good for white, but I'm not 100% convinced. If I take with maybe... No, but then bishop d3 is very strong, right? I cannot really not take on c2. Can I? What are you talking about? Like in this position, I'm worried about bishop d3 followed by something and queen takes c6. It's a mess. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge mess and it's... Uh, e4 is coming. Yeah, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be delving uh, into deep here until they actually uh, go for this line because this does get very very concrete and there's really no reason for us to start calculating some really long variation uh, until uh, it's at least remotely probable that we're going to see any of this. Let's go back to the position on board. Sergei Kayakin, roughly 11 minutes. Magnus Carlsen once again. He achieved his goal, and that's something he's been good at, getting ahead on the clock, at least in yes. these first two games. But even in the classical, I would argue, not sure about the quality, but he was normally the one who got in the first surprise, so he made Kayak yeah, think that, that, first. That subject also came up in chat. People were asking if we think that Magnus actually is winning the, uh, the opening war in this match, and uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, so far uh, he, he got in the first new idea a lot more often than Sergei did. A lot, lot more often, actually, which is not uh, something I personally uh, expected when uh, I've uh, I've been asked a number of times to do like a preview for of the match, and uh, I was always uh, trying to say that you know opening preparation is you know the one area where Sergei arguably is uh, is better and should be should be better prepared for the match than Magnus is, but didn't materialize so far. No, but it does continue. Both sides have been struggling, as we've mentioned, ad nauseum to create pressure with white. And Magnus had a very different approach than Sergei. Magnus just keeps switching, trying to get fresh positions, while Sergei more or less keeps repeating his line versus the Spanish with the 63 or this 8h3, trying to put Magnus into a corner where it's easy to have his, I'm assuming, team of analysts like putting pressure on Magnus's limited repertoire for this match. Yeah. However, the position on the board now, well, neither side probably too unhappy, but Kayakin is on the pressure. Five, the pressure on the five minutes uh, five minutes already uh, spent uh, on this move, which uh, I think indicates that he realizes that uh, either he finds something concrete here that he likes, or he very possibly will drift into some kind of a position where he will have to uh, defend for a while. Let's say we take here. Yeah, takes rook a4. Yeah, this is uh, an example of a structure which you generally don't want don't want to get in uh, in the Spanish. And Sergei himself, c5 b5, c5 b5 yeah. is very very unpleasant, followed by bishop c4 because he, none of your knights is anywhere near right, the d4 yeah. square. Yeah, and uh, in in particular, I want to say that this structure uh, with the white pawn on b4 against the black pawn on b6 is something that Sergei himself, I think, is very, very good at exploiting. Uh, he's been playing uh, the slower systems against the Brayer in particular, I think, uh, very, very uh, consistently uh, over the past maybe even 10 years. And he won a very nice game against myself, for instance, at some point in the Brayer where we got into some kind of a slow maneuvering uh, structure where eventually a similar structure appeared on the board with a slight advantage for white and he converted that advantage very successfully. So he knows this is not uh, immediately equal at least. And he will, I think, very much like not to get this because this, uh, this gives white a very nice little edge. And the bailout with which takes e3 is not really a bailout because well, even rook takes, yeah? Yeah, rook takes is possible as well. So earlier we were looking at these sharp lines with... And it might work. It might work. The, even b5 might work, and there's also rook c1 followed by b5, which we didn't even discuss properly, but it's very, very serious. 
might might just might might just be very good for white. Stopping all this knight c3 nonsense and, and pushing b5, b6. Uh, so, and yeah, people have mentioned this, and uh, one one drawback of the set setup we have right now on the screen is that you can see the movement of the of the evaluation bar uh, to the left of the board. But the depth is such that I would just recommend you ignore the bar altogether. At this depth, uh, the fluctu fluctuations of the bar are completely irrelevant. Or you do what I do, you stare at the bar and if it's going up towards white, then you start looking for a reason why white could be better and adjust your commentary. And if it goes down, vice versa. BA4, uh, rook A4 uh -huh. played though, which probably means that Sergei couldn't really uh, equalize all those sharp lines where and he took on e3. And he also, yeah, that's very interesting. And what now, I was gonna say is that if white doesn't want to calculate all this stuff we yeah. just mentioned, you can just take with a rook and cover e4. Sure. And you still have a pull, you do have bishops. No, no, you definitely, if you stabilize and b and c do not get exchanged, this is uh, a reasonably stable advantage for the rest of the game. And once again, I want to reiterate, Sergei knows it's a stable advantage for the rest of the game because he is one of the better practitioners of these structures with white. So it's a, it's a somewhat surprising decision. Because well, I probably it, couldn't find anything. It's de yeah, yeah, it's definitely a concession. And Magnus, well, he could just blitz our rook takes e3, or he could try to calculate these complications after bishop e3. Yeah, because uh, strategically, of course, he would prefer to take with a bishop, because the setup with a bishop on e3 and a knight on d2 is what you should it's be aiming for. Yeah, if you if you get that, black will will struggle to uh, to equalize here, because the pawn on c6 will be constantly very weak, and uh, the pawn on e5 will also require attention many things will potentially go wrong here for black. But also, if the calculations, I mean, if, the, if the, the complications don't work out for you, you've blown your entire advantage. So let's go back to this. Rook a4, queen a4, knight takes e4. If yes. you don't go knight e4, knight d2, well, it's just better. So you have, sort of have to take. Yeah, you absolutely need to take in this position. And after b5, we were having some weird line with knight c3. But maybe b6 after knight a4, maybe you can simply take and go rook c8. If this works for black, it, it of course is a much cleaner solution and... Ah, yeah. The pawn just drops, huh? Well, I was mm -hmm. kind of hoping for something like rook a1, rook a7, but it doesn't seem to knight materialize. C3, yeah. yeah, knight c3 and knight d5 is a very important square, stopping bishop b6 and... I want to go here. But maybe knight d5 even better. Yeah, knight d5 actually wins the c7 pawn, because uh, after bishop a6, rook c7, uh, you don't give mate on the 8th, apparently. Well, maybe, maybe you do. Hang on a second, bishop a6. Yeah, maybe you were a lot, a lot more correct here because bishop c5 here is is very, very strong. You're very tied up all of a sudden. Yeah, knight e5, bishop e6 probably or something. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you also need to see queen a1 in that line. Let's say first of all, knight b5 is probably a lot stronger than uh, knight d5 here. That's what I meant here. Yeah. If you have to take c b1. Yeah. Without the light square bishop, you probably aren't making any progress, and black is just. Uh, very safe here, um, but also, no, I think that's the that's the biggest issue with the, with the whole line because it's not obvious here the queen takes b6 loses. I mean, uh, the machine seems to suggest it's it's very uh, very bad, but you need to be very sure of your calculations there after queen a1. You need to spot queen a1. You need to work out how strong it is. But I think a bigger reason not to take with the bishop is simply if you spot that knight takes a4 and rook c8 uh, works for black. It's just such a simple refutation of the whole tactical idea that you probably go back and start with something else. So bottom line, b5 is not worth it. And rook c1, if he wants to go for this, he would have yeah. to play rook c1. Rook c1 is an interesting option though, but yeah, bishop, bishop d5, b5, c5. Feels like white is never worse, but it's very likely that black will be able to leverage his extra pawn right now to simplify everything on the queen side. Let's see what's on board. The world champion still thinking after bishop takes e3, which means he's giving very serious consideration to bishop takes, obviously. Yeah, but it's a, it's a lot more harmonious to take with the bishop. So if, you know, you, you really want to make that move, if at all possible. And he's I done it. So this becomes very, very interesting. Rook a4 blitzed out, queen a4, and I wonder if Sergei takes on a4 here. He kind of needs to, right? Else knight yeah. d2, you just suffer for free. Yeah, you, you absolutely need to. But on the other hand, he is down to... Uh, we're not entirely sure, but uh, probably something like seven minutes. And uh, it's not a pleasant option to play because you, you know, if it, if, it, if it backfires, if it doesn't work tactically, the pawn from b4 gets to b6. 
And uh, yeah, those positions you often just lose if you don't have any immediate tactical counterplay. So it's a very, very committal decision, but I think it needs to be taken because, uh, as mentioned, uh, trying to hold this passively will not be a walk in the park. Just FYI, this clock here is wrong. He's a, he has seven minutes, not one minute, 50. Yeah. Apologies for that. And knight takes you four points, but yeah. On the board. Uh, yeah, now the clock. Mm -hmm. Rook c1 blitzed out. b5, knight c3. Not what Magnus was looking for. And bishop d5 should yeah. also be blitzed out. That's a nice move to make, covering e4 sure. and c6. Yeah. And 13 minutes against 6 is what we're being told, and that does sound like, like this is correct. Uh, correct uh, time situation. Bishop d5, very, very natural here. And after b5, you want to play c5 because I think it's very important to stop it uh, sort of as early as possible. Allowing it to reach b6 feels extremely risky. And uh, trying to stop it on, on the earlier on the earlier squares feels feels a lot more natural here. But yeah, this is this is now a very, very sharp position. How do I get my pawn back? That would be my main concern. That's probably not the main concern, all right? No, I'm not sure you care. I think you uh, you want to improve your pieces and uh, like Bishop D3 is one of the the uh, the earliest thing that kind of things that come to mind. But also Bishop C4 might be a move. I, I was wondering if even Knight D2 is a move, but that probably is way too slow. Knight take. Yeah, yeah take take <clears throat> and. Uh, Maybe. Once again, if I'm in time, with the, I mean, if, if it were White's move here, I think after Bishop B3, White will have a very large advantage. But uh, yeah, Knight of 46 is what is what is worrying me here, as you correctly correctly stated. Although even here, like the machine suggests, Bishop takes a, a 4 EF Queen D4, and uh, it does look quite uh, quite interesting. To complicate. Let's go to the live position. B5 is on the board. Kayakin apparently has not played c5 yet. And in the meantime... Let's mention why c takes b5 is not all that good. Please explain. Queen, queen takes c4, queen takes c1, <laughs> queen takes d5. Like a sequence of uh, queens trying to sacrifice uh, themselves if for... If bishop takes e 4 rook c7, piece you're just, up. You're just a piece down, yeah. And here, after queen takes d5, there are some drawing chances because uh, sometimes light pieces don't really win against a rook on one side. But with queens on, you feel like white will eventually give mate. This looks bad for black. Yeah. No, just just to explain why why a move which immediately removes every single pawn from the queen side is bad. I think it's an important detail. But very very likely that they both spotted that one. And Kayakin. Yeah, there is c5. There is also a, a number turn. of slower moves here, but uh, yeah, I I think you need to play c5 from a. Um, Humanly speaking? Yeah, humanly speaking, you're just allowing either b takes c6 or b6 just feels extremely risky. And since there's no immediate refutation that I can see of the of the move c6, c5, you kind of make it and you uh, you wait for a reply. <laughs> because, I mean, it's, it's not at all clear why it's not good. People say cb5 played, but I'm not sure we can trust them. In general, I trust the internet, but sometimes there's conflicting information on the internet. Then you have to decide. It's very confusing. Yeah. And Do you have like guidelines how to figure out what's true on the internet? Uh, I have some guidelines how to deal with uh, people publishing news in Russian. Okay. Uh, especially news which uh, are not specifically uh, uh, to do with uh, internal internal Russian situations. Let's say somebody mentions a publishes a news story which uh, has uh, something to do with uh, Russian and Western relations, and it feels slightly improbable. You you do a Google search of the same same terms in English, and uh, very often you find zero results, and then you mark the story and the person who published that story. And you less you read fewer stories from them in the future. Anyway, none of these comments in the chat were in Russian, which, if I understood you correctly, means we can trust them. And C takes B five has indeed been played. They reached this position. Just to be clear, Kayakin did not bundle anything here. No. He went for this position. Yeah. He thought this was the smallest evil, which is quite remarkable because I could sort of understand it if we white had two knights and a, and a bishop, but with two bishops and a knight, 
I would suffer. Yeah, I would really not fancy holding this with black, even with uh, equal equal times on the clock. Because the b5 pawn drops immediately, you have to move your queen, queen c7. Now probably bishop takes b5, but queen b5 doesn't really make a difference. No, I the think... The question I think, is the... Yeah, you're not spoiling this position with white. The b, the b pawn has to be removed, but in general, you're not going to win it in five moves, and you're also not going to spoil your advantage in, uh, unless you do something incredibly stupid. So, We are in for a maneuvering phase now. White will slowly improve his situation on the king side. g3, maybe h4, h5 if allowed, gain some space, put his bishops on better position, better squares. He took with the queen, which, yeah, as mentioned, maybe machine-like bishop takes better, but it doesn't really matter a great deal. Oh, the queen is going to find a nice little square like e4. And my favorite rule, if there's pawns only on one side of the board, often the number of pieces matters more than the type of pieces. And here white has power in numbers. He does have two minor pieces versus the rook. And he also has the two bishops, which, as you just mentioned, matter greatly. I don't think this is a fortress. I believe this is trouble. There's too many white pieces. Yeah, I've, you could get, grab some space very quickly, maybe, but no, it's not going to happen. No, actually, if you grab some space, you get mated. Yeah, you, once, once, your king, once, exactly. once you start touching your, your pawns on the queen side, on the king side, you just get mated. You need to, you will have to play h6, I guess, and I think you want this to be your only pawn move for the for the foreseeable future because uh, you cannot open your king at all. White has just more more soldiers on the board, as you mentioned, and they will come in and and. Uh, uh, deliver mate. Rook d8 on the board, I believe Carlson is headed. Yeah, queen e4. Queen e4 is a very natural square, and yeah. In general, you never, well, never say never, but you don't want to exchange queens here with white unless it yields you immediate benefits. Is that even, I would actually hesitate to trade the queens off, even if it won me the e5 pawn, to be honest. Although, if white still retains the two bishops, I think it's still reasonably reasonably comfortably winning. But yeah, I would want the queen's on. Queen b3 has been played. Now at least you can offer the queen exchange again. But at the risk of repeating, not myself, but you, you can't spoil this position in one move. It's just more both sides trying to find the correct setup here. Yeah, he's just in, in, in no hurry whatsoever. He... He's looking for ideal squares. I guess maybe he wants to play queen a2 here or something to stop black attacking his queen. Yeah, and that's what he played. I'm not sure why this is so great. I, I really like the e4 square, but maybe he was worried about some plans with like queen d6, d5 or something. And uh, on a2 it will be extremely difficult for black to uh, even offer the exchange of queens. Also, maybe he's hoping for a quick onslaught. Towards f7, bishop c4, knight g5. Oh, no, h6, h6 will be played. I think more or less straight away. I'm, I'm reasonably confident that uh, allowing knight g5 for very long here, and yeah, h6 has been played by, by Sergey. Maybe now he, he can play queen, queen, a, queen d5, queen e4 because f6 is no longer an option. It might be not that stupid. Oof. Too subtle. Well, uh, not not all that subtle. You can also improve your improve your king side for the time being. You don't you don't really need to hurry. Do not hurry. That's one of the I don't know five golden endgame rules. If you can improve your position, it's often more unpleasant for your opponent if you don't force the issue, but just quietly. Yeah, just make give him make food slow for thought. make slow improving moves and uh, yeah, the clock situation is also incredible. Yeah, and queen d five has been played, so very subtle stuff. Let's not forget at this point, by the way, even though I obviously agree that White has great winning chances here, Kayakin is kind of known for defending ugly looking positions and sure, endgames, right? Sure, this is this is not over, but uh, that doesn't shouldn't distract us from the objective evaluation of the position though. No. Uh, White, Just a bit. White is uh, very, very seriously better. Something like Queen D8, Queen D1 might be a bit distracting. Uh, at least, you know, hoping to get some counterplay going. I'm a bit surprised because he didn't have to. Why Carlson <clears throat> continues to allow Sergei to harass him with this queen exchange, but it will come to an end at some point. But here we can. Can we take? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Takes takes rook b1. I think you you cannot get back to. Oh, you can get you can get to c4. Yeah. Yeah, you can get the c4, so you can take. Mm, but, once, but once again, three against three on one side, 
uh, two bishops against the rook. If the queens come off here, which they don't, so it's not immediately relevant. But I just want to mention that if the rooks come, off, if the queens come off here, this is not an immediately winning position, and people have failed to win it uh, in in the history of top level chess even. So. Yeah, all these things need to be considered when uh, when simplifying here. But uh, Sergei played queen e7. More passive, more circumspect. And yeah. Queen e4 played queen e4 or, so it's or, a weird movie, can once again get hit. No, I think you start with bishop c4, and uh, if, if black hits the queen with uh, rook d8, then you play queen e4, creating a threat of uh, queen takes g6, uh, forcing black into more uncomfortable uh, situations. And H4, H5 becomes... Trick that has won many a blitz game. Queen yeah. takes G6, exploiting this. No, this is, this is really, really horrible for black. It's just, just a bad position. And I think black probably uh, needed to uh, go for uh, something more concrete, but it's, it's not that easy to, to spot. Queen four, queen F6. Yeah, I'm wondering why, on the board. why queen why F6. Not rook why, not, why not rook queen B4? Yeah, because now, how, how is he going to meet, a, meet the uh, H4, H5 plan? This is often very unpleasant against the knight here, because if you go H5, you give up the G5 square. No, 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 H5, knight, G5, you get mated, because uh, bishop C4 is unstoppable, and uh, there you really will start feeling that you have fewer pieces on the board. If you don't go H5, you, you, you constantly have to. You probably lose your central pawn, yeah. And also, yeah, the time situation is still, you know, very much an issue. And uh, it seemingly is uh, 10 against less than a minute, uh, according to our clocks. And playing this position on increment is just no fun at all. You are objectively struggling, and you also have to play quickly and hope you don't blunder anything. Yeah, H4 hasn't been played yet, but we think it's... And Magnus played G3, so Magnus really is taking taking the do not hurry maxim to, to, to its extremes. But now the queen is safely established on c4, I don't think it's a, it's a mistake. c8 has been blitzed out. You still want to play h4. Maybe he wants to go king g2 first to just have everything safe. Well, queen king g2, c yeah. sometimes you got to worry about some. Queen c6 is, uh, is the idea here, which is why maybe starting with h4 straight away was maybe slightly more. If I do this and queen c6, queen either f f5 or g4, I'm not sure. Maybe g4. What have you gained? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Yeah, it's very possible it's it's still really horrible. Yeah. So this sort of plays itself, right? h5, knight, h4. And like yes. So many yes, yeah, so I'm yeah, not going to disagree. White is... Uh, th there's never going to be any serious counterplay, because even if you get two pieces to the first rank, knight g2 just protect, protects everything. So, yeah. White's position is is very solid, very safe, and he can just continue improving. You can also meet. Uh, I mean, if h4, queen c6, you can play queen takes c6, h5, and take on e5. Frankly, three against three, as mentioned, with the with the bishops and also a pair of knights still on the board. White generally just uh, breaks through. Yeah, if this pawn falls, yeah, you you don't really want to take the queens off, but if you win the central pawn while trading queens, you're probably not that unhappy. While trading queens and nothing else, what you don't want at any cost is knight and bishop versus rook yeah. with three against three. That's much more likely, John. Yeah, bishop d3 played by Magnus. He really is taking it very, very slowly. But against half a minute, I, I can sort of understand why he's doing this, actually. Uh, queen c6, queen f5, rook e8 on the board. At least that's, ah, it's not even a it's threat. It's not even a threat because bishop you can play bishop b5 on knight d4. So you can, you can actually play uh, h4 here if you want. I have to calculate and something. And you probably do want, actually. Would be a nice move to make once again. Yeah, rook f rook e six f six probably is uh, what black needs to do in reply. But even finding this idea is uh, on on very very limited uh, time that black has here is a problem. Won't be easy, but we all know Sergei is incredibly tenacious, incredibly good under pressure. It's. It ain't over till it's over. It's sort of a platitude because we say that all the time, but especially with him, it's normally extremely true. Yeah. And for Magnus, sort of uncharacteristically in this match, we've seen him blow. Yeah. I think winning positions even is fair to say, or yes. at the very least, very good positions. Yeah. Uh, so he he really wants to convert from he here. He has to focus. Yeah. yeah. He really wants to convert from here because uh, yeah, ten minutes against less than a minute and an objectively 
much better maybe winning position is is something you you don't really want not to win it will impact your your mood if nothing else yeah it is his birthday this is probably the best gift he could i don't think i'm telling any tales out of school if i'm saying that this is the best gift that Magnus Carlsen can get today, is keeping his World Championship title, right? Yeah, that probably is a safe assumption. Even like a Carrera racetrack wouldn't be as good. Not sure what that is. Yeah, me neither. I'm trying to think of... Nah, I'm pretty sure that's priority number one today. <laughs> Rookie 8, and he is. Spending a lot of time. Well, he, he did put his pieces on such squares that he, he now has to calculate some variations. For instance, right. h4, e4, bishop b5, queen e6. Uh, black actually doesn't lose any material immediately. And after knight yeah, d4, knight d4 is, yeah. is decent, but after, let's say, queen c8, the queens do come off. So you, you have won the e-pawn, but the queens come off, and I'm sure he is now uh, looking at possibilities to maybe keep the queens on for the time being, queen because, as, as mentioned, Ideally, you want to continue playing for mate here because it creates a lot more practical issues for for Sergei. Yeah, but he hasn't played ideally, right? Because it looked like you could win or improve the position, let's say, of an autopilot. Yeah, I think. Well, I, I think yeah, he could not. Uh, I mean, by playing a, a timely bishop c4 somewhere, he could just ensure that the queen stays on e4, and on e4 it would not have been attacked by anything. If you go back like a few moves. Uh, with the bishop on c4, queen c6 is just met by bishop d5 in every single position. So this setup is unshakable, more or less. And then you just improve on the on the king side with g3, h4, h5, and uh, black is more or less helpless. And now I'm not following which position. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say, yeah, uh, g3 already is a bit slow. I would play something like h4, bishop c4 here. Sure. Like you play h4 here, and if, if let's say black plays. Uh, it's not even clear what black plays, and it's it's actually very unclear why he didn't play this move, because it, it, it just feels that it creates such a difficult immediate problem for black to solve against somebody who is playing on less than a minute, that it would be very difficult for me to restrain myself from, from playing this. Well, maybe that was exactly the thinking behind it, this do not hurry thing, but if it's good, yeah. might as well do it, right? Sure. You have to finish or win the game at some point, and... Against Sergei, this is very hard to do by just making moves because he's not gonna win the game or lose the game for you. You have to yeah. win. I think MVL is very interested in getting a mug. Yes, you. I think you can still get the mug if you apply now. Who MVL? Yeah, I think it was MVL, but I'm not entirely sure. It's not even his birthday, right? Why is he demanding a mug? And does he want it signed by? Yeah, tell us everything. Grandmaster? Tell us everything. We'll pass on your. Desires to, to the management. Bishop e4 played. This is a very curious decision. I really don't understand where this is headed. But maybe he just wants to play queen, queen h5. Queen h5 yeah. and regroup, yeah? Yeah, but uh, you are sort of no longer winning by force. It doesn't really feel like you're winning by force. No, no he has made progress over the last five, six moves, that's for yeah. sure. Which uh, I think he, he could have done if he was slightly more precise. It does. You do get the feeling that he he took his uh, hands off the wheel a little bit there because he felt the position is so winning and time advantage is so huge in his favor that more or less making any move will just make Sergei collapse. And the thing about Sergei is that he doesn't really collapse, uh, not even on very very limited time. He he continues making moves which don't drop anything, and he, you will have to you will have to win by yourself. You're not going to be gifted anything. Carlson clearly should not gift him the queen exchange no. here. So queen h5 is sort of forced. But then also questions like this move, for example, are they erasing? No, I think here after gf, you have both... I oh, have bishop f5. Huh? Yeah, bishop d5, bishop f5, all of these moves. Well, this, if you want to show off, if you really want to show off, you can give this little check. Yeah, but that, that would be... Yeah, that would be... That would be really, really <laughs> rubbing it in, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, Queen h5, knight e7 played, apparently, and now... Hang on, isn't this pawn hanging? No, there I think black will have some jumps, but... Uh, Why? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah, also possible. Ah, oh, no, but h3s. I did not see that this... 
No, H3, I think attack. you you lose by H3 something. C6 or yeah, something? Yeah, something will happen. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's possible, but let's... Uh, let's... Uh, Do you jinx him by saying he keeps making moves that don't drop anything? Then yeah, instantly he drops something? People, people, yeah. There is no bit, better, no bigger jinx than you. We can address it here now. After you tweet it, it's going to be an exciting game. 12, we know what happened. Now you're sad. He keeps on making moves that don't drop stuff. Yeah, and also knight g5 might be a move here, although I, oh. I don't quite understand why this is made, but uh, seemingly it is. If oh. I take... Ah, there's some bishop c5s in the air tonight. Oh ah, yeah, that is that is very cute. Check, check, queen c5, check, rook e7, bishop h7, and everything collapses. So knight g5 is also a, a very strong contender here. Mm. Yeah, bishop takes g8. Oh, e7. Well, let's take here. Yeah, yeah, no, this yeah. Whatever makes you happy. Peace yeah, up will do. But there's live is, action, so let's... This is very, very strange to my eyes. And they got the Zen game with the two bishops versus the rook, which you were talking about earlier. This is... Does Carlson just think this is winning? Well, maybe it is, but this is not easily winning. Wow. And also it, it makes... it. Ma I mean, Sergei will now accumulate sort of uh, as much time as he wants, because he. Mm. you probably need to play f6. And then you wait, and you wait until the, uh, well, forever. And you you place your rook somewhere on the A file, and you attack from, uh, from the side. You give checks from from the side, and and keep keep uh, you know harassing the bishops. This is a really weird decision. I don't. Yeah, let's first check how they. I don't ended up here. Yeah, I don't quite understand, especially since I think. No, I was. No, knight g5, knight g5, but... Uh... And after knight g6, there's no way out. Oh, I missed this knight g6. Bishop yeah, well, if, let's say if I play uh, knight c8, then uh, bishop f4 or something, and f6, knight, bishop d5, check, yeah. So, no, bishop f4, g5, so what do you do here? f4, bishop d4, bishop d4, I guess. Yeah, then then white keeps all three pieces, and that that, that is a lot better for white than... Uh, uh, position Sergei got with the knights off. Okay, so yeah, we're in for a long one here uh, because uh, we will have this structure for a while. Magnus needs to find a way to make progress against this. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, there probably is some kind of a textbook which says what this position is because uh, all, I mean, th this particular type of uh, material imbalance with this uh, type of pawn structure, I believe, has been. Uh, covered ex extensively, and uh, there's possibly uh, a definitive reply as to whether this is winning or not. I'm not sure though. Like in my part of Hamburg, I am considered the biggest endgame authority, and I've never read anything about this particular endgame. I've seen stuff about bishop knight versus rook with three versus three, but this one I've never seen anything. What's interesting though is Magnus has repeatedly stated, even during this match, that he doesn't really believe in fortresses, that normally he's been able historically to break down fortresses, while other top players, Vishiana comes to mind, try building a fortress whenever they see the chance. But this not believing in fortresses cost him a victory, arguably, in game four, where Kayakin was able to construct such a fortress. So is this another of these cases? Yeah, I... I don't really understand why he felt obliged to enter this without, uh, you know, trying to keep stuff on the board. And it really felt like uh, there was a moment in this game where he could have uh, created a lot more issues for for Black. But in this particular situation, maybe he he feels, in, especially with the bishop on g6, maybe he feels he can make uh, enough immediate progress uh, on the king side, get his king uh, towards somewhere like e8 and go for mate. But uh, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. Let's try stuff. And uh, Georg Meyer, who is a, a serious student of everything chess-related, says uh, looks like a draw to me, and uh, might might actually be a draw. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be horribly surprised if this uh, if this was uh, harder to win than to hold. In particular, because Black's play is just so straightforward. You make moves that are available to you. You try not to not to blunder a rook with check somewhere, and you you wait for white to create some serious th uh, some some threats of any kind, and you uh, you deal with them. 
White is mainly trying to restrict the rook, right? Here he's trying to provoke rook e2 when you would go bishop e3 back and all of a sudden the rook can't cover the e-file no. so easily anymore. And two bishops can cover a lot of ground, but maybe not enough ground. King e7, rook a7 check, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, as mentioned, you keep it, you keep it on the a-file in most cases to, to, have, uh, to have checks from the a-file if the king gets uh, too close. Because one winning plan potentially would be to play something like king e7, bishop f7 check, plan the king on f8. And then look for you know additional improvement to eventually attack the the pawn on g7 and win, but uh, with the rook constantly giving checks from the side, it will not at all be easy to achieve. Do you go h5 with white? Well, he he, he had this option for about 15 moves now and still hasn't played it, which means that uh, I think he wants to preserve uh, as many options on the king side as possible. And also, this is once again one of those positions where. Uh, we've been we've we've been giving this uh, kind of a guide to how you use engines in positions like this for a while, and uh, the, the trick is if the evaluation says one one side is winning, but the evaluation is going nowhere, like it stays stable, uh, which is uh, currently in this position, the evaluation is uh, around uh, two pawns, but it's not going uh, further up. It will never go down. Uh, white can never really spoil this position, so the evaluation will will stay at plus two uh, or higher. But if it's not really going higher, it's a very good indication that uh, there is no at least immediate winning plan available. He's trying to put his king on g6. Yeah. And king h7 does not really stop that because I can give this check. Yeah, and go king h5. And go here. And king f7, there's a bishop c4 check. Therefore, how do you deal with that? G5 seems to be weakening the position, right? Especially well, G5 yeah. is, an, is an incredibly committal decision, and it's very difficult to make this move in practice. He might have to, though, because allowing King G6 might, you know, in the long run be a bigger problem for black than... Uh, uh, Rook B7 played stopping checks. No, the king you can, can play. Yeah, you can play King here. G6, and... Uh, yeah. The question is... It's interesting, that, it's interesting that uh, Magnus has uh, allowed uh, black rook b2, rook takes f2, which... Did he blunder? Well, blunder is strong. I think he feels that he will pick up the g7 pawn, but will he? Is what I wanted to discuss. Oh. Like rook, rook b2, bishop, I don't know, e4. I don't know if it matters. Maybe f5. Takes, bishop e6, check, king h8. Bishop d6, we play rook a... No, that probably wins. Yeah, bishop d6 and bishop f8 and... Can you know time? Well, rook e2 here. Well, rook a2 loses, but uh, rook e2. Or start with rook g2 and then. Play let's rook check e2. later and let's go to the live position. But this is this are... is actually the live position, so we need to we need to establish some sort of some sort of evaluation. And apparently, the the super comps say this is completely winning for white now. We haven't really established how yet, but uh, that would be good news for for Magnus supporters because uh, here it becomes a lot more concrete and a lot, I think, easier to calculate because the, the plans are so straightforward. It looks Rook like he didn't play the supercomputer move, right? <clears throat> we don't know no. because the, the depth is uh, inconclusive here. You're the closest thing we have to a supercomputer in this studio. Yeah. But we're told it's made in 31. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, made in 31 should be conclusive enough. Yeah, king f7 followed, I guess, by bishop f8. And if you switch to and the... if I go... Yeah, then you play bishop, I play bishop f8 and I re-establish the king on g6. And, uh, then, and then, then I can't move anything. And bishop, bishop f7 is, uh, is uh, probably going to decide here. Although f5... This is still a somewhat tricky position. But uh, here you do feel like white should probably convert it somehow. Because the bishop now switches to this long diagonal. Yeah, but it's, bad could happen. Yeah, you, you, can still, you can still misplay this. Uh, the machine will uh, probably win this uh, effortlessly. Well, not probably, but it will, it will win. If, if, if it's winning, it will, it will not be hard-pressed to win this with white. But for a, for a human player, this is still very misplayable. Decent rule of thumb is if the world champion and arguably best endgame player a round takes more than two minutes in any position. It's not completely trivial. And also, notably, he is down to two minutes himself. His his time advantage has evaporated to a large degree, and uh, it's very possible that this is maybe the last big decision he needs to make. But King F7 is a very very natural move to make in this position. I don't think it's uh, also the only move that. Well, that's makes immediate progress, right? Yeah, that's 
yeah, you, you, you want to play king f7, you want to force black to switch to very, very passive defense, and then you should be able to convert from there. Still a very, very committal decision, at least to my mind, to give this f2 pawn. You really gotta be sure this wins. Yeah, that was... You would think there's a scenario where you maneuver around and keep the f pawn, yeah. and then go for this pawn, right? It's, it's, interesting that, uh, it's interesting that he's done this, and he played bishop g4, apparently. Mm -hmm. It does not feel right. No. No, that uh, that allows black, I think, way too much freedom. I'm sure you can still misplay it from the black side as well, but... No, obviously. Uh. But yeah, this is a, a, a weird decision I don't quite understand. And rook e8 blitzed out. That is odd indeed, because now the rook yeah, is back in full defensive mode, can go to g8, can go to a8, a7. And you sort of get the same thing than you had, that you had earlier without the f2 pawn, which... Should be true. Whoa. Yeah, things happening, and and, and once again, uh, we are we are watching why why beating beating Karakin is uh, so not e not easy at all. King yeah. G8 on the board. This feels very drawn to me. Very drawn is an exaggeration. There's still tension has to be paid, but wow, this is a turnaround. Let's not forget what's at stake here. Like, the difference between a win and a draw is huge in this game. A draw, it's 1 1, and Kayakin has the white piece in the next game. Yeah, and if, win you, if, you, very, win, very if you win, if you win, you're in, in some control. Yeah. Hmm. You feel like if you hold the next black game, you're sort of really doing, doing very, very well. Right. Well, of course, White is going to keep trying a bit now. He wants to put his bishop back on his diagonal. But you really have the same position you had earlier without the f2 point. Yeah. Wow. This is somewhat surprising, though, because uh, King F seven was uh, a, a very, very logical move in that position, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure why you would not play it. Not well, Kayakin now very logically tries to stop the bishop from giving this check. Rook e two, bishop d three. I guess this is point. I guess yeah. No, I think White can still establish the bishop on that diagonal, but he will have to misplace his. His other pieces and black will have uh, will have counterplay. That was a very very specific uh, constellation of pieces, so to speak, where you had the bishops on e6 and d6 precisely, so that black couldn't really attack the the g pawn. Right. And king h8 played by Kayakin. Yeah, you you probably need to switch to king f7 now, but uh, it's it's different now because uh, in most cases black probably will be in time to uh, force your pieces away. And uh, yeah, you will you will no longer be able to establish the the exactly the same yeah. exactly and the same position. Three fives, so. <clears throat> maybe not here. Well, here, G five could be seven, Bishop F eight or something was bishop made. Eight. But uh, oh, by the way, we should, yeah, I'm not sure this is very relevant. But we have to start thinking about this hmm. is yeah, this is a draw. Yeah, G four H five situations. G four H five is a draw. Yeah, but yeah, of course, Magnus is not going to blunder that, but. Yeah, the problem here is that you, you needed the bishop on e6 here and not on e4. Like if you play rook c3 here, for instance, the difference is after bishop f8, you get a che check from the 7th. And after king g6, black still has king g8 as a move. Whereas with the bishop on with the bishop on uh, e6, uh, black would be completely tied up, would have no right. moves, and eventually uh, white would just play bishop f7 and win. So yeah, this is a very, very large difference. Uh, Karakin is still mo playing more or less on increment, but yeah, his moves so is are... Carlson, so. Yeah, his moves are a lot simpler now than they uh, they were. He played rook e3 instead of rook c3, but that's, uh, I mean, it's difficult to, to actually go very wrong here with black. You you mm -hmm. need to uh, now make a very large blunder, like allowing bishop f8 uh, and not having a check from the seventh here, but that's unlikely. It is a bit shocking to me. Like, yeah. okay, you can miss some force wins, but then why gamble and give up this f2 pawn if you yeah. can maneuver forever with the f2 pawn? Yeah, that was that was a strange decision. It was a strange decision and uh, could be very costly, obviously, because there was an opportunity you probably should not have missed. Right. G4 on the board, of course, he keeps trying, but... Sure. No, I'm, we're, not, we're not saying this will necessarily end in a draw. This is still a position, as mentioned, where black can, uh, can miss something and, and still end up losing, but... But Kayakin is in the zone now, plays all the best defensive moves. Yeah. King g6, the king comes back to g8, and back to square one. The bishop moves around. Yeah. 
You just need not. You need to stop bishop e6 check here. Like after bishop b3 or well, any move, you you need to stop this setup with a bishop on e6 and a bishop on f8. But it should be actually possible to stop it. People are saying Kayakin playing perfect defense according to Engine. He does that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Or well, I'm not sure if oh, looks like looks like he blundered bishop e6. Oof, no. And we. Dude, I just jinx him when I said he does it a lot. What? Carlson also misses it. What? Wow. What is going Here on? Here bishop e6, bishop f8 seemed like it was deciding the game. Yeah. Once again. What is Whoa. what is going on here? I don't understand anything. I think keep... I mean, he should hmm. s stop and think here. And here, actually, the machine seems to suggest that if you go bishop f8, king g8, bishop c5, you will still get, get this setup. Sort and of superhuman stuff. Not, not really, because you you rob the rook from of all of all its good squares, and you he should be able to find this actually. But he hasn't. He's played bishop a three, king h eight back. And now once again you have to do this, but you're also getting dangerously close to move repetition territory. Wow. They are humans, and there's a lot at stake. Yeah. It it does seem like bishop of, bishop f eight bishop c five probably let's say wins in practical terms because. Uh, Black will have to switch to a very passive defense. And mm -hmm. here you can play bishop e6, rook b6. But that's not that's not the same the same position, obviously. Bishop f7, f5 check is an important detail, but yeah, that uh, Sergei will find. King f7 is back. Yeah, king f7, but uh, Black can play king either check. the check or king h7. Both are both are fine. No real progress. Wow. Bishop e7, self-pinning. No, but now <laughs> it will actually be somewhat difficult for him to even unpin. Right. And uh, h5 might be an immediate draw because gh rook takes e7 is a draw. Oh, that's a cute <laughs> theme. Yeah, that's... Uh... Oh, I should never forget about the bad bishop. Wow. Yeah, just f5 for any move. Kayakin can spot this. This theme, I'm sure, he's very aware of. Like of the course, yeah. wrong bishop. No, but this, uh, if this now ends the way it looks, it it, it probably should end. Will be. Uh, Won't be easy psychologically. For yeah, us. this will be a huge blow, obviously, because yeah, the position was. Uh, you just know you were winning. Whereas, let's say in game three. You feel you were winning, but it was difficult, and uh, Black continued mounting. H5 bouncing. played. Yeah, H5 played, but... Wow. Yeah, this that's is... a huge, huge dodge bullet for Kayakin. Yeah, you can play G5, but then, you know, Black suddenly even has trumps of, <laughs> trumps of his own. Yeah. Pass pawn while you're pinned. <laughs> yeah, and another thing you, you might want to mention, like G5, FG, HG. If the pawn gets to g6, I think I can even uh, give up the rook once again, right? Yeah, that's another known fortress, I believe. Yeah. Let's say here. Yeah, and after after g6, yeah. I can just take on a7, play h3, and... Uh, yeah, it's just a draw. Yeah, g, g h f5 played, and now Sergei will just take on a7, and... Yeah, this is now, uh, this is now just a... Hang on a second. Yeah. I'm, I'm always a bit worried about... It's so always these stalemates, g6, h3, but not here. No, this is a draw. Yeah. Once again, a gigantic feat of uh, defense from from Sergei, but... Uh, With a lot of help yeah, from... He, 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 needed, he needed help, yeah. He, he definitely needed help What's here, and he got mm. some help. I don't know, nothing, nothing much is going on. King f7, even g5 is a move, mm. <laughs> if, if you want to be fanciful. Yeah, king of eight, g5, and yeah, everybody everybody goes home. Mm. Wow. Very, very dramatic mm. game, but uh, Magnus continues the trend of not converting positions he normally converts without uh, too much trouble. Not even the end game, but the position before that, which we talked about at nauseam with the two pieces yeah. versus the rook and queens on the board, should just have been one. Anyway, it wasn't the game ends in a draw because this position is stalemate. Another stellar defensive effort by Sega Kayakin. The score is one to one. Two more rapid games to come. Yeah, there we will, will. There will now be a ten minute break, so we will uh, perhaps continue uh, banging our hands uh, heads against the the tech wall 
And uh, the players will, will need to catch a breath after this one. In particular, I think Magnus, who will feel that uh, this should not have happened. Not just the players, us commentators, uh, Tambien, see I'm switching to Spanish, I'm so confused. We'll be back with you, hopefully, with an even nicer layout. Maybe not, who knows, see you soon.
Hello and welcome back to the second social media uh, segment. Um, everything is going crazy here in the office. Everyone is buzzing. The second game was a draw, as you all know, but what excitement we've been through. And I just realized I <laughs> clicked my wrong. So I was going to finish on this tweet, actually, but then let's, uh, let's start on it. And this is um, sort of a parody on the tweet I finished on earlier about the wet square uh, in Moscow broadcasting the match. And this is my good friend Dan. Uh, I know, I'm sure you all know his stuff. And if you don't, do follow him. He does some excellent, funny uh, jazz photoshops. So uh, photoshopping me onto Times Square, it's been liked and retreated a lot. I'm afraid it's probably also fake, but there you go. Uh, maybe someday we will make it to Times Square. So right, so where did I actually want to start? This is where I wanted to start with waning, uh, waning Norwegian champion Johan Salomon tweeting Kariak and deviates from earlier in the match where he played E takes D, C takes D, blah, blah. Anyway, I just wanted to, the point was to show you what it looks like um, following the match on Norwegian TV. And then shortly afterwards, Tarje tweeted saying, oh my, Carlsen just took off his jacket, which is usually a good uh, sign for things to come. And indeed, the game was looking very promising, but we all know what happened and we're going to see what happened in the tweets. Uh, but first, this one from Gambit Guide. Chess24 is trending on YouTube, currently over 37... Uh, 37,000 viewers, so thank you uh, a lot to each and every one of you uh, watching us. And this was taken a, an hour ago, so God only knows where we will be an hour from now. Uh, this match is becoming incredibly exci exciting, I'm struggling to even speak, and incredibly intense. Um, game 3 will start in a couple of minutes. Let's move on, Tarje, who is in New York, saying the press room has never been so crowded, which is probably not a surprise. Um, then when it looked like Magnus was going to win, this is a screenshot from my actual Twitter timeline, uh, Jonathan Rousen saying white is much better, rooks are signi significantly devalued when all the action is on one side of the board. Thomas Wendell saying, of course Kariakin has saved some pretty horrible positions this match, but this one feels a bridge too far. John Bartholomew is saying Karyakin in scramble mode, he's going to have to construct yet another fortress if he hopes to hold this one. And US women's world champion, uh, US champion Nazi Paikidze tweeting, this is uh, so exciting. Uh, Magnus Carlsen close to winning his first rapid game, what a match. And indeed, very close he was. Um, this prompted Anish Giri to tweet, game over. Uh, the world number two, Fabiano Caruana, also chipping in, saying if Magnus wins, it's hard to imagine Karyakin saving the match, so he needs to fight till the bitter end to try and hold this. And uh, he did fight until the bitter end. I'm still amazed by what I saw, and um, I'm curious how Magnus is going to recover from this. And then maybe Bishop G4, the first time uh, Magnus blew his, uh, his advantage, John Bartholomew uh, tweeting, Bishop G4, hold your horses. Aksha Chandra is saying, Edge of the Seed Endgame going on right here. I guess this was what uh, this is what a lot of us will be looking like right now. And the international master Robert Reese tweeting, Bishop G4 is insane. Um, this was only one of many missed opportunities. And then there we go, uh, starting from the bottom. Uh, Europe Shek saying Sergei Houdini Karyakin is back. Then Johan Salomon tweeting with four seconds left on the clock. Karyakin found the drawing move, so the drawing move was H5, which he means. Uh, hashtag Iron Man, hashtag Ice Cold. Uh, Jonathan Rousen, I think uh, with a bit of a delay here, Black can consider playing H5 soon, uh, which indeed is what happened. Uh, Tarje Swenson quoting Judith Polgar saying unbelievable defensive skills uh, by Karyakin and this was backed up by Anish Giri saying if you ask me Karyakin has just become world chess defense champion and eventually uh, the news coming in via chessnews.ru game to officially drawn so there you go um, I'm struggling to find words. As I said, it's very, very, very intense, very exciting. I'm going to vacate the studio to let you come back, get back to the chess section, and I'll be back after game three. See you then. Bye bye.
and we're back. Game number three is already in full swing. So without further ado, let me introduce the rest of my crew. This is Peter Swidler. We will jump into the action, I believe. Look at this. Big excitement, yeah. another D3 Spanish. And another D3 Spanish. And finally, we're back to, to two boards, hopefully for the, uh, the remainder of the broadcast. And uh, this is somewhat similar to what they had in game uh, 11. But with the inclusion of uh, of the pawn on b4, because black played knight a5 and bishop b6, so it seems like the same position, but it's not exactly the same position. Hang on. But knight a5, this is normal, bishop a2, bishop e6, and here was b4 instead of d4. Yeah, this is game d4 two. d4 is game two. Yeah, this is game two, and uh, instead of this, Sergei played b4, knight c6, knight d5. But after b4, you could have exchanged the bishops, right? Yeah, it, it obviously is an option, but I guess he felt 96 is more interesting. 95, 94, this, uh, this has been blitzed out uh, okay. by both players, and White is now thinking. And yeah, compared to, compared to game 11, there's a pawn on b4 here, and the bishop is on a2 and not on b3. Let's explain that mainly for me, because I don't fully grasp the differences yet. This is game 11, yeah, this different is, move or yeah, a similar yeah. position. This is game 11 and white took on d4, and as we were describing, uh, white has two options there, take on e7 and take on f6. I think he probably holds true uh, for the position they have on the board right now. I think the options are very, very similar here, and you need to evaluate uh, in whose favor the inclusion of uh, uh, the move b2, b4 is. My initial feeling is that it should favor black, actually, because it gives black uh, targets to, 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 to base his counterplay against. You mean a5 in the c5, c5, c4 Could becomes be a lot easier, uh, and uh, yeah, and a5 definitely becomes uh, part of black's plans uh, everywhere. Although actually here maybe white might be obliged to take on e7 because in those positions before is Aww. is 94, 84, 97, queen e7, bishop g5. Knight g5 has been played, so we okay. have embarked upon an unexpected journey. What's going on here? Knight d5, ah, that, oof, we have to calculate. That actually is a major difference with the, with the other line, because knight takes b3, is uh, there's nobody on b3. So that is, uh, that is a major difference between the, the position uh, in game 11 and the position uh, here. Bishop g4, knight f6 loses a piece. Bishop takes d5, e d5, you have to wonder uh, where the knight on d4 will go. So, uh, issues for black. I'm not sure if... Uh, they are serious issues or not, but here uh, yeah, you cannot have to start jumping around. Yeah. Something is a little and fishy. the knight and the knight goes from g5 to e4 here as well, which is, I think. If I is, go, let's say here, maybe? yeah, knight d7 probably is a good move here. Uh, yeah, this this looks like the sensible start from black, but I'm wondering about knight takes h7, but I probably cannot make Whoa. this work, right? Knight h7, king h7, and now some combination of queen h5, check and c3. But it probably doesn't work because I have I have knight h6 here as black. And uh, yeah, probably not not in time to do this with white, right? Don't ask me. I'm still shell shocked from the last game where Magnus Carlsen yeah, that was did very... not manage to win a very, very good position. And we will have to see how much that has affected him. Yeah, that was very, very uncharacteristic from him in general, although somewhat characteristic in this match. In this That's match, true. this is not the first opportunity he missed. But arguably the biggest, yeah. like rapid yeah. and so on. But that was very well. No, ten minutes, ten minutes against uh, more or less increment and a position which you can win in a number of ways, pretty much. And so yeah, uh, huge, huge opportunity missed there. But yeah, your idea doesn't work because yeah, the knight is. I was about to say that. Yeah. So after ninety seven, white needs to play something quieter. If you go knight of three, that feels not takes too takes f five bishop g five or bishop not, yeah man. bishop g five four f five and a five later knight go, might go to b six might go return to f six yeah and if knight e four we can probably yeah knight e four might be the most critical thought, here yeah. Yeah. yeah but maybe I can play f five knight g two I guess or even he's showing off no, I don't think this makes I'm sense sure, yeah, yeah. yeah I can take this I can take this so yeah. probably knight g two I guess. Because knight g3, f4, f3 was kind of the point of my idea. Now? Yeah, it, 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 it gets stuck. It gets stuck and it's a very serious issue for black. If you go f4, you might not lose the knight, but you lose the positional battle for the light squares. Yeah, c3, knight f5, uh, knight probably returns to f3, then we go rook e1, bishop b1, d4, hopefully. This looks and bad yeah, for black. Yeah, if, if, it, if all of these moves actually occur on the board, black is probably lost, so... It's very strategically risky. Mm. 
Carlson taking his time here after knight g5. A lot of horsing around from both sides. Let's see what the world champion comes up with. Yeah, bishop d5, e5, knight d7 is not forced. You can maybe uh, start immediate counterplay on the queen side here. Maybe we mentioned the move a6, a5. It's playable even here. C3, knight f5. That knight generally goes uh, to h4 and then g6 in many of... I mean, this is a somewhat typical structure, actually. It occurs in a lot of anti-bird, uh, anti, anti marshals and 6d3 variations. And this looks decent, but I don't think I've played the best moves for white. Yeah. No, in general, white's biggest and, and, and only serious issue here is the bishop on a2, which will be blocked in by he, he, its own its own pawns on d5 and d3. So, mm, it's a very interesting, strategically complicated position and... Uh, I guess both players should be reasonably happy with this because Sergei, I think, is still in his preparation. He blitzed out before, and even knight g5 was played very quickly, so it feels yeah. like he, he is still very much... It's knight uh, g5, you don't blitz out if you haven't seen this position before. <laughs> probably not, yeah. Probably not. And uh, can Blake just play bishop d7 here, I wonder? But then maybe, like, yeah, c3 or knight e7 and f4, many things become possible. C3 and E6, I wasn't all that unhappy about, but maybe even here F4 might be dangerous. But also just snapping on E7 and going F4 looks very attractive strategically. Mm, yeah. Bishop D5 has been played, ED blitzed out, no surprises there. Yeah, other moves lose pieces, so... And here, yes, Black, Black obviously has a choice. Uh, Pretty non-standard situation, though. At least it's a structure you never see from any regular opening. I understand you get it here by doing these mutual subtleties and this back and forth, this knight a5, bishop a2, bishop e6. But in the textbooks we don't often cover a structure with double white deep pawns and a pawn on b4 and a bishop on a2. Now this is a... This knight is a, d7 on the board. Yeah, this is a quirky, quirky uh, version of this. I, I've seen this, uh, this structure before, but uh, not with this precise uh, uh, pawn situation on the queen side. Knight e4 by far, by far the best move here. Yeah, knight f3 doesn't make sense because you exchange black's worry. Yeah. Knight h3 is just a bad square. So yeah, knight, knight e4, knight e4 played already, already played and... Uh, yeah. Now Carlsen has a choice. f5 is what we looked at earlier, knight d2, yeah, and we weren't that impressed with this position because we're giving up all these juicy light squares. Yeah, this feels extremely risky. This really does feel like you are tempting fate a great deal by, by, opting, uh, by opting for this. I think generally black wants to play f5 in these structures, but not until he secured the, the knight on d4. So once again, the... How do you do that? You don't have time to... Knight f5, knight f5 is generally met by g3, actually, because knight, g4, knight h4, knight g6 is a very useful restructuring black uh, normally aims for here. Uh, so either Let's immediately... Play f5. Okay, so we will, we will get... Whoa. We will get something... Knight uh, d2 also blitzed out. And here you... f4 is the only move that actually saves the knight, so he will now play f4. He is not going to... Very committal. Do you yeah. think he's slightly steaming from last game? He blitz out f4. I think, no, I think he, is, he is steamed up from, from game two, yeah. The, wow. the decisions he is taking right now and also the speed with which he is taking them does... It does appear as if he is uh, still sort of relieving the position he had in game two. And I mean, many people would. I mean, it's, it would require a, a, an inhuman effort to just completely clear your mind from, from what happened in the previous game. No, it is very human, but... It yeah, it could go very wrong too. Sure. No, this so this is this is an, an in, this is a very very committal decision. And uh, as mentioned, uh, if White manages to to stabilize and open up the the, the, the center with his bishops, in particular the, the bishop on b1, if, if White manages to play c3 g4, Black's king side will just fall apart uh, in, in many cases. And, uh, Currently, f3 might be a bit of a threat, right? So you probably want to kick this. Yeah, I think c3 or knight f3, and uh, I don't really see any reason to offer black any exchanges here. Although with the pawn on f4, you can, you can go knight f3 as well, because your bishop g5 idea is no longer really uh, really there for black. Let's look at this, though. Yeah. This, though. <clears throat> Watch your th, Jan. That's what my English teacher always used to say. So sorry, Mr. Schultz. Knight f3... Mm. Well, you need to start some counterplay straight. Go away. for it. You know, let's say a5. We, we go rook e1, I think. I'd like to take with the c pawn, but I'm not sure I'm 
making much progress here. Yeah, this is this is some uh, hope. This knight has some squares. Yeah, bishop b2 knight b6 in particular is a is a plan for black here. So maybe it works out tempo wise, but black needs to be very very fast. And you mentioned the move knight f3 instead of c3. But if I get rid of this this dude. I understand my pieces are not very impressive, but neither is your a2 bishop, right? Once again, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, this is not doesn't look this is bad. not unplayable for black no. at all. I mean, uh, f5, f4 is not uh, is not a huge uh, improvement on your king side, but uh, with a bishop no, on a2, still far, far away from action, you maybe can can play like this and still feel okay. But yeah, for, from from a spectator standpoint, I think this is you know all very happy developments because uh, this is going to be very sharp potentially. The gloves are off. Yeah. Do you think people should wear gloves during chess games, like for the first two games? Because it's much harder to move the pieces. I once had a photo shoot because I'm a celebrity. Let's not <clears throat> pretend I'm not. Uh, it, during the Thailand Open, very prestigious tournament which I play every year. And they made us wear boxing, Thai boxing gloves while playing chess. Not easy to move a piece. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, funky photo shoots during that tournament, I remember that. Also mm. somewhat surprising people were forced to tie box, I think. Yeah, they didn't tell us it was going to be a topless photo shoot. It's bad enough they make you get up incredibly early, like 11 a.m. or some insane time. I feel so sorry mm. for you. I'm joking. But yeah, then... They told us, okay, it's Thai boxing, but you're not supposed to wear any shirts. People don't wear shirts during Thai boxing. And I would have liked to get this information like one year before the tournament to uh, get in shape for stuff like that. Yeah. Well, there, a lot of peer pressure. Who can say no, but it wasn't pretty. Back, back to the game. Yeah, back, Is to, this pretty? back to the game, yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I feel about putting the knight on e4. Because it supports the... Uh, in terms of supporting d3, d4, it's a lot weaker. But it's also such a nice square for the knight, and the, yeah, I'm, I'm in, in two minds about this. I'm also very unsure as to what black wants to do. Like, what, what are black's next three moves if white slowly improves his position? So you think he will be playing on the king side here? It's actually four moves, right? I was trying to find a checkmate since you gave me three. But yeah, I think so. <laughs> Well, yeah, the alternative is, of course, to open the second flank, which we've mentioned. Yeah, a five. Yeah, a five is a is a move you can include in most positions here, unless White immediately does something on the queen side himself. But that's unlikely. I think playing a three, a four here, potentially stops a five, but it's a waste of a tempo. And maybe even maybe it doesn't. Puka. Maybe it doesn't even stop a five exactly. Yeah. It's very tense at first sight. Well, the eye test says this is bad for Black. But it's not that simple, is it? No. The eye test says you get knight of three, rook e one, bishop b one, d four. You get punished yeah. for yeah. That was my sense. that was my initial assessment that uh, black will just get completely rolled over in the center and uh, his position will crumble. But maybe that's not not all that simple. And once again, Sergei is, although not to the extent that uh, it happened in the previous two games, he is slightly behind on the clock already, despite. Uh, getting the, the first theoretical shot in, I think, 9g5, he played very fast and Magnus started thinking, but by now uh, this position uh, uh, this position already consumed some time. And But uh, they're still perfectly comfortable, 20, uh, 21 minutes for Magnus and uh, somewhat less than 18 for, for Sergei. Also, being the armchair general, do you say armchair psychologist as well? If you don't mm. say it, you should. Um, that I am. I have a feeling that if Sergei thinks here for five minutes, it might allow Magnus to refocus and yeah. slightly calm down from the last game, think about what's actually happening in this game, yeah, what I think, his ideas are. I think, I don't know if he feels like that personally right now, but I think he would very much benefit from, from a period of uh, contemplation here, uh, which would be... 94 on the board. Yeah, allowed by White giving, giving some time. No more contemplating, instead yeah. queen mating. That. And Queen E8 actually blitzed out, so either Magnus is still is still somewhat steamed up, or he he used the time Sergei spent on uh, on thinking here very productively. Okay. I'm wondering I'm wondering about Queen G4 though. 
I wouldn't want to allow queen g6, but maybe black just plays h5 and then queen g6. Play h5 for sure. But I still sort of like putting my queen on h3 and uh, saying it makes it harder for you really? to... Okay. Actually, g5 on the previous move may have been a very decent oh, idea, like uh, interesting too. illustrating to me just how poorly I how poorly I positioned my queen here. That yeah. is a very strong move. I don't know g4, yeah. but it feels highly artificial, does it not? No, no, no. This is this is probably wrong. This is probably very, very wrong. No, one Counter thing. Play. One thing you can say about the e5 f4 pawn feast in the center is that. If black actually manages to get something rolling on the king side, it will not be that easy to stop. Uh, and uh, yeah, white needs to come up with a, with a definite plan here. Not sure about this knight e4. Knight f3 felt felt much tighter in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, because then you have this. Always but once have this again, maybe maybe there. Sergei wasn't sure something like the immediate g5 doesn't happen. Like if we if we look, if we look back at this for a second, like knight g2 g5. Oh, and given Carlson's mood, very possible. Yeah, but here probably yeah, rookie one followed by something might uh, might yeah g four probably why just goes knight h two or something and says you are opening up files for me not for yourself and you will regret all this all these liberties you are taking yeah ninety four was a uh, yeah I really like the setup where the you, you don't close the e file for yourself and you play for a much faster g four break it 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 appeared a lot more uh, uh, a lot natural to me. Well, now it's anybody's guess who's better and why, what the plans are. It feels like black has more plans. He has this g5, he has this queen g6, knight h4, he has this a5 resource. Yeah, I think a5... Well, it's not obvious what goes yeah. where, right? I think a5 will be will be flicked in at some point to make, uh, make white uh, think about that as well. Mainly, I think, for that reason, to just uh, keep Sergei on his toes, not allow bishop b3 followed by a4, which will probably force black to keep something on the a file. Stakes is high. I'm yeah. still at a loss for words. And if as a commentator I'm at a loss for words, imagine the players who... 10 minutes is not a lot of time. You no. can go to the bathroom, you maybe check in with your... Not sure what the rules are, if they have trainers on site giving them advice between games. Or, I think, eh. I mean, if my experiences, let's say, for, for during the World Cup are a, a, any guide, you should be... They are allowed to speak to their people in between games. It would be very hard to explain why they wouldn't be, to be honest. Sure. Uh, you obviously get rechecked for metal once you leave the playing area to speak to them, and, and then in return you get once again patted down, but apart from that... Bishop b3 played, you can start with queen g6, uh, because that probably forces white, and somebody in chat called this a lol plan of king h1, rook g1. It's not really all that lol, because you need to control, you need to control your king side, you need to make sure you don't get mated. Checkmate does yeah. end the game. Yeah. I think securing the king side against you know anything immediate is a is a very, very decent idea. Also, maybe if White stabilizes, he can with the rook on g one start thinking about playing g three later in the game and uh, opening up something on the king side for himself. But for the time being, queen g six hasn't been played yet, uh, and uh, yeah, Magnus is uh, considering his options here. A five being his other option. Yeah, I think it's between it's between uh, queen g six and a five. You can maybe make an argument for playing g5 before playing queen g6, nah, but once again, much. it's it's just such a huge commitment. Yeah, you're saying no, they're you're really committing to yeah, it. Like you. even even the plan of very simply playing queen e2 and bishop d1, maybe not immediately, maybe including a4 first to make sure that you you have this on on the board, and then controlling the black advance by by this plan might be quite decent. No, I think I think g5 is not really something Magnus Magnus will do here. I just wanted to. Mm -hmm. Mention, mention potential ideas, but I think it's highly unlikely. Agnos. He might be steaming a little bit, but he still has his classical instincts. It's like they used to say, well, about many people, I guess, but his hand won't allow him to play that. Yeah, queen g6 and f3. Interesting. Fighting against this idea of knight h4, yeah. f3. No, I, I, of these two options, I actually preferred king h1, rook g1 quite, quite a bit. Because now you you constantly have to worry about this knight landing on e3 and uh, a5 gains in strength a great deal I think because the bishop on c1 will uh, might get overloaded. No, this is a 
This is a, wasn't a, a decision that wasn't forced, and uh, Sergei played it really fast. Obviously, Queen G6 was expected, but I still think uh, King H1, Rook G1 was, uh, was the way to go there. <coughs> Invite black to overextend on the king side for the time being. And it makes it also a bit harder to activate your own queen, and the same wasn't easy anyway, but there were lines at least where you fight for this diagonal and so on. Well, after sure. F3, it doesn't really have anywhere to go, or well, yeah. anywhere active to go. No, this uh, this is uh, it, it does feel that with a pawn on f3, black really shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be in trouble because uh, any kind of opening of the position will now be a lot easier to handle with black because because yeah, knight e3 will be something black needs to control. Constantly. Having said all that, this bishop still does nothing. Yeah, you would like to have it here, but I don't see how you can manufacture that. Yeah, only only mm -hmm. by. Uh, yeah. Mastering, mastering the art of teleportation, I think, yeah. Because you, you're never playing c6 to... Because that, uh, you know... You, yeah. uh, rejuvenating the bishop on b3 is not something you should do here. Mm. Ooh, that was close. Hmm. I quite like a5. I think this is, this is now the time to start playing, uh, playing on both flanks. Ask quite the question what, what he wants to do with his structure. Like if he wants to take on a5 or play bishop d2. I don't think he wants to take, right? You want to keep the, the tension, I guess. It's complicated. Can we checkmate, by the way? Like put the bishop here and checkmate? It's not going to happen, right? Maybe I need to discuss. It's not. Nice it's not ridiculous, actually. I, I. I. was about to say this is never going to happen, but it's not. It's not that ridiculous. I'm not sure this is how Magnus generally plays chess, but uh, when forced to, he is very, very capable of of playing directly for mate as well. So well, he's not forced to here, but since this bishop doesn't do all that much anyway, might as well use it to creepily yeah. stare at the g3 square and I might have some plans with knight f6 where it takes bishop g3 or I'm not or, quite sure. Or how even to do knight that. f6 takes on e4 and then knight e3 and if that pawn survives you can support it from g5 and it will be or f2 actually yeah yes. it will be a huge huge torn uh, torn in right side. Line. Mm. Like even here like, you can you can snap this and go knight e3 and yeah this is be this is going to be a bit of an issue for white. Not a forced line no, no, not at all, but uh, not just not just an illustration. And Bishop H4 Wait, has four been played. played. He has good instinct, this Carlson. Like, took him a while to find my move, but eventually he got there. Yeah, and uh, once again, shows uh, definite intent. Cruel intentions. Great movie. <laughs> Who doesn't love cruel intentions? We're starring the likes of Ryan Filippi, Sarah Michelle Geller, Reese Witherspoon. And... Just other people. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And Leonard Hofstetter's mom. It's true. Yeah. Based on, and I will mispronounce this horribly, Chaudelot de la Clos's timeless masterpiece, Liaison Dangereux, or something. Mm. And we should probably wrap this up because there is a world championship match going on. And In German it is Gefährliche Liebschaften. Yeah, I'm not going to touch that with a barge pole, no. I People are aware that Sarah Michelle Geller also played Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Seriously. People love it when there's a very tense position and I start talking about Buffy. That's why I'm so popular. A4 played, uh, which is, uh, you know, very understandable because... He wants to... Mainly, I think he wants Come to first. distract distract Black from what Black is doing on the king side because what Black is doing on the king side is potentially very very dangerous. Uh, this is what you're doing, right? Yeah, knight f6 is what you're doing probably, and uh, now White already has to has to make a, an executive decision about this idea of knight e4, knight e3, and whether he is very worried about it, slightly worried about, it, not worried about it at all. All options are are open. Or Maybe you decide you're quite worried about it, but there's nothing you can do about it, and therefore you roll with it. Knight f6 on the board. Carlsen is making a statement he's not all that concerned about. 
subtleties on the queen side here is much more. Yeah, he says he says mate is mate is what I'm what I'm after here, and I I, I believe I can find some. Uh, it's uh, well with a pawn on f3, I I can definitely get behind this idea. Which is why, yeah, once again, I want to restate that uh, King H1, Rook G1 was not a stupid idea at all. Because if you imagine, if you imagine like King H1, uh, Bishop H4, G3 no longer really uh, is an idea at all because White can always take with the F pawn. Knight H4, Rook G1, and you run out of threats really. One day you might. Yeah. And especially Turn with, the table. Yeah, especially with 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 the knight on h4, g3 does become an option later in the game. And f3, f3 was a very committal decision, which I felt wasn't really forced by circumstances. I thought you were going to say Sergei, but then you went circumstances. I try. Is this the line we looked at? No, no. Not exactly. Rook a2, rook a2 is a useful move. and Because uh, now if takes, takes, takes... Yeah, with the rook on a2 there will be g3 here You're because, yeah, because the, the, the rook will uh, join the defense. Yeah, This is an important detail, so rook a2 probably is a decent starting point for white. Uh, and here, even even your sort of caveman plan of queen h5, bishop g3 is is actually very serious. Doesn't deliver mate after a three, but no. that's another achievement no. for black. Yeah, if you for, I mean, if the bishop gets to g three and stays alive, and white it starts to, to, to you is forced to play around it, so to speak, this is not a comfortable situation because it's uh, it's just there being incredibly uncomfortable and demanding attention. Queen two on the board. Queen two played, uh, and uh, yeah, that's here maybe preparing for this because now you can take with the ah no. No, you can just take with the yeah, pawn and no, he, he controlled knight e3, but once again, gotcha. queen h5 followed by, followed by bishop g3. Is, something to g3. Yeah, something to g3. Let's find some checkmate. Bishop d2 takes, takes, jump, and yeah, this wins. This is uh, the end. And apparently, Magna, you know, I don't know if we should once again trust trust chat on this, but yeah, a5 play. Now, yeah, which is Whoa. which is also a. A very serious option because it feels like with the bishop steal on c1, black probably will be able to liquidate the entire queen side, and then he will be the only the Focus only one playing. On, yeah, uh -huh. he, no, probably a pair of rooks will actually come off. It's very likely that white takes on a5, rook a5, and makes some kind of a move like bishop d2 or rook a2, ah, gotcha. and then you take on a, a4, and uh, yeah, the, the whole queen side disappeared, which I think is very much in black's favor because he no longer has to worry about anything, and he is the side here. Maybe you can even take on d5. It's unclear, but uh, even if this doesn't exist as an option. You can now play something like rook b8 and claim that you're better on every every side of the board. Here you might have to worry about some takes bishop d7 operation all of a sudden. Yeah, but... That's uh, a bit random, but... <laughs> a5, very interesting. Showing, what do you call this? Court vision? Yeah. Because I would have been very focused on this side of the board, but he plays... No, he, 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 is, he is very, very uh, aware of everything that's been going on uh, on the board. And uh, also 16 minutes against 10, so... Uh, this is still not a, a horrible situation time-wise that uh, that Sergei finds himself in, but it's something he will now have to start paying attention to. Yeah, and a lot of calculating to do. Anyway, why can't I grab a pawn? That's what I was curious about. Let's check. Yeah, A B A B. Ah, because this square is a pawn. Yeah, but uh, maybe you can just ignore it and claim this is not where the knight was going anyway. Like knight d four, queen d one, or queen b two. I don't know where. B two probably. But even if I'm forced to just take on b5, which is kind of boring, it's still fine for black. These pawns aren't the prettiest Yeah, side and your king them. on g1 is still not entirely safe at all. I mean, the knight will just return to f5. It will take black two moves, but it will return to f5. And then once again, you'll have to watch for knight e3 in every single position. Yeah, still, I preferred the position with the caveman approach, I believe. Don't blame you, but uh, this is also very good. Go clear. here, take, go here, checkmate. You was very much a plan, but uh, Magnus uh, continues uh, playing a sort of a larger game. <clears throat> These sophisticated, world-class players playing all over the board for small details. Go caveman! Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Sergei has a number of options here. He can go for mass simplifications of some kind on the on the queen side, or he can. 
maybe go for the line we described where he takes on b5, takes on b4, and gives black the option of uh, picking the b5 pawn uh, for the 2 tempi because the knight really doesn't belong on b5. Lots of things you can do here. But uh, second very interesting game in a row. Not that the first one wasn't interesting, but the first one Less. became became uh, very safe for both both sides uh, almost immediately out of the opening. So yeah, uh, wasn't a large amount of excitement there. But the the next two, yeah, no one I think can can complain about the lack of action. Peter, no one. What does he have to do? With it? It's a lot harder to pull this joke off when it's not spelled incorrectly. Yeah. Also, doing this to me when I was the one who taught you about the the miracles of Peter No One is... I'm willing to rip off whatever you tell me pretty much instantly. Except for the chess part there, I don't really pay that much attention, so you're safe there. But the references, I'm like a sponge. Mm. So let's figure this out. I think last time I went bishop d2. I don't, yeah, machine insists this is a lot stronger, but this already is kind of uh, difficult to understand. Apparently, you need to have queen a2 in order to meet knight takes d5, so that black doesn't have c7, c6. But that is very too deep. Subtle. Yeah, that is Way very, very deep. Too subtle. Forcing right. queen f7, and now white has some compensation after bishop b3, c6. But black still actually ends up a pawn up, so. Yeah, this is this is still yeah. You, you can't really play like this with white, I think. And a b five on the board. A b five played. Yeah. This was. I like this decision. Yeah, this was uh, always going to be one of the uh, likelier options for white, and I think we are headed towards the position we described. He will take. He will take on before. Probably ninety four. I mean, other moves uh, are also possible, but this is by far the most the most obvious one. Queen b two, and here he will. Probably look for something stronger, but end up settling on knight takes b5. Once Which again, you can defendable you, to me. Yeah, you can try something like knight e4, bishop g3 here as well. Ah, interesting. Now we're talking. Here? Yeah. But I guess white just goes bishop c4 and h3 and says, yes, you planted it on g3, but now you don't have pieces to exploit it. Right. And I keep my b5 pawn at least for the time being, and yeah, that's just to explain this pawn. This possible. probably this probably is still incredibly dangerous for white. Maybe just still unplayable. I'm, I wasn't sure. I didn't check, but it does feel like you you are running very serious risks here. But here, yeah, but this yeah this feels goes. this feels manageable because black is still some way away from from getting anywhere on the king's side. Yeah, this will take forever, and white yeah. will make something happen. Yeah, so is still thinking after c takes before. I wonder if something like bishop d two or bishop b two is uh, is. Uh... This could make a lot of sense, right? But it allows knight e three. I mean, it's it's not a move you make you make easily because it feels like you're allowing uh, this 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 knight incursion, which uh, kind of feels scary. It might not objectively be scary, but it feels very scary. And yeah, I don't know. I I don't know how easy this will be. Uh, this will be to play. Kayakin, once again... Down to 5 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, according to, to our clock, against 16-4 uh, for Magnus. So this continues continues the same uh, sort of uh, narrative as in, in the second game. First game, it wasn't really an issue, but in the second game, Magnus uh, played the first part of the game very confidently, and uh, Sergei soon found himself in horrible time trouble. But did his thing, it did not break. What other options are there? To my mind, rook a8, cb is still logical, but maybe inviting this, and you're not even a pawn up. Bishop d2 played, apparently. d2, yeah. yeah. That also makes sense, keeping an eye on this. Yeah. Mm, and now it's Mr. Magnus with the choice. Yeah. Takes looks like the obvious move. Take, takes looks, you know, very normal, but... Uh, you then you have to decide how many rooks you want and where and what. Yeah. No, this is... Quite dis I mean, quite good for Black, but um, maybe his advantage is, is not as as large as you would have thought. But it, once again, it all stems from this decision to play f3 very early, which I think was... Uh, and to some extent, knight e4 felt... Oh, no, sorry, not this knight e4, the other knight e4. The other knight e4, yeah. 
Not sure. It did feel like you're you're sort of cutting off your own play there by by not playing Ooh. for the for the sharpest uh, plan with d4 immediately. Now, Carlson's comfortable, but the position remains very sharp strategically, right? It's not like sure. White doesn't have any trumps. No, no. But also with an, actually uh, with him play, playing Bishop d2 and not Bishop b2, c takes b4 is not threatened. So you can make a case for some kind of a waiting move because yeah, cb4, knight d4 will be un uncomfortable. So there's queen e8, there's also queen h5 returning to the previous plan and saying, okay, make a move here. Finally. Yeah, and Magnus has, you know, plenty of time to, to consider and he will, I think uh, he should probably use some of it here because it's an important, it's an important position. And he, he has taken on c3, bishop c3 and there really is no bigger jinx than you. The very second you say he should no, but he, he, use some of his he time, did, he, he did, spend, he did no. spend some time on that decision. I'm just trolling. Not a lot of time, though. No. You're right. And bishop c3 on the board. Mm. And uh, this probably was played with the idea of playing knight e3. Otherwise, I think you... Jump! You don't really do that, but that feels that feels uh, like you're giving White additional options because after the rook goes, you have to watch out for let's say b6, knight d6 ideas even. Also, and with this knight on e3, there's no longer any checkmates with knight g3. Yeah, well, rook, this is on the board. Rook fc1 played, and uh, once again, Magnus he does this thing which okay doesn't matter so much, but he's making Sergei play only moves, which is much much easier in. Yeah. Time trial, right? Yeah. Bishop takes c3, rook fc1, you can more or less blitz up. Yep. He is still, yeah, he is still doing quite well, but uh, in practical terms against someone who is uh, beginning to, to fall seriously behind on the clock, yeah, giving, giving your opponent as many decisions as possible is generally considered to be the, the, the sensible strategy. Uh, in this in these cases. Yeah. Well, here he's the one with the decisions, and now this is not an obvious decision. What are you doing here? Go here. Rook b8, yeah. probably. But yeah, you need to, to start calculating stuff now. For instance, the machine suggests bishop takes e5 is now playable, Whoa. which, which mm -hmm. is very easy to miss. And suddenly, yeah, if you take the bishop, you just lose, Ooh. because these pawns just, yeah, they, they, go, they go through. Mm -hmm. That's a nasty little shot. Wow. Yeah, you can still play rook takes b5 and perhaps uh, nothing really yeah, horrible don't has happened to do. Change your e5 pawn yeah. for. But that that is not a, not a development you want you want to see because yeah that was very very important. White had a bishop on c3 which was going nowhere and then suddenly it's alive again. Very alive. Yeah, and taking his time now. Yeah, I think maybe he spotted this because otherwise you play rook a b8, it looks very natural. It attacks right. the b5 pawn and it's not that easy to protect normally. <clears throat> Sorry, but yeah, I think he probably spotted the tactic and he is now revising, revising his expectations here. Curbing his enthusiasm a little bit? Mm, possibly, yeah. Very double edge, because in general you don't want to take here. And bishop takes this rook instantly jumps to life. No, he, you have to switch to yeah. sort of defense. In particular, by driving the rook from f1 to c1, Magnus created a situation where, in many cases, White creates immediate counterplay, which was mm. something that w really wasn't there. If you look at the position after bishop d2 in particular, before before both bishop takes e3 and knight e3, you don't really see an active move for white. C takes b4 doesn't really qualify because it just drives the the, the, the knight to g4, and no, it's very well much stronger. yeah. It was very awkward to meet for for white, and uh, yeah. Rook a one, one, rook a one, rook a one, rook a one, one played, and now I think maybe the queen needs to start uh, uh, getting rerouted towards the queen side because you probably aren't giving any mate on the king side. That's a and sad development for black. Though, yeah, but I mean, play. once again, okay. I, I suspect maybe bishop takes e5 is still a move you need to consider in this in right. this position. So uh, I'm not sure how strong it is here, but queen e8, queen e8 played. played. Yeah, 
Feels like, I'm not sure, the tables have turned, but Kayakin is very much back in the game. Or Sure. And he was never out of the game, but he's not. And also, very, very noticeably, we, we, we mentioned that he had five minutes uh, left about five moves ago. He still has five minutes left, whereas Magnus burned uh, five minutes of his uh, time advantage and also made life easier for White by trading some pieces and allowing for some simple moves to be made. So Yeah, same scenario in some ways, like in game number two. Yeah. This is the script. Carlsen is stronger in the early middle game, but you need to get the job done. Bishop c4 played uh, played by Sergei yeah, also a very sure. natural uh, move. Yeah, stabilizing. Protecting your, your entire structure. Black probably throws in king h8 somewhere to, to sidestep all these pins, maybe hint that you will take on d5 if uh, if you if white continues ignoring it. Knight takes d5 might actually become a move. Are you worried about this, just to break it up? I understand it could cost me a pawn. I'm not sure how serious it is. I don't know. Let's look at knight e4. Let's say d4, uh, cb6. And something. Yeah, your pieces are somewhat misplaced here. And actually, even bishop d2, bishop takes e3 might become a serious, uh, serious problem. And uh, yeah, white is very stable here with the bishop on c6 plugging everything up on the, on, on the queen side. Yeah, this is a very King's Indian type idea from White. Trade off the, the, the good squares, uh, leave yourself with this monster light squared bishop and then play. Black is probably fine still, but White also probably feels very safe about this. Very tense, very tense. King H8 on the board. Yeah, B6 does look like a move. Let's check other options. Mm. The wise computer gives this move, which is above my pay grade. Bc, queen c7, and we've achieved something apparently. Yeah, because uh, it's not that comfortable for white to just keep his stuff, uh, keep his stuff coordinated. Knight takes c4 might actually force you to take with the f pawn, which is not something you want to do because then right. black will once again have very serious initiative on the king side. So queen b8 probably is quite strong after b6, and it's not impossible to find because. Assessing the position after knight e4, d4, cb6 is not really that difficult. No. You, you you immediately see that you've traded off most of your strategic advantages. Hmm. Well, b6 obviously not forced, and probably no. wrong, but it's it's a very natural move to. Yeah, it's mind. it's an idea. It's an idea you definitely need to explore. But also, this is finally we're back to what we were sort of advocating for for Magnus in this game. Make he, moves. Yeah, he make he makes a move which creates an idea and also gives White a wide variety of options on how to deal with this idea. And uh, for somebody who has five minutes left, it's it's not that comfortable. It's a lot less comfortable than when you're making moves which you know you have to make. Oh. Still extremely unbalanced and I feel a lot is riding on this bishop if it becomes a contributor in whatever, some king's side attack or... Yeah. Makes a surprising reaction. Let's say if, if, you, if you discuss the position after knight f6, you probably take with the g gf. GF, GF yeah, yeah, I think. Like King's Indian instincts. Are bishop d2. It. No, I was wondering about bishop d2, but the knight actually goes via the c2 square or f5 ah, square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it goes to d4, and then black starts really rolling on the or on the king side. So you, you you cannot really you cannot really play this here. Opening up the g file just makes life uh, so much simpler for black. Sure. Big decision for Mr. Kayakin. Yeah, 11 against 3 on the clock in favor of, of Carlsen. And this is still a very, very complicated position. So this is, uh, this is a large advantage, uh, time-wise. This is another yeah, well, but, defensive move covering this. But you, you can play queen g6 back. And uh, at some point, you probably need to throw in h7, h6, just to make sure you don't have to worry about the back rank. And then you might uh, knight takes f6 played. Knight f6 played. played. Wow, I'm very curious if he's gonna go gf, which looks like the move you want to play. But no, I think I think he has to. I think uh, it's by far the most testing move. And against once again against, he's taken with the bishop. Okay, we should just maybe stop speaking. <laughs> Might be a good idea. Let's have a moment of silence. But why doesn't he go gf? It looked so strong. I <clears throat> don't really understand. It it did look. It did look very, very promising, and especially when you're playing against somebody who is, uh, okay, three played. yeah, not really in control. Nice move, this rook a three, by the way. Yeah, you play something like h six here, I guess. You you really need to get this over with. But like even bishop e one f two, for instance, a transfer to, you start threatening bishop takes e three in some positions. Also, it's a good diagonal for the bishop to be on. Yeah, it's tough for black to 
attack too much, right? It looks like the wide position now. Yeah, but why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Point. Why wouldn't you open the G file? That's a bit of a mystery. Yeah, maybe sometimes you just don't consider a move like that on positional grounds, or he missed knight c2. It's also possible. But even let's say after knight f5, just how pleasant is this for white? No, I agree. Rook g8, queen h5. Right. You just yeah. forget about the queen side and uh, now seriously go for go for the mating attack. And it, this dude is a bit of a spectator on the king side. So yeah, it looked very good. It 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 really is a, a bit of a mystifying decision from from the world champion. Okay, three on the board, and Kayakin is back doing what he does best. Not, yeah, giving an inch in a slightly awkward but defendable position. Yeah, I'm sort of wondering about e5 before, but you, you just don't play like that. Mm. There are too few pieces remaining, and there's also bishop f6, bishop g7, which is probably... I mean, maybe yeah, takes queen e5, yeah. yeah, that was what ah, I... I see, I see. I'm not claiming I'm winning by force, but I want to occupy the dark squares, maybe get the a-file under control, but... Yeah, even here, counterplay against the c7 pawn might might really be in time for white. Interesting idea. No, it's it's a worthy idea positionally, but I'm not sure if it's fast enough, and white probably gets things under control. And here. it's been played. Okay. Whoa. Okay, so we, we got we got that right somehow after not getting right many many things which we felt we should. Going for it. Let's check the. Options. Yeah. DE is what we just saw. Yeah, it's been yeah, played. Yeah, DE right has been has been played. Takes, yeah, takes, takes, takes queen five. five must be the idea. Otherwise, I don't really see what he's doing. And yeah, Black probably isn't risking anything with his complete dark square dominance. But after queen d two, rook a eight, and once again, you're probably missing this uh, this one tempo to safeguard your king because after rook a eight, I think rook, bishop a two might be the only the only good move White has. Rook c1 might also be playable though. And Sege played rook c1 immediately, which I think a difference? gives black no, slightly no, more no. space here yeah, because he can start with queen d4. It, it's a useful move, it, it, it takes up more squares. But Magnus blitzes out rook a8. Naturally enough. And h3. h3. Mm. I'm not sure about h3. This really does give black a lot of time, but maybe it's just fine because you control the f1 square. This is very important. Rook a1, you just take, take, you play king h2. And uh, the bishop on c4 is very important here because uh, there is no way to get the knight to f1 and g3, which would win. Black is still never ever worse here, despite being a pawn down, because he is just so completely in control of the dark squares. But I don't think you win this with black. See what Carlson does. You can, you can also start with h6. I'm sure. No, he White will go king h2. He has useful moves. No? Yeah. Black is very, very safe here. I don't think uh, White... You, you really need to miss something very large here for White to start playing for a win. But as far as, you know, keeping things under control goes, I think White should be able to do that with the limited material available. Can you go for some madness like this, this? Or is this asking for... <laughs> Well, uh, here are blunder queen d3, queen c3, right? Yeah, it feels like this probably yeah, will not be fast enough. Yeah. Going going completely insane might not be a great idea. Mm, I keep going back and forth on that topic. Mm. Time very, situation very tense is, once again. Time situation is uh, around eight minutes against around two and a half for H6 for Sergei and h6 played. But yeah. King h2 is a move you can more or less blitz out. I would or queen d2, which is also reasonably safe. Like queen d2 Probably followed by bishop e2, yeah. yeah, getting getting finally some dark squares under control. King h2 played. Yep. <clears throat> this will be hard to break down. Like even if you do nothing, quote unquote, with a move like this, like looks comfortable. No, How do you yeah, make progress? As mentioned, black is never really, play. never really in any danger. Mm -hmm. But neither is he really making any progress here. I feel. We shall see. I have a feeling it's still quite unpleasant for white to defend this. Yeah, it's easier to play with black. You just sure. try to create small threats somewhere. Try to ask some questions. But in general. Uh, the knight on e3 looks fantastic, but uh, in order to make progress, you need for it to have squares. Because I don't think mm. your rook ever lands on the second. I mean, you win if, if the rook goes to a2 and cannot be taken, but... Yeah, apparently here white can switch to counter-attack and you... Aggression. Yeah. Well. Yeah, e5 followed by b6 apparently is very strong. Good luck. 
yeah, you're not going to find this because it actually sacrifices a queen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is, yeah, this is uh, some some you know prime computer stuff. This is a line we are reading on our monitor, which does win for white, but uh, you know none of these moves is uh, very easy to find. No, that's what I'm saying. Over the board, like okay, you look for tricks as white, but here I'd get extremely scared. Queen e1 played. Queen e1 played. Okay. Queen b2, rook a2 is allowed, but I guess he and knight c4, queen b4 is what we should explain. He didn't blunder the piece. Uh, he he sees all these little tactics very very uh, well, uh, Sergey. But after queen b2, he will nice probably trick. have to play bishop f1. I guess queen g1 looks horrible. And now we go rook a2, rook b1. Very active at the early yeah, I'm not sure why he allowed all this, which is why I was advocating. Uh, oh, now you go back here yeah, and we yeah. conquered. Yeah, the I, I'm not. I'm not sure why he gave up the second. Now I feel like if if Magnus plays queen b2, rook a2, which I think he should, uh, playing this position for white will become uh, will become a lot harder. Queen b2, bishop yeah, f1, f1 on played. Now after after rook a2, I guess he thought rook b1 is fine, but. Uh, there's a very large issue here that uh, driving this rook away after, let's say, queen f6 will be a major, major problem. Rook a2 played. Yeah, apart from rook b1, you don't really have, yeah, you, you lose if you don't play rook b1. You need to start rook playing rook two. Massive threat, so yeah. rook b1 will be played. Yeah, rook b1, yeah. let's say queen f6, and you, I mean, queen g5 is really an unpleasant threat there. Queen f2 does not yet do anything because of takes and... Yeah. G1 keeps everything protected. No, no, you you don't really want to trade this, you know, the the black queen for the queen on e1. It just feels completely unnatural. After so queen f6, this is most precise yeah. because after queen f6, it's not even that easy to find a move because queen g5 is a massive, massive threat there. Machine says bishop, bishop, bishop e2 is pretty much the only move to make. It's not an easy move to make. No, you don't want to remove the. Defender. You're you're pinning your own stuff, and after queen g5, you need to play queen f2, and this actually blunt. No, it doesn't blunt the piece. I thought queen g3 wins the piece, but after I, I guess black white goes king g1. Oh, okay. You need to start making all these sequences of completely completely only move potentially, only moves. And what is Kayakin thinking about? Rook b1 is four. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. He is down on our clocks. He is down to twenty four seconds, uh, and probably he is now wondering why he allowed all this more than anything else. But it's uh, irrelevant. You need to make the only move in the position. Maybe he's trying to make b6 work, but it's just not going to work. Get it. Wow. Carlson pressing, but well, we've seen it before. Yeah. We, 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 we've seen we've seen this a defender rook takes c7 plate what does this work uh rook a1 wins on the spot my g2 what's his point queen my g2 also wins on the spot but rook a1 uh i think is a, sort of easier to see like I rook see a1 wins a, wins a queen that looks effective wow carlson with a big big chance here because after rook a1 well, well, it's not a chance. Drop. It's not a chance. It's uh, you collect everything because uh, the mating attack continues. Sounds like a chance. <laughs> yeah. Well. And this is not a technical. Yeah, rook a one played. Okay, so one this played. this one I think we can call now. He is not he is not going mm -hmm. not to win a position where he has an extra queen. I think. That's unlikely, and yeah, there's nothing you can do. You can give the check king h7, and wherever yeah. the queen goes. So I think I think it's safe to call this one, and we will have a game four in which Magnus is white and has to make a draw. So it's a comfortable situation for the world champion. Should he convert this? Well, which he will, because Kayakin resigned. But stranger things have happened, and for Kayakin, he's trailing for the first time in this match, and he's gonna have to readjust to the new situation, try to. Think of a winning plan with black because you can't yeah. play the Berlin in the situation. Yeah, you, you already against me in a similar situation. He played the knight of five. Right. I, I didn't let him play the knight of. I gave all kinds of uh, d4 queen d4 lines and then I think maybe I gave a check once. But yeah, I, against me he switched he switched to e4 c5 and I expect this to happen again uh, in game four. You, you, yeah, the Berlin is just not an option. We've Rook. seen him come back from the dead not just against you but in many. A match, so we all know never to underestimate Sergei Kayakin in such a situation. But things do look up for Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, after after the the, the huge miss in game in game two, uh, he held his nerve better. I feel in in game three because 
This was a nice game, right? Like no, no, there sure. were some mistakes made, which of course armchair journals with computer and so on. But overall, I like this E4 idea at least on yeah. practical grounds. It looked like yeah, I, I did point idea. out that it was it was quite nice to to try this, but mm, yeah, still. Um, to collapse so so quickly in this position was... This is incredibly tough to play with one or two minutes here, I don't blame. But I, I really, really, I, I felt allowing queen g4 was where it started to go wrong. Just go queen g2, rook it, bishop it, so. Once, once you, get, you get this setup, it's just so, so hard to shake. And you also get the play against the c7 pawn in many positions. And I hear you. Yeah, but we'll okay. be back with game number four. Magnus Carlsen up 2-1. to one. Sergei Kayaki needs a win with the black pieces. Tall order. Fiona, Steel Anthony will fill you in on everything that happened in the outside world. We'll be back with you. Thank you guys for watching. See you soon. Hello everyone, welcome to this third social media segment. This is going to be a real quick one because game four is just upon us. Uh, Sergei Karyakin is going to have to win with the black pieces. People were worried about game two, whether Magnus would be able to uh, come back 
over his disappointment, he did indeed. Fabiano Caruana tweeted just after the game, not winning that with such a huge time advantage is really shocking. And again, I apologize in advance with the speed at which I'm going to get over. It was good to hear from Grandmaster Pavel Ilyanov, who said, I have an idea to force players to wear heart rate sensors. Sergei has a spirit, but maybe extra heart cooling. And then there was a discussion. Robert Wee said he would get a vodka shot uh, if this happened to him. And then surprisingly, Tarje tweeted from New York saying an inside information was that Carlson was not pissed after not cons uh, convert converting his second game. I guess he means uh, pissed off, not actually pissed. And then uh, Peter replying, Peter Dogger's uh, outside info, he will be. Uh, it was hard to imagine, uh, indeed, Magnus would not be upset, but uh, the way he just keeps fighting back from things like this is just amazing. Then two uh, grandmasters tweeting, uh, Paco Vallejo first, again, some suffering for Kariakin is approaching. Hashtag Mamma Mia. So, uh, Grandmaster Sebastian Maze from France, this match cost me a lot. I already broke two computers and one TV. Then moving on, I can't go through all of this, but a huge outcry on my uh, Twitter feed when uh, Magnus took on F6 with the bishop, uh, led by Fabiano Caruana, who said that after bishop takes F6, uh, Rustam, and this is Rustam Kazimjanov, is in a state of absolute shock, and they are calling one, uh, 911. Well, hopefully he has recovered. And Nazi Paikizi uh, tweeting this photo, oh my god, this match, hashtag too excited. Um, and then here we go, the result. And just to conclude this segment on a slightly humorous uh, tweet, humorous even, uh, from Tony James, whenever Jan Gustafsson goes, goes off on a silly tangent, this is what I see in the chat. So there you go, um, game four coming up. I'll vacate the studio right now for to Peter and Jan. This is the conclusion of the World Championship match. Enjoy, see you later. And we're back. Game four is underway, so let's jump straight into the action. Super Grandmaster Peter Svidler, Magnus Carlsen needs a draw with the white pieces. How does he go about it? This is an interesting choice because he is a very, very proficient bishop b5 check player. He plays it for a win. He doesn't even, you know, play it to simplify as many people do. And 5f3 uh, allows a number of things, uh, but it's also a very solid line, obviously. And uh, the idea is to meet knight, six, knight six with c4, of course, and get a kind of a Marazzi structure. e5 is by far the main move here, knight b3. But the point what, is d5, d5 bishop you get some endgame, yeah, right? Yeah, d5 bishop, bishop g5. Yeah, there was a... Uh, 
There are some stories connected with this. I remember, I think Valery Salov played 5 of 3 in the Pologayevsky tournament in Buenos Aires and uh, organizers were very, very unhappy. People felt it was cheating, right? Because yeah. there was a Sicilian theme tournament and he yeah. found a way to not make it too Sicilian. Yeah, they, I, I think they banned Bishop B5 check, but they did not specifically ban 5 of 3 and he played 5 of 3 against someone. And, and that someone, I think, even played 6 uh, D5 and lost that kind of unpleasant endgame. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of a brouhaha about that. Back to the game, bishop e7 for obvious reasons. Kayakin does not want to exchange queens. Yeah. C4. C4, a5, bishop e3, a4 played. Mm -hmm. This, I think, is maybe still the uh, the absolute main line here. But why this is supposed to be very, very solid? I think it's it's a decent choice because the, the structure is just so well defined for for white here. And knight, knight c1, one. I'm, Interesting. I'm curious about that. I think it normally goes to, to d2 here. I don't think I've seen this move previously, but it might also be quite decent because you, you control the d4 square a bit better by doing this, I guess. You play bishop e2, queen d2, knight c3, and black doesn't really get to play knight d4 so easily, and then you will somehow find squares for this knight on c1. Yeah, a3, knight a2. Sometimes they just play rook b1 and b3, or rook b1 and b4 even in some positions. We'll see what happens looks like. I have a feeling that maybe this is what was played in the super final game just before my eyes uh, in Novosibirsk. I think that was played in maybe a party against Bocharov. But I'm not 100% sure, so let's uh, not... I'm a big Oparin fan. Oh yeah, I think he is a very, very promising very player. talented. Yeah. I was very impressed by by his his play in, in Novosibirsk. Castles played, knight c3 is the most natural move, bishop e2. a3 is not a worry? I mean, you go b4 or what you do? You can even play b4, you can, I mean, all three moves here make some sense, yeah. I mean, even let's something like rook b1 is not completely ridiculous, because you do have uh, a very, very stable structure, and you can you can then play, play on the queen side. Knight c3 played. Yeah. What normally do Black's plans I think I think here? yeah they play queen a5 and then they try to maybe get bishop d8 bishop d8 b6 somehow and white wants not to allow that obviously because that would be very very beneficial for black strategically but it's not that easy to achieve like queen a5 you normally go queen d2 I guess or maybe maybe rook b1 I don't know I normally would start with queen d2 bishop b2 and and then think I think that game actually went something like knight c6 rook b1 uh, maybe bishop b6, and here I think he played b4, and that was uh, a very striking idea I haven't seen before. Because if knight b4, then a3, bishop b6, and you capture the queen on a5. Do you even say you haven't seen b4 before in this position? I know you uh, re can't really, myself, really huh? itching to go there, but <laughs> please, please show the variation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is actually what happened in that game. a b3, knight b3, queen b, queen Why can't I take? a3, uh -huh. and knight and bishop b6, and Maybe knight d5. Oops, no, sorry. queen a7 mm -hmm. is a bit too far, but after queen a6, I guess knight d5 followed by c5. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm pretty sure this is what happened in that game. And white was seriously better after after a b3, knight b3, queen d8, simply bishop e2. This is a, a, a very, very pleasant position for white. This looks very nice. We got yeah. the squares, the knight jumps here. Yeah. But Kayakin, of course. Not obliged to let this happen. Yeah, he's probably aware of all this, and uh, the question is if Black has uh, a lot of productive ideas on how to avoid this. Do you think in their pre-match preparation, like you gotta anticipate falling behind against Magnus Carlsen, these positions, or in general the Knight of has been studied as an opening, should you pretty, fall back? Yeah, pretty sure they, they've looked at this. Yeah, the, the speed with which Sergei goes for this uh, indicates that I'm, I'm, I'm sure they, they considered the situation and they felt that E4, E5, in particular, in conjunction with, with what Sergei does there, is not an option at all, so you need sure. to do something else. And uh, as mentioned, they, they've been... I mean, he's, he's done this on, uh, in, what, three games against me in Baku, so... For those of you just joining us, first of all, what have you been doing earlier? Secondly, Magnus Carlsen is up 2-1. to one. This is the final rapid game. Should Sergei Kayakin not win this game, then Magnus Carlsen wins the match and keeps his World Championship title. Should Sergei Kayakin manage to win this game, we are going into second overtime, into blitz games, blitz mini-matches, with five minutes plus three seconds per player. They play... I'm wondering if what I'm saying is correct. Is it five plus three or five plus ten? I'm not sure. Five plus three, I think, yeah. Yeah, then mini-matches of two games and whoever takes the lead wins. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know. I, think, I think it does, yeah. Queen a5 on the board, looks like Carlsen is thinking a, bit, a little bit. You gotta 
consider this A3 idea at the very least. And also maybe he's wondering where to put Mr. Bishop. Well, because of the A3 idea, I would really like to start with Queen G2. It just feels a lot more, uh, a lot more comfortable here. Right. And you actually create a threat of B4. You don't. I mean, if Black doesn't play Knight C6, uh, let's say after Bishop B6, you can start with B4, even, because the Queen mm -hmm. will once again uh, fall into the same trap. Yeah, it's a nice construction. C5 is very hard to stop. Yep. Hmm. Well, champion thinking here. In general, of course, this question has been asked a million times. The best advice is still to approach these situations like a normal chess game, right? Easier said than done, obviously, but where you're in the lead with the white pieces and you need to draw. Yeah, you you only start thinking about making a draw when you start seeing variations where like half the pieces come off. Right. If you can manage that, because obviously you know it takes a bit of a strain on your on your psychologically because you you want to start simplifying probably uh, as early as possible. You want to, to to start leading towards something you can control easily. But if you can manage objectively, it's better not to think about the result until you can uh, sort of enforce the result. Who do you think is more nervous in this situation, Carlsen, because the Goal is near or kayaking because the end is near? I'm not sure. It's it's very difficult to judge. And uh, I've been uh, corrected in, in chat. It was, I think, a part in Cocker, if not a part in Butcherov. But it was played in uh, in the Super Final in November? October? November. Probably. Don't we still have November? Yeah, probably October then. Yeah, all these, all these months, uh, <clears throat> they all look the same to me. Yeah. Hamburg all month literally do look the same. It's always five degrees in the right. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what month it is. Queen G2 played uh, on the board. One thing I'm wondering about though is, is Bishop D8 a move at all? Isn't that a little too early? This is what Can I wanted I, to like, what, jump around? What I wanted to explore. Also, yeah, this pawn might be hanging, might not be hanging. You probably can't well, take I like this move. I like okay, this Okay, let's move. try this. Yeah, Black doesn't really get what he what he wants. He'll take and no, no, this is this is definitely wrong. I think you need to start by taking on d two. Um, and yeah, I'm take sure with something. Yeah. Tracking was my plan. Just to stop this. And I want to continue sacrificing it because I you know I haven't done this to start protecting it suddenly like Bishop six or Knight c six or some move. Yeah, hard to say. But At least it, it mm. makes the game complicated, but uh, it could also throw away your all of your chances here because if, if White can you take and consolidate, you push too early, then it could just be yeah. over, right? Yeah. Yeah. Crap, isn't it? Yeah. For instance, yeah, if this is possible, and then go back and play knight d5 against anything, it might be a very simple plan and also a very solid plan against mm. more or less anything Black can do. We'll see. What Kayakin decides on. Clearly these situations he hasn't where well, he hasn't reviewed this line as often as he has Berlin main lines, because so far it was never sure. part of his repertoire. And <coughs> sure, and also I think it, it, it probably is a smart idea by Magnus not to go Bishop B5 check, because uh, I think a very large focus uh, was you know placed on what do you do with the focus? I, I can't speak English anymore. But uh, th this focus. I think well played, sir. I think that was very much what uh, Team Karakin must have been preparing preparing against because uh, it's it's very solid and also it's what Magnus does uh, regularly and quite well. Right. Yeah, Karakin, longer thing here, which is very understandable because you have to figure out what goes where very quickly. Yep. 24 against uh, 19 and counting down, still not a huge deal, but uh, it's sort of important to start thinking first. That's the the only real yeah the only real important thing to, to speak about here. And it feels like Sergei is the first one to not be sure what to do in a in a position here, which is extremely understandable because as mentioned, not a part of his preparation. People are asking if he plays his opening regularly, and the answer is yes. He played the Nidorf 
in many a game, even against Magnus Carlsen in their last non-World Championship game in Bilbao, I played the Night Sure. Knight, Knight A6. A6. Knight A6 played, and... Uh, Where's this well, going? Here? Mm -hmm. Not really. I think he is just uh, maybe sidestepping something in case of Knight D5. Uh, the Knight will not be attacked if White plays Knight D5. But uh, the, the Rook B1 before plan is still very much uh, in place if White wants it. Or well, the bishop e2 castles, well, bishop, but now yeah. that there's no knight ever coming to d4, sure. I feel a lot comfortable just developing. Sure. Bishop e6, rook fca, but then you play b3, it's very similar actually. White sort of almost, almost always goes for this, and yeah, here... There was a very amusing a very amusing suggestion by the machine of taking with the a-pawn and then going knight 1, a2, but... Sorry, I hear after. Yeah, takes, take, I mean, rook fc8 here, b3, I, I briefly saw that the machine was advocating doing this, but... Uh, well, yeah. You don't really need to, although this is also probably very playable. Too subtle. Yeah, people are saying Magnus will play g4 it's and h4. I don't think Magnus will play g4 and h4. Bishop e2 played... I'd uh, give serious odds against g4 yeah. and h4. <laughs> but any one of those two moves is still possible, you think? No, I think neither one of those moves nor the combination is possible. I think my first statement already implied the latter statement. Bishop e2 played, I think bishop e6 bishop and rook fc8 is what you, I mean, you still want to play bishop d8, bishop b6, but with a knight on a6, that plan really no longer promises very much. And, and Sergei played knight c5 very fast, mm. yes, which is curious because now after rook b1, b4 is a huge threat. Is it? You want to take and queen b4 normally? Right? No, I want to take with a knight. Ah, okay. I want to take with a knight and force you to do something very, uh, I mean, all of your choices will become extremely uncomfortable there, I feel. Yeah, this knight a6, knight c5 looks yeah. like too artificial a plan somewhat, isn't it? Yeah, that doesn't really feel like a like a um, objectively good plan, but maybe he's trying also to dodge. Also, like castle after bishop e6, let's say. Yeah, once again, you play rook b1 and... Uh, mm, yes. with, without the idea of b2 before, this would be playable, but it, it does exist. And it will create a huge, a huge problem for black. Like takes, takes with the knight. Okay, this is just a dream position for white. Yeah, considering the match situation, this is this is exactly what Magnus wants. Yeah. Yeah. Castles played. We expect bishop e6. I mean, if you play knight e6 here, you're really saying, why have I not why played? Didn't I yeah, why, why didn't I put it on c6 in, in one tempo instead of putting it on e6 in three? So. It might now be uh, objectively slightly better than uh, than bishop e6, but it's very very difficult to play like this, uh, having not played knight c6 earlier. Yeah, this is going quite well for Magnus because he is also playing faster. He has uh, a, a significant, well, somewhat significant advantage on the clock, and an extremely safe position, which uh, should not be even all that difficult to play. Bishop d7 played by Sergei. Once again, rook d1, rook b1, all of these all of these natural moves are very playable here. You do like this plan, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm very insistent on it. That's because I was very impressed by what, uh, what Aparin did in that game. That game really uh, felt to me like he played really, really well up to a point. That's my boy. I played Aparin in Spanish league. I was very impressed with him. Not so much the game, but sometimes you can feel somebody is good, right? Yeah. yeah. He felt strong. Mm -hmm. And no, yeah. we shall we shall await developments because I think objectively the the, the assessment of this position cannot really be in much doubt. White has a very safe, uh, stable advantage, uh, and more importantly, it's not even that easy to name an immediate source of counterplay for black. Rook B one played. Great minds think alike. No, once again, the choice of knight c1, I think, implies that they've looked at that game as well. I mean, it's uh, unsurprising. Mm -hmm. You don't have to hurry with uh, with the pawn push. You can start with rook d1, maybe even bishop f1 later, but you don't also necessarily need all those moves. It's just a very comfortable position for white. Yeah, and black to make something happen, I feel like he has to, even if it costs a pawn, go for Oh, Some kind of jump. Yeah, but I'm not saying it's great. Yeah, rook d1, bishop f1 here, here actually does make stable. does make sense to sidestep all kinds of potential pawn sacrifices later in the game, and then you probably still play before. <laughs> Eventually, you do start expanding on the queen side once you've secured your mm. your king side. Gotcha. By the way, do you feel that this is the established 
I'm aware there have been other attempts, but the established try for a win at Super Grandmaster level is c5 followed by d6 in a must-win situation. Yeah, I think I think this is where people go these days. Knight c6, bishop b5 really doesn't feel like a like a better choice because it gives white a lot of options to just uh, really solid, yeah, yeah really mm -hmm. play really solidly and and then you can play either the the knight or for the the rouser and we will now never know but probably the rouser actually because neither features a lot of variations where white can maybe this try is to one make... plus of Carlson's f3 he doesn't want to find out if Kayakin had prepared the rouser or the knight of yeah rouser also, was Kayakin Karana, right? And the yes, with, 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 the, with the colors reversed, so to speak, with Kayakin in exactly the same situation that Magnus finds himself in today. And, and it also, you can maybe say that uh, because of that, it's slightly more precise to start with knight f6 and move 3. But that allows other things, obviously. Yeah, you can take on c5. Yeah, right? You can mm. take on c5 and play a somewhat simpler position. Although black is immediately completely fine, but that's not the issue in this game. Rook FC8 played logical enough move. When yeah. Well, you can play Rook D1 or no, but here, D4. In, here in particular, before uh, I think, especially in connection with knight, with knight takes B3, is how do you even deal with this? Yeah, and before blitzed out by Magnus. Very logical. Yeah, AB3 will be played. Uh, by and the way, here. we've tried to explain en passant somewhat unsuccessfully. Yeah, I was about earlier. to I was about sure. to mention mm -hmm. that, but. This yeah, A B A B A B. I I really like taking with the knight here, but it's it's unnecessary, I guess. A B four. Why it? not though? He doesn't want uh, whatever queen A three because knight no, takes B three loses material. That's sort of, was right. sort of my point. Queen C seven. Or what do you, what do you even do? Queen A seven. Or... No, but then I can. I, I can no, I understand it's bad. I'm wondering what bothered him. Take on C five and play knight D five at my leisure at some point later in the game. Like, oh, why is it just better here with no risk because. We are lending something on d5 earlier than black lands something on d4, which is uh, the most important thing about these positions. No, this is extremely comfortable. So, I don't know. Maybe he thought ab was even stronger because it creates a threat of b4. Sure. And if you get in b4 and knight b3, you also oh, he's, take control. Of course, of course he is uh, still doing perfectly fine and it's a strong move, but Queen I thought d8. the other one was simpler. Queen d8 played. Yeah, you can continue just quietly strengthening your position. Mm, yeah, rook d1, one, bishop f1. Sure. Yeah. Knight b3 is sort of yeah. what you would want to do. Yeah, also, but of course the game continues. Also knight d3 simply, and this is what he what he played actually, is, mm. uh, is uh, I think, very unpleasant to face. Because you kind of want to take on d3, because otherwise knight b4, knight d5 comes, uh, comes very quickly. But you also don't want to trade pieces with black. Because with every trade it becomes a lot easier for white to play. So we go here, which looks like the desperate move. Yeah, knight b4. Yeah, knight e6 plate, knight b4, and now... You can even wait for a move to have bishop f1 after knight f4. Here black does have knight f4, mm. but right. you can also ignore it. And knight b4 actually blitzed out by Magnus. Magnus playing really fast. Well, this does not really... No, it's not a threat. Mm. Yeah, you, can, well, what? you can continue ignoring it. And bishop c6 played by, by Sergei, because he needs to get rid of this uh, light square bishop. If he, if he trades it off for for a knight, he will be somewhat happy about his situation, I guess. Not too happy. Though, right? No, not mm. not tremendously happy, but somewhat happy. But yeah, white doesn't really need to do anything immediately. Uh, now you can start uh, improving your pieces slightly, like rook of d1, bishop f1, as we mentioned. These are sort of the autopilot improvements here, yeah. here, and even king h1 to step out of any checks on b6 or c5 ever. Well, for black, it's very hard to. Yeah, yeah, you go, like you go for h5, h4, knight, knight h5, these types of ideas to at least uh, start distracting white on the king side because you really aren't going to do anything on the other side of the board. You can also maybe make an argument for something like rook a1 to start swapping down. Rook f1 has been played once again. And h5, uh, h5. H5 played, yeah? I like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. no, this, this needs to happen. White needs to have at least something to worry about, because otherwise, uh, what are you doing here with black? Maybe bishop f2, actually. Yeah, well, that's sort of yeah, it's a bit an of a, admission. It's a bit of a concession, yeah. It's a bit of a conception, con concession from white here. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you could just go 95 with probably the b4 knight, I guess. But it's I like this plan here. <laughs> no, it's the, it's the only plan that really exists here for black, but... 
why it should be able to to cover this. His position is way, way too solid. And actually knight bt5 here creates a very serious problem for black because knight e7 is a threat and knight, knight b6 is a threat and if you take on d5 I can take with the e-pawn and there really isn't any good square for this piece. Yeah, you can you can you can sacrifice these pawns in in a variety of ways, but it's a decent sacrifice to equalize maybe. But if you want to win, I just take twice and I I play this carefully without really attempting anything risky. We'll see what Carlson decides on. No bad choices, but still, Kayakin is doing what he has to do, trying to mix it with h4. And something might happen on the dark squares. 19 against 15 on the clock, so both are, considering uh, they've already made 19 moves, they're playing very fast and yeah, leaving themselves time for the big decisions, because it, it probably will sharpen up at some point. Mm. Black will very likely have to sacrifice something, uh, in particular uh, some kind of a variation like the one we just discussed, where white places something on d5, black snaps it off, and plays either knight f4 or knight d4 to get the dark square bishop and then try to get some kind of desperate counterplay on the dark squares, but white, if he plays well, should be able to control all that. This feels like the first longer thing, I think, by yeah. Magnus Carlsen in this game. Well, many pleasant options. Sure, but I think he is trying to decide if he wants to start forcing issues here because knight bd5 does force a structure change which generally should favor white, but also is, it's a commitment. You need to make sure you're happy with this. And also he's got plenty of time, obviously, to, sure. uh, to settle on something. But you don't want to give black too much time, because if black actually makes all of his moves, like h4, g6, knight h5, places something on f4, the bishop goes to g5, you, you do get positions in which it's, it, it, it be, begins being possible to blunder something. No well, tricks will start trying up. Mm. In the history of world championship matches, this is only the third tiebreak, right? Because it used to be, you spoke about this, bit at the beginning of the show it used to be draw odds for the champions so yeah. when it was 6-6 like in Kramnik Leko in 2004 the match was over there was 7-7 seven, seven, but yeah Sorry. Uh, draw draw secured uh, secured uh, the title for for Vladimir who was the reigning world champion yeah we had I think two tie breaks one in uh, Kramnik Tapalov in the infamous uh, Elista match and toilet one, gate yes and one in uh, Anand, Gelfand. Anand Gelfand in Moscow which I, for some reason, failed to mention when I was speaking on the subject in one of my wrap-ups. And I, I actually, I'm beginning to suspect I commented on that tiebreak live, which makes my, my idiocy even more pronounced. I believe you will be forgiven, for, for, <laughs> forgotten in the grand <laughs> scheme of things. Oh, well, uh, forgiven is what I meant to say. But yeah, so far the reigning champion has won all these tiebreaks, is that correct? Not a big sample size. Yeah, not, not a huge sample size, mm -hmm. but yes. And bishop of one chosen uh, chosen by Magnus. Now something like either the immediate h4 or maybe g6 to actually create the g7 square for the knight if white goes for knight g5 uh, uh, later in the game might be a useful inclusion for the time being. Because g7 f5 is actually a very decent uh, transfer for, for this piece later later in life. Very deep. H4 played to queen which F2. Magnus blitz, blitzes out queen f2. Yeah, I, w I wonder what this is. Maybe he wants to go c5. Like knight h5, is the plan to go c5? Doubt it. Isn't the plan to go knight d5? Or maybe it's just knight d5 and, and, and dominate. Jump. And knight d7 played very quickly by, by Sergei. Uh, stopping both of those ideas. Well, not stopping mm. knight d5, but covering the b6 square, which I think is the important part. Black cannot really play h3 yet, because after g3 it will drop off. But well, it might, yeah, bishop, this, bishop g5 is, is something black would very much like to do on strategic grounds. Like this I think move Queen F two something feels a little off about it. Can't yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't really uh, necessary. I feel. But 
I mean, it's, it's still to clarify probably fight against this knight h5 mm. because if this happens here, then after knight d5, time to go here. Yeah, he controls uh, he controls uh, everything very clear, very decently here. But yeah, after knight d7, if you play knight d5 anyway, I think bishop g5 becomes a very solid option for black, and you start feeling that black is making some progress at least. And of course now. It's not so much about the chess moves anymore, but also about psychology, like where does black have chances potentially. And Although, here, yeah, these here come off. Maybe, maybe you can take, take play queen d2 and start uh, driving these pieces back. Yeah, but you've given up the square, and like there are scenarios at least where black could play for a win here. Sure, sure. But uh, generally, there are ways of dealing with this knight invasion. Like you play queen d8 here probably because you don't want to be playing the end game. And then I can play knight e3, and if you play knight d4, I have both knight f5 and knight c2 as an option. No, I understand we're not losing here, but still, exchanging these bishops from afar feels like an achievement for black. Maybe sure, wrong. sure, but uh, once again, the, the, the position still remains somewhat concrete. So, if you can work out this line with queen d2, knight d3, and it does feel like it's reasonably forcing, you might just go for it because it feels like, yes, it's a trade black generally wants on strategic grounds, but it's, it's also a trade, which is something you should welcome in general. Hmm. And it might force black into even more trades further, uh, further down the road. So it's not, it's not a horrible idea. We'll see what Magnus Carlsen embarks upon. Is there any move? <clears throat> Still tense. Like here, it looks like white has things under control, but. I'll give black a couple of moves and uh, okay. it will become uh, a lot harder to, to navigate. And G3 played, whoa. This is this is interesting because... It's fighting against bishop G5. I think he mainly wants to play bishop H3. I think he mm. lies this square for the bishop and uh, it's understandable, it's a good square, but still it gives black maybe something to, to, to aim against. Here then we could take and... Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, knight d4 here is is not a, not, not an ideal addition for white. But even here, let's say we go king g2, and uh, eventually we will prepare either knight e2 or knight c2 here and drive the knight away. And can we do this immediately? Or you, you're dropping the knight on b4 here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna blunder a piece. That's bad news. Yeah, that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be very good, but it's possible to avoid it. Mm. But yeah, g3 feels like mm, yeah maybe he had better options, but. Uh, things are not under, not uh, out of his control yet. No, no, for sure. The position is still very stable, and black is uh, the onus is still on black to create something. But it's a somewhat, a slightly weakening move, which yeah, it does it does create mm. create targets potentially for the future. But um, I kind of like it because it shows he's not just trying to play passively, but actually to make something happen. But yeah, it's a, it's a it's a proactive decision compared to some other options, but yeah, if you if you somehow trade off the dark bishop, dark square bishops, you don't allow any any further trades, and then you I don't know get f five going with the knight on d four. This is a fantastic uh, fantastic source of counterplay for black, but white really needs to be completely compliant for about five moves in a row, which probably isn't going to happen. Unlikely. Yeah. Not the compliant type, this Norwegian dude. Not, not that compliant, no. And uh, 15 against uh, 12 and a half on the clock. Uh, this is going to be a very tense game, un unsurprisingly. Interesting position. <laughs> Expert commentary. Interesting. Do you think both players managed to forget, quote unquote, about the match situation here and just calculate moves, or to what extent can you forget about? No, it's very difficult. It's, it's uh, once again I have my my personal tiebreak against Sergey to to go by, and uh, uh, adrenaline kind of carries you, and you, you do you do manage to z z zone zone out all the uh, extraneous thoughts to a degree, but still. In particular, when it's the, the the last games of the tiebreak, and you know that a favorable result in this game will will make you the winner of the whole thing, it does, of course, influence your decision making. As 
as we concluded the other day, a wounded shark is the most dangerous shark. Yes. Still looking for plans for black apart from playing bishop g5 in some kind of addition. I'm not even entirely sure why I cannot take on d6 here. After bishop g5? But I think the point is black now plays bishop e7. Or bishop, queen f8 is an even stronger move. But I was I was about to say bishop e7, knight c6, b c6, and then and then claim you have fantastic compensation on the dark squares, but you just don't, I guess. But queen f8 is very strong. Queen Far from obvious, but yeah. yeah. Queen of eight followed by, I guess, the simple threat of bishop e3, knight d4, maybe even. Or maybe the immediate knight d4. The rook on d6 might get stuck. Is what are we talking about? Rook bd1? Rook bd1, and now, yeah, well, a number of a number of options. You probably should include hg3, hg3, but... All right. Yeah. And here, yeah, knight d4 picks up, picks up this rook on d6. Not, not impossible to calculate, so... And I think you you want to play bishop g five because, uh, as mentioned, sure. yeah, it's it's very much part of your Bad bishop. part of Good your bishop. strategic plans because you need to create the d four square for white to at least worry about. For the time being, white white has no sources of worry even. Hmm. Then again, rook a three play. I'm not very sure. cryptic. What's that? Yeah, I'm not sure what this is about. In so even if I want you to go away, whatever you yeah. shift here. Yeah, gain some time maybe because the square. I mean, there's no better square than a eight. Go back, right? Yeah, you have to go back. And Magnus could just blitz out knight c two knight before and say, okay, I don't really understand why you've given me an extra minute on the clock and uh, continue showing something. But uh, also just ignoring it and playing something like bishop h three and continuing uh, with your own plans is. This not. option might come in handy later on yeah. if you're fighting for the d4 square or whatnot. Yeah, both both moves are perfectly perfectly fine. Oh, yeah, okay, I can probably calculate a bishop g5 to like, and then just made a move, preparing queen a5 maybe. So this is idea. No, I'm not sure he actually created a threat because queen a5, knight c2, you, you you've lost that rook. You've out triangulated yourself. Mm. Bishop h3 and rook c8 played. Okay, no knight c2. But isn't this? Mm. Where do you go with this rook? You eventually, eventually, you settle on a six and a five, I guess. Yeah, night before. Now we have to go here yeah. to avoid move repetitions, which are of course off the table. Yeah, this is also knight c two, rook a six, uh, before. This looks like the strategic yeah. way to do this, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. The only way not to lose the piece, I think, is to play bishop a four, which I think white shouldn't mind a great deal, but yeah. Well, at least you could dream of a world where things happen on the a no, I think what Sergei is trying to do here is to uh, make a number of moves which don't really look optimal to force White maybe to play for a win. To, uh, for, for, for Magnus not to just uh, keep things under control, but to start expanding. And then maybe once he start exp starts expanding, he creates targets you can play against. Because otherwise I don't really understand what this achieves. Well, some rapid, you just gotta make moves at some point. Sure. But, but bishop g5 was a move. Yeah. No, clearly that was his number one priority. Knight c2 on the board asking yeah. this rook. Have to go, you have to go rook a6, otherwise you lose material on the queen side. Yeah, this just picks up the bishop. So rook a6 will be played after some thought. And, and now white, I mean, everything is completely under control. You can make more or less any kind of a move here at all. Rook a5, what? He played rook a5, but then he lost b4, right? But then you just resign, no? That is odd. He probably he didn't want to allow knight before, and he missed this before idea. That just that just loses a piece. No, not sure if a piece, but it loses something. No, no, it, it was a. Oh, no, it, it was an error. Rook okay, a six, knight before rook okay, a five played. Yeah. Sorry, that's more likely. Actually, this move asks some very nasty question, which is, what are you gonna do about b four except yeah. for going back to a six? That actually is a very clever idea. Just play knight c two here, and yeah. This is very, very unpleasant because you can't repeat moves, and if you don't, this will pick up material. Yeah, this will be this will be a very, very unpleasant shock for for Black here because if you play b6, how does White win? Ah, I missed b6, but it looks extremely ugly. No, it's it's a horrible move to contemplate, but you, you, pro you, you have probably you yeah. have to play it because. No, uh, but then even knight before Black followed by knight d5 gains in strength because b6 will be hanging, and yeah. 
It's not pretty. Knight C2 played, played, and I think I think B6 will be blitzed out by Sergei because there's really no choice. You can't you can't be repeating moves here. Is there anything direct for for, for White after B6? I don't know. Um, nope. Not that I can see. Yeah. Not that I can see. White has everything completely under control, but yeah, he's still not not really breaking through. B6 played. 12.40 against 9 on the clock, still playing reasonably fast, not in horrible time trouble yet. Yeah, please ignore these little clocks here. These ones are probably closer to the truth. Yeah, yeah, the ones the ones next to the little board are, are the ones to, uh, to go by. Can I switch them off actually? No, they bother me. Then again, if I change things, who knows what happens. Therefore, I don't know. In the chat, Manjimaru Finn says, I think Sergei has painted himself into a corner. But not in not this sure game. He's, this game. He's yeah. done it in game it's three. Desperate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's done it in game three by, by losing with White. And, and now he just needs to continue making moves and wait until they both run very, very short on time and hope for a mistake. Hmm. The objective evaluation of the position really doesn't enter into it. The game has to continue, and that's yeah. what he's doing. And yeah, it's uh, it's somewhat remarkable how large the, the 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 white advantage here is according to the machine for a position in which there's equal material and no direct threats. But yeah, black's position uh, with the bishop on h3 and now with b6 played is just tremendously unpleasant. If I mean, if if scores will level here, white would be a huge favorite to win, I think, because uh, yeah, he has all the time in the world, complete control over where he wants to continue playing, and yeah, so. Well, this is what you've mentioned, though. It's not so pleasant to think about how to win if you're sure. white. You're thinking sure. about how to wrap it up. Well, active moves always carry some risk because you have to expose your position. Sure. Very nice. Yeah. A little bit. So, yeah, well, I'd be fine. And this is, I, this is, I think, why, why it has been, uh, why Magnus has taken some time over this because he understands that his position is tremendously good, but it, it's really irrelevant. Sure. He, he needs to continue making moves and he now needs to decide if he goes for something which like an, is, is an attempt to convert or just uh, sort of maintain maintain formation and wait for black to uh, overcome it further. Rook d2 played, which I think is a hint that he doesn't really want to do what uh, I think. Yeah, break through immediately. Preparing this to make it even harder for black to go bishop g5 probably. Yeah, I mean if you if you play rook bg1 then uh, something like knight b4, knight b5 might actually become a serious threat. But after bishop g5 here you take on e6. Yeah, you take on e6 and then you take on d6. No, then I think there's no jumps yeah. anymore. No, he, he, with a bishop with a bishop on h3 it's a lot easier to control these pawn sacrifices because now they just lose. You've ruined your own structure and given away a central pawn. Without gaining anything. Without gaining anything at all, yeah. Especially with b6. Mm. Especially with saying, so no, no, black's, black's position is now completely lacking in counterplay, but uh, you can still continue making moves. You can play something like, I don't know, rook a7 or g6 back, or... So you, after yeah. bd1 you can maybe jump to c5, target b3. Yeah. You continue making some sort of moves and uh, and wait for yeah, maybe. wait for some kind of a crisis. Tempting, but every expansion here gives some, some squares. I know you like to give odds. What are Kayakin's chances here? Not huge, I guess, because it's so difficult. Not to, to win the match, but to win this game. Mm. I'm I'm really horrible at line setting. I have no idea. Because uh, games two and three have shown that huge swings in evaluation are very very possible from both both sides and. Of course, the situation being what it is, and uh, Sergei really being the one com who committed the final mistake in the previous one, I think Magnus probably is feeling a lot, you know, more confident and a lot safer in general. So, coupled with his huge advantage, he must be a favorite not to lose this. But no, that's not the question. But yeah, like, does Black have twenty percent to come back here? Ten? Like, uh, I, 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 number? Yeah, I, I really don't know how to set these things. It's, mm. It's not a large number, but uh, how do you how do you define it? How you calculate it is really not something I understand. Not gonna be booky anytime soon. No. 
but it's we were mentioning that it's difficult to make a move for white. It's also very difficult to make a sensible move for black. Yeah, that's sort of Carlson's point, right? He's making a. You could even argue if it's so sensible, Rook T2. He's saying mm -hmm. your move. Yeah. You additionally cover the second four. Maybe if you want to play knight before knight g5 later in the game, you you make sure you cover the uh, the second rank so that the rook never even lands there. And yeah, you continue passing, sort of somewhat passing, and saying you have really nothing at all to look forward to here. <clears throat> That's how I feel in the morning. And three minutes already for, for Sergei to settle on a move here, which I think is uh, a very large illustration of how difficult it is, because he knows he needs to play fast, because his one chance is to, to force Magnus into some kind of a you know, desperate time trouble with, uh, I don't know, less, less than a minute on the clock for both of them in a position where there's still a lot of pieces on the board. Yeah, that also goes to show that Rook D2, it's not praised by the computers or anything, but it was a good practical move because it asks Black very, very difficult questions. And especially with this match situation, the quality of moves can't really be expressed by this is 130 or this is 080. It's more like this keeps things under control and this doesn't. And rook d2 is a is a very nice quiet move to to just you know pass the options to pass the options to Sergei and say yeah show me what you've got yes you do and Sergei is down to maybe even less than five minutes according to what we have on our screens we don't know how precise this is but it, we're being told it's pretty close to to, to the actual times do you think he's trying to pull a Grishuk and get into desperate time trouble to maybe make Carlson drop his guard a little bit. I'm aware these things normally don't aren't done consciously. I don't think I don't think so. No, I think uh, the benefits of actually having some time for that one moment, maybe in the game where you will have half a chance and you will need to not miss it, they far outweigh the psychological uh, advantages of uh, luring your opponent into into a false sense of security. Mm. I don't think it's very much on the agenda here. Very fair point. Because it, it's not easy to see where you will get that chance, but if you do get it and you miss it because you had 20 seconds left instead of two minutes and 20 seconds, that that really will be uh, you will you will feel a hu huge sense of uh, wasted opportunity. But he feels a huge sense of no move right now. Yeah, I would go g6, king g7, just uh, on on general grounds. What? Why doesn't he play g6? Does he dislike some bishop takes? E6? It doesn't really do anything. Oh. Yeah. It's 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 just not. It's just two moves you can make, but they don't really improve your position. But they are moves you can make, and this is this is mainly why I would make them because you need to start playing some moves. Yeah, and people are suggesting you start playing fast, confidently, and for tricks. Easier said than done. Yeah, but Show me a trick. Yeah, in this position, the first two you can sort of pull off, but the third one is difficult. The problem is trying to open anything. It's normally suicide, like here, yeah. b5. Either no, before b or knight b before. Before just, just picks up. Just sort stuff. of immediately starts winning material. A lot of material, even. Mm. No, this is this is the issue. You, you you cannot really force anything at all. You need to continue making some kind of waiting moves and wait for Magnus to start doing something. Which and that's might not, not do. Yeah, and that's not a not a particularly attractive situation to find yourself in 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 this position because yeah, the position is just very very unpleasant. But still, maybe we are lacking moves, but to spend five minutes here, well, apparently now he's played Queen C seven. Yeah, it is a it is a waiting move. It also allows White if White wants to pick up the h4 pawn, which might not be so so ridiculous. But uh, well, you should take here first. Then, yeah, you yeah you start by this. You take on h4, and Bishop g5 will will come later. It's it's not stupid. No, it looks good, but still, it's a committal decision, which I'm not sure you're yeah, going to take. Yeah, Rook b1 uh, played, yeah, uh, which is a lot yeah. more a lot more expected, obviously, because uh, why would you? Why mess with the status quo when Kayakin is thinking about his moves? Right? Yeah. Ten against three and a half or so. Yeah? I probably should stop announcing that because it is on on the screen, but it's relevant here. Mm, yeah. And the previous move has taken Sergei something like five minutes to make. Which is uh, not a good sign. Yeah, mm -hmm. reminding us of the the, the old Petigorsky anecdote, I think. Uh, 
there were those tournaments sponsored by uh, uh, Pichigorsky in the States. I'm not sure of the, the exact era. And uh, during one of those tournaments, one of the players thought for about 40 minutes and played a move like, I don't know, Queen 76 And Pichigorsky's wife, who was watching in the audience, uh, exclaimed, he thought for so long and made such a little move. So yeah, five minutes here, five minutes here to spend uh, to, to play Queen D8 C7 does feel like a lot of time to make such a little move. But there, so really you feel he should have played like a longer range move with all this time. <laughs> but he spend. doesn't. He There's doesn't not that many. Yeah, he doesn't really have long range moves here. Mm, There's no squares. Yeah, and Bishop F8 played. So he really is Other taunting, moves. taunting White now with the idea of taking on H4. I would actually take. You don't even need to take on E6 now. I think you you have so much uh, so much control over the proceedings, but. You That's what you're hoping for, right? Yeah, Schneider yeah. 4 still in great shape, but I would never allow this. Yeah, maybe maybe not, but... Hmm. But yeah, it's also not immediately obvious how white breaks this down. I mean, you don't have to break it down. You can play king h1. Sure. No, there's all kinds of sensible waiting moves for white, which uh, continue asking the same question from black, but... Because bishop f8 doesn't necessarily improve your position, right? You could no. argue now you no longer have bishop g5 or knight g5. Yeah, well, with yeah. the bishop on h3, you never really had those ideas available to you anymore. Fair enough. gh4 played, so... You're right again. You're right, me wrong. Mm. I'm not sure if... Uh, yeah. When I say I would have played gh4, I'm saying it from, from here, from the commentary booth. I'm not sure I would have played this over the board, to be honest. No, well, you called it. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for me to call stuff from here. These are not my pieces. <clears throat> it's a perfectly sensible decision. After knight f4, I can maybe even take the, both of the knights and go after the f4 pawn. All of the knights. Yeah, like take here, take here. Well, go knight d2, knight d2, knight, you know, maybe even knight d2 immediately. But that kind of allows a five. Now we are almost mixing it. Mm -hmm. White is still hugely better here. Like yeah, I'm not saying. E F is better. E five is better. Followed by knight takes f four. Objectively, White really is in is in no danger whatsoever. But yeah, the position becomes, and he has taken on f four. Maybe he will not take on d seven, but he has taken on f four. Whoa! I am very surprised by this turn of events. Not questioning it objectively. It just feels no, they, like yeah. These are these are good moves to make, but they do at least finally create something for Black to aim against. Right. Yeah, Rook a five so, h five is a mm -hmm. yeah. Bishop takes d seven played as well. So I'm yeah. It looks like Carson's decided. Okay, I'm gonna have to make chess moves to end this game. I won't like just do nothing forever because of the situation. Yeah, you could jump here. Maybe. You can jump mm -hmm. here. You can also pick up the b six pawn. It's it's a useful pawn for all the future end games. Uh, there's nothing wrong with just taking on b6 and proceeding from there, to be honest. Still, he's created a universe where at least you could imagine some tricks, some, I don't know, sure. b6, d5, bishop, c5 check. Well, earlier it was very hard to think of it. Yeah. You probably run, where it probably won't work. Yeah, you probably <laughs> run into b4 and white just collects everything. Yeah, go, no, queen goes back and you win all of these pawns. And now I take all of your material. But yeah, you need to suddenly calculate all this stuff, which, uh, you know, you didn't really need to calculate anything at all a moment ago. But you are probably objectively winning now. So, yeah, I... I don't like either G GH nor Bishop T7. Well, I, mean, I think they are sort of connected because allowing this knight to land sure. <laughs> would even would be even worse. No, that's a fair point. Actually, after GH, you have to do it. So, I should focus my anger, not my dislike, towards and gh4 but yeah psychologically maybe it's the correct well i don't know what i'm talking about maybe it's the correct approach not to try to just do nothing forever yeah also eight against a minute and a half so you still are the the, the side in control of the clock which i think is very very important if the, if the clocks were reversed you would really feel like uh, black might be in with a shout here because you will have to start to calculate here it no longer is a plain sailing. It is, That's I think, objectively saying. winning for White, but it's not. It's no longer plain sailing. Like Knight B4. B4 played. He wants to, yeah, put something, something on the G5 square, which is, which is sensible. Yeah, it's a good idea. And good old D5 does not. 
quite do it. Right? Yeah, we take on C6. Yeah, the, yeah. This year we have we have knight D4, and after Queen takes C6, we can play E takes D5 for the time being, and then also actually knight D5, Bishop C5, King H1. <laughs> that's yeah. what I want to show you. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that's quite cute. <clears throat> But also it's easy five, easy mm -hmm. five, and we have all these extra pawns, and still the position is quite comfortably controlled from the white side. Rook a three might be the way to mix it up a little bit in the current position. At least you know attacking something, creating a, an actual threat. But you can. Yeah, now rook a, and now rook a one and. Yeah, this is not good, but uh, rook a1 and then just play. Although, once again, objectively, the, the white king is not really all that weak. And, uh, winning this position with white would probably be a bit tricky, but if you don't need to win it, you should be able to control it well enough not to not to run any risks. Rook, rook a3 played. Kudos to Kayakin. Yeah, and if, if our clocks are correct, he he will now be playing. For, I mean, from this moment on, he is pretty much playing on increment. Would that, once again, uh, psycho babble, but... Would be nice not to force anything on general terms here, right? I would like to take a, you know, I don't want to allow bishop b7 even. Although maybe I'm, maybe I'm not, you know, maybe I'm wrong to worry about that. But yeah, rook b2 is definitely a move you can consider. But since there is an option to start trading pieces and without losing any any material, I would probably go for this and just something like king h1 or king g2. Yeah, king h1 I quite like. And yeah, followed by some trades like. Queen G1 or Queen F1 next move, uh, get rid of that rook, and and then, uh, yeah, you really control most of the board here with white. A lot of action. Yeah, this could still, this could get a bit tricky because yeah, uh, yeah, the, the king is not that safe. And now the idea of doubling the rook on the a-file actually is some, somewhat paying off because you are creating some sort of nuisance nuisance threats on on the queen side which uh, might distract white. Yeah, it's, it's snagging, right? You don't really want to put rook passive to defend that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Korchnoi, he used to go these 3h4 and then start a lethal kingside attack on the open g-file. Yes. At least. I uh, read an article about that topic. I'm not sure how often it happened. <clears throat> Maybe Magnus read too. We'll see. How will we see? I don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Sure. We can ask him one day. Mm -hmm. 96, uh, Queen c6, knight b5. Is d5 a move? Whoa. Kind of wondering. Give me mm -hmm. uh, queen g6 check, I thought. Well, rook b3 gets a bit messy. Mm -hmm. Once again, the d pawn is so strong that probably you don't have to worry necessarily with white. You're probably still better even, but it does feel like it's getting a bit mm -hmm. messy. Feel that. And Carlson taking time here. Yeah. Probably missed this rook a3. And with the situation, this can be quite itchy. Yeah. Five and a half against what we assume is pretty much the increment time from C4 for Sergei. He, they get 20, 20 seconds and he has 28 on, on our clock, so. What happened? Nothing happened so far. Magnus is considering his options here. Question in the chat, what about rook a2 is what Mr. Blue Car is saying, but we can yeah, take, right? Yeah, that, that gives up that gives up the material. Yeah, you don't really want defend. to start you don't really want to start giving up your queen side. Would be a good idea if rook b3 was not allowed, but it is. Still tense. Yeah, it is still very, very tense and uh, as we mentioned, once you you go for what can loosely be described a conversion here for white. You you do give targets to, for counterplay in most cases. Mm. No, kudos to him for going for it. But three h four I found very very surprising. Just you don't know what's going to happen. It does expose the king. Yeah, and uh, can we take here by the way? Oh, that, still, yeah. that might not be a bad idea at all in, in, in terms, I mean, for much situation, because it, it gives away most of your advantage, but this position you probably just never lose, 94 followed by 92 at some point. He has taken on c6 though, so finally there are developments. 
Also very sensible, probably. This knight b5 or yeah, I'm pretty sure this is followed. Yeah. This is followed by knight b5 because otherwise I don't. I think you look for other options. Even this, nah, you don't do this. Mm -hmm. You could, yeah, yeah. For I'm followed curious. by queen g2 mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, he he, he does go. He does go for knight b5. Yeah, it's I think a sensible approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if that other plan of actually going for the Korchnoi, Korchnoi type attack on the mm. other side. Rook b3 played very fast by Sergei. This is strange sacrifice. He has yeah. not missed this. He wants queen takes c4. Yeah, he feels that if you imagine in this position the bishop landing somewhere on c5, black will be doing very well. But it's it's far away from those squares. Yeah, the tempo to go away. Yeah, mm -hmm. king, king g2, king h1, any of those moves. And yeah. No, objectively, white is still in control here. Mm -hmm. King g2 probably stronger than king h1 because you want to keep the pawn in f3 protected. So that you can play something like queen d4 here, queen d5, and start activating mm -hmm. the pieces. Yeah. Second rank is covered, so yeah, this this looks very, very... Queen e2 played by, mm -hmm. by Magnus. He's trying to stop b5, I guess. Yeah, yeah he wants to play rook b2. He also sidestepped all of those d5, bishop c5 ideas. Can you still go d5 for us? I can just take with the rook and, uh, yeah, nothing king g2, there. rook 1d2, even, or rook 5d2. Should be sevens on the board, targeting... Mr. H4, you can keep or you cannot try. Yeah, you can trade it off for, I mean, you can play rook b2, rook takes b6 here, for instance, if you want. <clears throat> White should be, uh, objectively, if he doesn't make any large mistakes, he should be able to keep this under control. Here, you have to pay some attention to yeah. trickery again, right? No, you, probably, you probably include king g2 at some point. You don't, you don't really need to avoid it for forever. Just out of, well, not out of laziness, but out of practical... So you don't yeah. have to calculate these d5s yeah. at every juncture. It sidesteps all, all of the, most of the possible things you can blunder later later in the game. So it's a very sensible choice. Three and a half against uh, some time game from time gain from from Sergei. Sergei is now up to close to a minute against three and a half from Magnus. Yeah. King G2 King played. played. No surprise. Yeah, and it's, it's really not, not, not that easy to create much counterplay here. If black doesn't take one h4, white should probably play h5, rook d5. And it's very hard to activate this rook if you dream of something like this. Worst case scenario, you can always... Yeah, even rook d, yeah, and uh, rook a2, rook, mm. d, rook, rook 1d2, rook a1 would be sensible, but white, white can just continue chasing it, because white would very much welcome uh, a pair of rooks coming off, because then he really is completely safe. Sure. So what do you do? You take? I'm not sure. Yeah. You can take, but also queen queen d3, as Machine points out, is quite decent. And queen e6, queen e6 played, played, and yeah, you probably play h5 here. And, and, and Magnus has played h5 very, very fast. Very because sensible to stop the check. Stop the check, save the pawn, also uh, connected with rook d5 is very decent. Yeah. Rook a3 played by, by Sergei, but, and this is where the much, much situation comes into it, because you can, mm. you can just start offering this exchange. Rook d3. And you do, right? Mm -hmm. Although queen c4 is a move here, but maybe rook, rook 1, d2 is just a good enough reply. Okay, 1, yeah. Even rook d1, yeah. It's, it's really... Although but here, now yeah. we've triangulated. Yeah, you don't... Not exactly winning here, but... No, not of, not at all. But you probably want to pay more attention, more attention than that. Well, you don't want the rook sitting here if you can avoid it, right? Probably not, although with the pawn on h5 and the rook on d5, if you imagine this setup, like if you go rook d5 right away here, rook e3, queen somewhere, I don't know where, uh, let's not blunder anything. That's my point. Uh, but yeah, it does feel a bit shaky. Uh, machine claims white is completely winning, but that's, uh, yeah. Rook d3 and now white will continue chasing forever. I have... Very, ah oh no, rook a2 first, rook a2 now he's first, just trying to gain some time on the clock. But he will not actually you, get this, because now rook 1d2, and you don't, you no longer have this option. But he played oh. rook 3d2, and rook a3, rook d3, Sergei will once again get the chance to play queen c4, which he should. Yeah. Because that's the only move that even creates... Any so. practical mistake there by... Rook a7, actually, yeah. And yeah, now, now you play rook d5. Now you go here, for sure. Now you go rook d5, and this has been blitzed out. And after rook a3, now you have the luxury yeah. to go... You now, this now you can use the uh, the lower rook, so to speak, to to continue chasing. Yeah. Now, now, now this is very safe, mm -hmm. and also e4, e5 is a very large potential threat to just start uh, start simplifying. Rook c7 play, and this is not a. You can even go after the f4 pawn here, like queen d2 and rook f5, and take on f4. Where's your king safest? Do you go king h1? I don't mm. need to. 
I think it's fine on g2. There's really no checks to it on g2. You can also start fighting for the open files yeah. if you want to. Sure. And I actually, no, e5 right now might run into something like f6. That would be the way to start spoiling things. Ah, uh, pin. Yeah. Yeah, that's not ideal. And Magnus played queen g2, so Magnus, uh, Magnus noticed the, uh, uh, the fact that the pawn is uh, impossible to protect. Queen f6, you just play rook f5. And you pick yeah, it up next move. move. Queen h4. Mm. You can even take. Takes rook c2. King, king, f4, king h1. King h1. And uh, the, the queen actually gets traded off. Yeah, or queen f2, queen g3 with the same with the same sure. idea. And it actually will be white who will be giving mate here if you continue dodging the queen exchange. Like queen e2, rook g1, white probably mates on the king's side. But if you don't want any shenanigans, you also have this move, which looks nice. Sure. And that's been played in rook c1. Yeah, and rook c1 has been played. And yeah, the, 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 the issue for black is that if you if you go rook a7, uh, even rook c8 followed by, you know, something against the black king might be very strong. Like, not sure white wants to. Sure. Yeah, with rook, rook a7 played because you cannot allow for the rooks to come off. But yeah, once again, queen takes f4 is still is still possible to play. It has been possible on the previous move. It's still possible here because yeah, you don't lose the rook after queen f4, bishop g5 because of rook c8 check. And here you can actually. Yeah, apparently this is made somehow. Queen h6. Whoa, this will be a <laughs> this will be a stylish finish. Yeah, this would be one for the books, obviously. Mm. But yeah, very unlikely to happen, I think, because very uh, pretty. Whoa! Yeah, but you you don't play rook c8 check even in that position. I understand. Yeah, in Come that on. position in the world championship match, you play queen g3, and you lean back because uh, you're saying you don't you don't see maiden three in a world championship match. With the situation on the clock being what it is, you even if you see it, would you not do it just because you might have hallucinated? If you see it, you probably do play it. But I mean, seriously. It's, imagine it's not mate. <laughs> yeah, imagine something. Im imagine something happened and you 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 miscalculate and then you just lose and you play the blitz. Yeah, you don't really want that. Queen of four played. Rook a two will be will be played by Sergei because there's nothing else. But but yeah, there is uh, there is now Rook a two King h one uh, on the board. Yeah, only move. Well, there's no other move. And and yeah, this is uh, this is now a reasonably straightforward technical task for for Magnus and Queen F two on the board. So, so we'll, we'll see now. He has a, he has two minutes here, and I'm saying is he, he gonna go for this? I'm saying he plays Queen G three in about three seconds flat. Wow, I don't know if he's seen it. I don't think he can help himself. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I will be the first one to applaud, but I don't know. It's whoa. This is fantastic. He's played it, yeah. Yeah. He's such. No, this is. <laughs> I am. I am so impressed with, by this. I am so unbelievably impressed by so this. I have to calculate everything, like bishop g8, bishop f8 as well. Yeah. King h7, and everything else loses. So you better find this move. Wow, that is a cute finish, and congratulations to the old and new world champion. Yeah, wow. I, 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 I keep on. I, I know it's a minor point, but this actually is incredibly impressive. Well, considering this, just for the history books, this yeah, is a big one. Considering just how winning the position after Queen G three is to go for this with two minutes on the clock to 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 be so sure in your calculations to to go for this. I'm I'm very very impressed. And the game is over. It is mate next move. G H six, Rook takes F seven would have been made. Very rare mating construction or King H six Rook H eight. Similarly rare. That means Magnus Carlsen wins the rapid tiebreak with three points to one and keeps his title as world champion. Congratulations and happy birthday to Magnus Carlsen. And I believe it's also in order to congratulate Sergei Kayakin for an incredibly tough fight. He won 15 rating points and gave everything. Yeah, it, it was uh, a lot closer than, uh, than I think most, most pundits uh, gave it uh, credit for before the start of the match. And he, he gave Magnus a real fright. And had he held the, the tenth game, uh, I think he would be an, an overwhelming favorite to win the title. So. Or won the ninth game, right? Yeah, or, yeah or even yeah, he, he, if he managed to calculate a little bit further in, in the line he spent all his time on, he very possibly would have won the ninth. And that probably was, was game over. Absolutely. So Magnus Carlsen, yeah, with a bit of a scare, even today, let's not forget, in game two, he blew this 
kind of completely winning position, yeah. where he was also 10 minutes up on the clock, which must have put him in a horrible mood with a 1-1 score. But then in game three, yeah, he played a very aggressive opening, but managed to come through. And game four is an impossible situation for Black. That's really very hard to criticize yeah. anything here. Yeah. You look at this game without context and you think this is a really horribly played Sicilian from Black, but uh, no, that's not the point. he just needed to keep the pieces on the board and hope for a mistake, and mistake never really came. You can criticize some of Magnus's choices, but none were bad. Maybe they were not best moves, but they were solid. And when it counted, he calculated everything very cleanly and uh, converted. So we are, I believe for now, left with, first of all, thanking you guys for Sticking with us, apologies for the occasional hiccups, apologies for me not shutting up and letting Peter talk about chess, the usual stuff. But I've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, Peter Swidler, for bearing with us and explaining uh, this world championship. It's been, it's been my pleasure and uh, it's been very interesting to comment on because I think, uh, you know, people could continue saying this was, uh, even today I saw some remarks on, on this not being the best world championship match ever. Maybe it wasn't, it's difficult to judge, but it was... Uh, there was plenty there to uh, to get to get excited about, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed com commenting on it a lot. And uh, yeah, once again, thanks for thanks for watching, thanks for giving us inspiration and chat. And uh, yeah, we'll wait for. I don't know how I want to finish that sentence. We'll wait. If you guys want to support Chess Twenty Four, so that we can keep doing all these broadcasts and have more video series, because if you click on learn, you can actually watch hundreds of videos of this gentleman. Some of mine are crappy, but you, I didn't say that word. Ruining it in the end, mine are great too. So if you want to become a premium member, it will help your chess and it will help Chess24, which I call a win-win situation, which was very tough to construct in this tiebreak match. Someone had to lose. Sege Kayakin is a loser, but he will hold his head high. We're out for now. We're probably back tomorrow with highlight videos or a recap show, whatever. We have a day, or you have a day left in Hamburg, as far as I know. Yeah. So we'll do something. Fiona will fill you in on the reaction in the outside world. And by the outside world, I mean the Twitter sphere. That's as far out as I go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks a lot, Peter Swidler. Congratulations and happy birthday, Magnus Kals. Now where do I click? That's the eternal question. Probably here, yeah? It's crazy, things got you out of control And so beside you when you're losing your soul
Hello everyone and welcome back for this very, very final segment um, on social media, on the Twitter sphere of this World Championship match. First off, many congratulations to Magnus Carlsen on retaining his title and a very happy birthday once again. This is the first time I can really take my time. I might uh, keep one eye on the chat in case anything comes up there. I hope there's still some of you here. Um, it's almost one o'clock in Hamburg, but it's been an exciting night. Um, there's been some criticism of the match, of course, but I think we were treated to a very, very explosive final, very intense. And um, let's start off this final social media segment with some um, comments about game three, where Magnus uh, won. And the first one is from Grandmaster Gajewski, who is, amongst other things, uh, Vishian on second. And he is saying, ironically, uh, Karyakin's blunder with rook takes c7 was his second move beyond the fifth rank. Uh, you can't win the title playing like this. So some criticism there of uh, Karyakin's play. But then another big name, and that is Jan Nepomniachtchi, uh, chimed in to... Um, Praise Magnus rather than criticize uh, Karyakin, saying a very strong performance from Carlsen in Game 3. Uh, he took the in initiative and played brilliantly. Now Sergei should rely on the night off. He did try that, but again, another very nice game from Magnus. Then <laughs> another slightly controversial tweet, maybe, but... Um, might be a fair, harsh but fair, let's say, from Mick Greengard, um, saying that they all play the Sicilian and must win games with black illustrates the general level of paradise in the rest of their games. Again, I will refrain uh, from commentating. There's been a lot of uh, chat going on everywhere. I looked basically Twitter, Facebook, about the preparation and about the openings played, but there you go. And not my place to criticize the players. And this was quite funny. Um, this is Olympiochan. He retreated his tweet from the 28th, whenever that was, two days ago, after the last game when Magnus uh, was asked by Kaya Asinache, uh, you want to play a tiebreak, can you try and tell us why you want to do that? And you can see Magnus' cheeky face there. And he replied by saying, we'll see. Um, he had a plan, his plan came through, uh, again, well played Magnus Carlsen. Then I couldn't really, um, much was being said about the game, but I decided to just uh, leave it up to Tom Randall to um, sum the game up, saying, first off, uh, Karyatikin speeding up, uh, it might be his downfall, but it's also his only chance. And also, kudos to Karyatikin, he ended up losing uh, the last game, but he did try. Also says, uh, needs to move now or he'll have no time. Uh, but I guess he sees it all slipping away and that is, of course, a problem. Um, it's a sad day for Sergei Karyakin, but he's still young. He will have another shot, I'm sure. Uh, then Tom is saying, this isn't the end, but it's the beginning of the end. 30 seconds left. It would be really, really impressive to hold this. Unfortunately for Sergei, he has to win. And we all saw what happened and what a finish. And here's my timeline. Um, Alex Kolovich ending in mate, great finish. Alti Box Norway Chess, congratulations to Magnus Carlsen. Well fought by Sergei Karyakin. Looking forward to seeing you both in uh, 2017. They will also be reunited in Vikansee. Uh, so they will be sitting at each other opposite the board in January. Uh, just news, are you, are you tweeting Carlsen? Uh, Europe Echec saying good news for chess. Defending is not enough to get a World Chess Championship title and Magnus uh, Carlsen retains his cr uh, crown. Uh, also, Tarje treating breaking. Carlsen beats Karyak in 9-7 on his birthday after tie breaks and retains his World Chess Championship title in New York. Jonathan Rousen saying Magnus is too good uh, to fall into that fluffing around nervously mindset that has affected all of us at some point. Uh, and reigning Norwegian champion Johan uh, Salomon saying Magnus Carlsen defended his World Championship title after a fantastic match against Karyakin. Congratulations to both players. And uh, then uh, some more messages pouring in. Uh, John Bartholomew, play it, Magnus. This was still about Queen H6. And I think Peter was the first who couldn't believe it. Um, I was very impressed myself, especially the speed at which Magnus played it. Michael uh, Golubev, uh, Queen H6, what a crazy resource. Thomas Randall, Queen H6 to win the World Championship. 
uh, Fabiano Caruana tweeting a very sober kudos. New in chess saying congrats to Magnus Carlsen. He retains his World Chess Championship by beating Sergei Karyakin in Rapid 3-1. Hashtag Carlsen Karyakin has ended. Indeed, I just have some more photos for you. One more from Anton. I think it, he had this one ready for a while. I know he was cheering heavily for Magnus. So there you go. Uh, Magnus in his Superman cape. Uh, what else? One uh, breaking photo from uh, Tarje Swenson from New York. Happy New uh, Norwegians in New York. I know they will all be celebrating tonight. It's a big night um, for them. So once again, congratulations to everyone. And let's finish on this photo of Magnus. Uh, this is not a live photo, of course. It's an archive photo and a tweet from MVL. Queen H6, the guy couldn't prevent himself. Congrats, Magnus Carlsen. I think with that, all is said. Um, from my part, I would once again like to thank all of you for being with us all this time, for watching us, for tweeting to us, for being in the chat. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, once again, congratulations to Magnus Carlsen. Thank you to all of you guys. Have a lovely evening and I'm sure I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.